That doesn't even make sense. I like to fucking yank it out. Why would you? Br- the little clip is the only thing that holds the thing, the the Ethernet cable in the computer. If you just break the clip out, it's not going to stick in. What do you like? Question. Duct tape it to your computer? Don't question. You just yell at it. You force it to stay in there through sheer force of alone. Don't question the chaotic ways. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Let's Anyways. get this show started. I got a video to watch. Wow. It's your boy, PSA Sitch, here with another Sunday, Sunday, Sunday show with everyone's favorite renegade Ethernet clip breaker, <laughs> Adam Friendin. What's up, guys? We got a great video for you guys this week. It's going to be a whirlwind roller coaster ride here. <laughs> I haven't watched more than 13 minutes of the video <laughs> because I couldn't take it. <laughs> so I was wondering if you were going to let that drop. Or you were just gonna... <laughs> I quit at the 13.5 uh-huh. second mark. Mm-hmm. So yes. if you guys can persevere through that. No, I was like, I, got, I need... I need moral support to watch this video. <laughs> Who watches yeah, like, these Adam, videos? Well, first I was like, Adam, we should watch this philosophy tube video. And I'm like, wait a minute. Why are we watching like the knockoff? Okay. Yeah. We should watch <laughs> we should watch the original. Yes, of course. Why discount Contra when you can watch yes. r- real Contra? Yeah, so that so that we so then I watched the Contra video. I'm like, oh. This video is fascinating, and I think Adam Adams like oh, I did. Sitch. Sitch, 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 sitch. You know, you know, I'm a, I'm a bigot, right? I can't watch this sitch. I'm like Adam, please, please. Bigotry? I, it's not really bigotry. It's just, I know. I'm joking. It's there's more no, boredom. There's no sexy outfits in this one, so you don't have to worry. It's well, there is bathtub stuff, so don't try to. That's true. Don't I? I had to scrub through the video to do the thumbnail. Okay, don't try to gaslight me here. I know what's <laughs> go. I know what I'm getting into. Where's well, my? Last, where's like, my sensor? I might need my sensor tab today. The last five minutes, which I think is where any of the bathtub stuff comes, we don't even have to watch it because it's kind of completely unrelated to anything. Really? It's all just artsy fartsy, you know, BS. It's not really like subject matter here we go i got but my anyways, censored i got my censored label out for you guys uh happy father's day everybody happy happy father's day i yeah. hope you wished all your fathers well yes before you joined us on this wonderful wonderful sunday if you're american of course if you're not american then you know it's just a regular day <laughs> I mean, if you're not American, you should still wish your father, right. you know, you should still tell your father, thank yeah. you for birthing me, right? This is a day to forgive your dads. Go ahead, do it. This is a day where you, you say, you say, you say, Papa, thank you so much, Papa, for making sure that I didn't end up trapped in a latex bubble and that I actually was impregnated into my mother and became right. a human being. Thank you, Father. Thank All you. right. Now let's uh, just jump right into this video. Yes, let's jump right into it. Jesus. This is very, very artistic. I do like that part of it. I really Mm. do that it's very... I mean, the production value of ContraPoints videos are very i mean they're legendary so listen let's not blow too much smoke off up contra's ass okay really um well contra has has a good visual aesthetic right good she's good scene composition but but let's let's be fair most of contra's videos are like three static shots so it's not like, you know, you just, once she can figure out three static shots and then she's fine. Like, it's not like, you know, some amazing artistic endeavor. Okay, like, that's obviously. She hasn't really mastered camera movement yet. That is There's, the holy grail <laughs> of go. directing. There you go. There's no camera movement. There's no shaky cam in the action scenes and the contra videos. And it's just, it's upsetting to me. If, if you, if, let's say you're an action film director, okay. Uh-huh. 
and you're at the top of your game, right? Yes. You know, you've you've mastered bullet time. Like you know your shit. Who, you, you who know directed when, Crank? Okay, that's yeah, what we're talking. You know when you're supposed to be in slow motion and when you're supposed to be in super speed, right? Mm -hmm. And right. let's say that you discover, you know, after you've made several big budget movies, that you're transgender. Okay, and okay. you and you're going to transition from male to female. Does that mean that all of a sudden all your action shots have to just go to a handheld shot where the cameraman shakes the camera as much as possible and you can't tell what the fuck is going on in the movie? No, I think that's what happens. I think that's what happens when Michael Bay starts producing your movie. I don't think it has anything to do with your gender. No, <laughs> it seems like every action film direct uh, movie that's directed by a woman, they just they can't get action correct. Like, really? Yes. Yeah. You've never. You yeah, haven't what noticed. What movies this? are you talking? About? Yeah, I'm, I haven't. I don't even know what movies you're talking about. I can't think of any off the top of my. Oh, head, you bigot! Like these women don't know how to. Listen, maybe Adam, Alien. A, I, I think Alien versus Predator is probably a good example. Okay, that is Alien yeah. versus Predator is not a good example of anything except right. how to not make a movie. But you know, so you know the action fair. that I'm talking about when it's like this will be good for the action. Here, let's just blur the fucking frame as we wave right, but the see, to me, that's, camera that's, that's around like, in this direction. That's Michael Bay action. That's I don't conceptualize that as like female director action. Do you think Michael? I, first of all. I mean, Michael Bay doesn't. Michael Bay, he did the Transformers movies. What yeah, are you those movies. The, yeah, the the action. The Michael Bay does movies not do. Got progressively more confusing and like visual okay, diarrhea. Okay, like okay. I don't. You just see like balls of metal like swooshing around each other, and the camera's like moving all over the place. Okay, sure. Anyway, let's move on. I listen. Adam, Temptation it's, warning. Listen, listen, listen. Addiction. Sexual brokenness, gender confusion. That's Adam is just mad that women don't have the upper body strength to hold the camera steady the way a man. <laughs> a man. I think actually, I think the Hurt Locker was directed by a woman, and I think the action in that movie is oh, exceptional. Yeah, that so. movie is great. Yes. So maybe I'm just being a sexist. Pig. Well, well, actually, I think you are because you know, you know what other movie that's one of your favorite movies of all time has a female director. What is it? The uh, the Wonder Woman that had the uh, American Ninja Warrior scene in the beginning for ten minutes that was really stupid. That was a woman director. They must. That they was probably a had a. Yeah. A lot of times they bring in guys to do the <laughs> the action scenes, so they have like an action. <laughs> <laughs> they have an action director. They do. Okay. I'm not lying. So, so I think was it Patty Jenkins? Like <laughs> Patty Jenkins choreography. is like. Patty Jenkins is like I want to make. I want to make the Wonder Woman, the second Wonder Woman movie. And uh, the, the, the producers are like, or the studio is like, okay, but we need to bring in a male director to film a completely pointless, nonsensical, boring, 10 minute long uh, American Ninja Warrior jungle gym sequence. And Am's like, hey, that fantastic. was fun. That's exactly what I want. That was fun. <laughs> okay. All right. Fair Can enough. we finish fair this con? I'll. I got shit to do today, okay? We got to get this video. We only we have 57 this video minutes out. left, Adam. Okay. I can't believe we haven't even made it to 10 seconds yet. We have to read the trigger warning. Oh, this is a trigger warning? I thought it was yes. a temptation warning. Well, that's it's that's how to have a trigger warning without seeming so brittle. It's a play? Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Addiction. Uh, temptations. Uh, subtext trigger warning. Addiction, sexual broken. What the? What is sexual brokenness? Um, That's, I guess that, we'll find out. Is that like when you're? <laughs> is that when it breaks off inside? Oh no! Stop! I hope not. I hope Doctor, not. help us! My penis <laughs> is trapped in our vagina. Help! You have to get it out and sew it back on me. Oh, <laughs> oh no! Anyway, gender confusion—that's when the gender confusion begins, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's where my gender confusion begins. <laughs> oh my! Okay, that's annoying. <laughs> yeah, I hate that sound. Why? Why would you do that in the very beginning of your video just to annoy mm -hmm. me? Sounds like it's a good. good if, it's a. I will. I will say this is a good. Well, wait a minute. Did. 
do you think that the screen actually works or is did they just edit this onto a, a blank screen it looks like the screen works, but I, it could be just enough. Well, it's weird shot. because the image looks like it's edited on, but there's light reflection, right? The light reflection off the borders. I've done very, that. Very in, well done. I've yeah. done that in some effect shots just to okay, make it so more realistic. There you go. Yeah. Listen, I take it all back, Contra. This is a very well affected visual effect shot. I have an old, I have an old Apple monitor. That's the green. Remember the green monitor, the green. Yes. Yeah, I have one of those. It's you badass. mean like the see-through plastic ones? No, it's oh, like the. Know, talking about them. What is it? A CRT? Is it a, a CRT? It's a CRT. <laughs> really, you have a CRT monitor. Right? I believe it's called a CRT, okay. but. Okay. Come on, let's continue. Oh! This program is a work of fiction created for educational, artistic, and harm reduction purposes in compliance with the Video Corp terms of service. I, I love, love Video Corp. Corp. I, I love, love the rules. rules. Any resemblance to actual persons is a super crazy coincidence. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. T.S. It's weird. Okay, it annoys me already. I'm already annoyed that she has this intro that's like, I love Video Corp. This is all for harm reduction. Like, She's she's having this intro as if she's going to be talking about something like really edgy or crazy, or she's going to be saying something that you're not supposed to be saying. And it's like, like she completely is pushing an incredibly safe narrative in this video. Like there's nothing controversial from the mainstream point of view whatsoever. Really? Okay. Yes. Yes. This and is it's just annoying to because, pretend edgy? Yes. And it's annoying because... You know, I used to like ContraPoints. Used um, to? Oh, no. I used to. Former fan here. Guys. Former ContraPoints. Well, ContraPoints, well, first of all, ContraPoints used to be liberal and not a leftist, and I'm pretty sure those days are over. Right. Um, and Contra used to be the only person that kind of was on this bread tube sphere who I felt would properly articulate uh, right-wing and you know just different points just different views and different opinions without straw manning them and that went out the window it seemed like we covered the jk rowling video and that's when that seemed to really just go out the window and this video this entire video is just this massive straw man of sort of the trans debate uh, question and How? it's it's sad it's sad really the loss at i just i feel like this is one of the fundamental flaws of standpoint theory. The mm -hmm. I and standpoint theory is the idea that, you know, from a particular standpoint, you have superior knowledge to someone else who might not share in the trans experience, as it were, right? I think that's fundamentally flawed. I think if you're invested in a certain ideology, you're not going to be able to see that ideology from an objective perspective. Your perspective is going to be literally less useful if you want to study right. something from a scientific perspective. Well, it's, I mean, that used to be the very classical sociological idea. You know, when stud, when sociologists and when anthropologists, not, maybe not sociologists, but they used to be like a very common anthropological idea. Like, Oh, if you're studying another culture, you know, you have to be sort of outside of it. You have to be an independent observer. And then you had kind of the more leftist types would come in and say, oh, well, you're not really outside of it because you're imparting your own, you know, biases from your own from culture your into culture. this. Yeah. Right. Which is true. Um, so then I guess what should have followed that is, an acknowledgement that, oh, you're right, I am imparting my own bias from my own culture, so I need to, to get rid of that. But instead, it kind of went in this exact opposite direction, which is, oh, it's impossible to be objective, it's impossible to be unbiased, so we're going to go in the, the opposite direction and do what you said, uh, which we just laid out, Adam, which is we're going to basically promote that you're not allowed to talk about anything unless you're in the thick of it, unless you're part of you know that group, which obviously completely destroys all objectivity whatsoever right and it's so bizarre to me that this idea has been basically foisted upon society and like everyone just forgot about objectivity <laughs> like we just like closed our eyes we're like whoops we just forgot about it we have 
come a long way though in actually being objective when studying other cultures. I just read uh, Joseph Henrik's latest book, and they go out of their way to not superimpose their values. And even in many of the economic experiments that they do, like they have a preconceived notion of how these experiments are going to turn out. And as soon as they turn out completely differently, they're like, okay, well, that is our bias speaking right there. The reason that we had that intuition is because our our bias is baked into our understanding of the world. But you just structure the experiments to get around that. That's the whole point of science. Right. And, yeah. w- and with in standpoint theory, what you're bringing about uh, has a second uh, has a second idea behind it, which I think is to basically galvanize and sort of force uh, people that are quote unquote marginalized to adhere to us to the same political opinion, essentially, or they lose their like if you're a woman and you don't share like whatever the feminist position is, you're not really a woman or you've bought into the patriarchy. Or if you're black and you don't have whatever the quote unquote political black op- opinion is, you know, you lose your blackness essentially. Right. I think yeah. that's kind of a secondary uh, point of stand. stand no, point that theory. is the main point of it. Or it's maybe a the political. Main point, yeah, yeah right. exactly. It's to to galvanize political conformity. Yeah. Right. Which well, it's also sucks. interesting because <laughs> it it like there's like there's this weird thing that goes on where. Someone will say like, oh, I'm not, you know, I'm not an ambassador to my race or gender or whatever. But then it's like, if you have the quote unquote correct politics, then you basically are an ambassador to your race. Right. Yeah. Under standpoint theory. So. Yeah. No, standpoint theory is garbage tier content. It's Natalie Wynn. What is it good for? Absolutely guad fam everything. According to the National Institute for Strategic American Liberty Heritage Enterprise Prosperity Commerce Policy Research. Hi, I'm Jackie Jackson. You're listening to The Freedom Pod, where it doesn't matter what you say, it only matters that you say. We don't discriminate here between what is true or false or even downright dangerous. That's none of my business. It's none of America's business. The important thing is that you never stop talking. So, so if you haven't caught, well, let me go back just one second. I just want you to see the, okay, the, the, the scene composition. So if you haven't caught on, the character in the middle is Contra portraying a Joe Rogan liberal-esque character who's saying, oh, Free speech is important, and I'm just like the platform for people to be able to talk and discuss their ideas. And so Contra seems, who's mocking this entire idea of being pro-free speech, seems to be coming out hard against free speech in this video, which is... Really? Pretty... That's how I interpret it. Only in the subtext, though. It's not explicit, obviously. But that's all of Contra's videos. Right, yeah. Which is how she gets away with a lot of her opinions is that it's nothing is very explicit. It's all in the subtext. Right. Yeah. So very political. I just, the whole idea is I watch these videos and people mm-hmm. just, they love these videos, man. They get, this video has a, a million and a half views. <laughs> people just, they, eat this stuff up and i just for the life of me it doesn't these videos don't do anything for me they're not remotely entertaining they're not remotely informative i just i want i really want to understand like i wish i could at least well, mm-hmm. get the perspective of someone who was really into these here's my theory okay you have a trans woman right. you're checking a lot of boxes you have a trans woman you have very nice wallpaper. <laughs> God, I love that wallpaper. I want to do. I we need some of that wallpaper back here. <laughs> right, right. Uh, you have you have good shot, like visual scene composition generally. Right. You have uh, an appeal to the queer aesthetic, which is so like dripping in right. every ContraPoints videos. But then in the substance, you have 
Contra basically saying like very, I don't even know how to describe it. She's saying things that are vague and like she's saying, she's talking about complicated ideas in a way that's vague enough or giving like enough of both sides of an issue that basically everyone watching can interpret almost whatever they want into the videos. And so it's almost, I think a lot of Contra's appeal is I'm going to say things that sound smart, but that are kind of vague. And then the viewer can interpret whatever they want into it. So it makes the viewer think that they're smart for like getting whatever the video is really about. I have exactly the opposite approach in all of my projects and art. Oh, I, I just, do too. Yeah, I do too. Clarity. Like, that's yes. what I'm looking for. Yes. No, yeah. no, no. See, this is this is anti clarity. I'm very against. I really hate. And it's actually it's fascinating because there must be some weird psychological or biological overlap here between because I I really hate the artsy fartsy movies where nothing is clear intentionally and people just project whatever dumb crap they want into it. To me, that's like incredibly lazy filmmaking. Yes. Generally. But it's weird in that the people that like that seem to also like the queer aesthetic. And I don't know why that is. Like, because those things should really have nothing to do with each other whatsoever. The ambiguity. Yeah, that's of, interesting. So maybe, yeah, there could be some weird overlap there that we don't really fully understand. Or even downright dangerous. That's none of my business. It's none of America's business. The important thing is that you never stop talking. Yeah, see, she's saying it doesn't matter if the length, her, her straw man of like the liberal free speech person is, it doesn't matter if the language is dangerous. Everyone should just be able to talk, okay? I'm America. Because that's what freedom is all about. Tonight, the war on drugs. How do we get these goddamn junkies off the streets? Jackie. My first guest is Justine Tableau, leftist influencer and author of such books as Revolutionize Your Brand, How to Capitalize on Communism. The editor chooses the title. I didn't choose the title. And my second guest is Virginia Lamb senior pastor at Hope Truth Ministries. Virginia, let's begin with you. Okay, so we've got the we've got the Hassan Vosh bread tube type character. And yes. we've got the I guess the Matt Walsh. Matt character. Walsh. Who else is like conservative the, um, Christian? Well it's, it's also it's like <laughs> It's a combination of the stereotype of the right-wing religious person, Matt Walsh, and Milo Yiannopoulos, who, who is, you know, turned against his, his quote-unquote degenerate passed ways and become a Christian now. Wow. What some this, people do for attention. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I, <laughs> uh, I think a lot of this video feels like a response to the Matt Walsh, Dr. Phil conversation. And this is sort of like her straw man version of that conversation. Right. And my big problem with it, which is what you'll see is that she doesn't like, you can criticize Matt Walsh for being, you know, a like very weirdo Christian religious, you know, he's anti gay marriage and, you know, he wants parent school and a bunch of other weird crap. That's fine. You can criticize him for all that stuff. But when, at least recently, when he's been covering his trans stuff, he hasn't been making religious arguments uh, to criticize it. He's been trying to ground his arguments in more medical uh, and scientifically focused. And I think you do have to address those points. I don't think you can just hand wave away and say, well, you know, underneath it all, he's a, you know, he's a theocrat, so I don't have to actually address his points. I don't think that's how any of this should work. That's essentially what Contra does in this video. That's what all the bread tubers do because yes. they believe, oh, well, his outward arguments are really just dishonest to hide his real argument, which is fundamentally a religious right. argument. And therefore, but I agree with you. If you're, if, 
if the person is going to make a secular argument, you got to address the secular argument. That's the whole point of making secular arguments. Right. Because, yeah, because the reason Matt Walsh and other people are making secular arguments about uh, trans issues isn't because they're being dishonest. It's because they're trying to make, they're focusing on making arguments that will have a much broader appeal to more people that people would agree with. And so if that's the case, then that means that you have to address those arguments. You can't just say, oh, well, you secretly, this person's secretly a Nazi or this person's secretly uh, super religious. And this is what we get, like, this is what we get all the times when we talk to people about CRT. They're like, they don't want to address the actual argument against CRT. They just want to say, oh, you're a secret Nazi or you're a secret white nationalist or whatever. Yep. Yep. Every, every day in Biden's America, Muslim cartels are driving Mexican dump trucks full of Chinese fentavoid across the Rio Grande, and they're getting our children amped out of their little minds on hype. The world is laughing at us. So, for the, I don't know why she, she doesn't explain this until the very end. Hype is an, a fic, is an imaginary fictional drug uh, that she uses in this video for some reason. Right. So Instead of fentanyl? Yeah, instead of fentanyl or cocaine or something. Oh, right. Hype. Even the Canadians their pronouns, and their genders. How have we reached this point? Two words, Jackie. Sexual anarchy. <sighs> Let that sink in. Let what sink in? Sexual anarchy? What does that even mean? Jackie, the enemy has taken control of our culture. The radical left and the corporate media, they're replacing the nuclear family with aimless fornication. They're tearing apart the social fabric and normal Americans are being silenced. That's why we're seeing all this woke, cancel culture, PC, CRT, SJW, globo, homo, pomo, nomo. The people pushing this agenda, they don't want us resisting our captivity in Babylon. And that's why we're seeing so many attacks today on the most persecuted minority in America, the Christian majority. Virginia, I appreciate your pious gibberish, but could you be a little more specific? Of course, Jack. So I don't like that in the... So you, you have the, the right-wing religious character who's supposed to be the bad guy in the video, obviously, or the bad woman. <laughs> and, um, I don't like that she's mixing in sort of like valid, valid criticisms against wokeness and what's happening right now with hyperbolic claims and then tying it up as like a Christian nationalist thing. Because it's, I mean, it is true. There is this attack on everything that's perceived of, perceived of as normative values, kind of wholesale. And I don't think you can just dismiss that as like, oh, that's just old people who want to conserve, you know, bigoted ways. Yeah, they've stripped out a lot of the bigotry, which makes me feel real good, real comfortable, because mm -hmm. I don't like that stuff. So, but I mean, there is there is value to certain traditional norms that we've kind of synthesized that, right. you know, you, you, ha you have to address that. It's, it's a baby with a bathwater situation. You have to sort out what is the baby and what is the bathwater. Yeah, no, exactly. And that's the thing, because it's like, Sure, get rid of, you know, the racism that existed in the country, but, you know, trying to tear apart, you know, monogamous relationships and nuclear families and those things seem like a very disastrous idea, which is weird because it wasn't so long ago where that was the rallying cry that I supported uh, for gay marriage was, you know, well, we want to... You know, we want the nuclear family to be available to all people, right? Right. We want gay people to be able to partake in this and have children and all that other stuff. And it kind of goes back to Andrew Sullivan talking about how a lot of the queer theorists were actually against gay marriage in the 90s and in the early 2000s because they thought that would normalize being gay, <laughs> which just shows you where the queer theorists are. And this kind of reminds me of a conversation I listened to the other day where Destiny was talking to a writer, a writer for Cody Johnston's show. No way. No yes. way. Yes. Who, uh, you know, we've, we're big fans of Cody Johnston here. Right. Uh, such an am show, obviously. And 
uh, they were a trans writer. And basically, Des- it's funny because Destiny was saying, you know, he's like, people like Sargon of Akkad and other people used to make all these arguments like years ago about the slippery slope that kind of the trans conversation would go to. And years ago, I said, oh, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. And now it's all happening. So I can't make those arguments anymore. Destiny said and, that? That's awesome. Yes. Yes. He was just talking about how, you know, like it's impossible to talk about trans issues online because basically unless you have this very, you know, whatever they want goes attitude, you get labeled as a bigot. And it's right. just a turf keeps slipping. Yeah. A turf. Right. Yeah. This love keeps slipping. And we're seeing it now a lot with, you know, the drag queen story time and a lot of this other weird stuff, which like that's like the whole drag queen thing for pride is so bizarre because like that's not even that shouldn't have anything to do with trans rights at all. It shouldn't even have anything to do with LGBT acceptance at all. Like why does why does a man who identifies as a man who's usually gay, who either gets off sexually or just artistically gets off on dressing in women's clothing. Like, why does that deserve to be yeah, protected highlighted, or celebrated. highlighted? Yeah. Right. Like Made no the one's face saying, of the movement. Yeah, exactly. It's so weird. It's so strange. Like no one is saying, Hey, I think that kiss fans should like go to schools in their kiss outfits and like read, books the children and this is very important for kids right, to like yeah. see like who like it's just an aesthetic like, okay, if you wanna... heavy metalers or normal people right or like yeah or like mud vein or slipknot like why you know i don't see anyone saying like you know hardcore death metal bands should dress up you know in their face paint and, and or the uh you know or something like that and yeah. go read the children like why is this it, it it doesn't make sense to me like why this is something that has anything to do with like celebrating uh some important freedom it makes perfect sense society. to me it's well, to trigger guess, yeah. the conservatives that's the whole yeah, point yeah. of it yeah it's just well, it's I think, <laughs> the outrageousness of it triggers conservatives and that's what they right. get off on yeah no i think you're right i think it is to trigger conservatives and i think it also is because it does mesh with the supposed and i say supposed because i haven't i'm kind of taking james Lindsay's word on i've seen his videos on it but i haven't done my own research on it that a lot of queer theory is just about attacking whatever is normalized or whatever the norms are of society. Yeah. And obviously drag queens would be attacking that. And that seems to be, maybe that's why it's, you know, being so highlighted when it shouldn't be. Like if I was, if I was gay or trans, I would be kind of really pissed off that so much of the conversation, especially around pride month of all things gets taken over by drag queens, which (laughs) I don't know. Seems, seems doesn't seem appropriate to uh, to me, especially if I was LGBT. Friends. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't necessarily know. And and haven't drag queens been around for forever? I mean, sure, it's not like sure. they're something brand new. Well, yeah, usually though, it was more like people would laugh at them. Right. It would be like a joke, or it'd be something like you know, women weren't allowed to be in plays. It wasn't like a celebration, you know? Right. Yeah. And I don't even know why this is the thing too. I don't understand why it should be celebrated. Cause again, if it's not, if it's not being, if being a drag queen is not trans and it's just some aesthetic choice, that's like saying society look, needs to accept, you know, insane clown posse people. <laughs> like <look> a normal <laughs> or something. It's like, okay, well, I mean, if that's your aesthetic choice, fine, but what does it have to do with anything? A, a trans person that mm-hmm. passes successfully transitions from yes. male to female or female to male is not going to trigger the conservative sit. You got to understand it just looks like a normal person. I guess. I right? guess. I guess, no one's yeah. going to get triggered by that. Yeah, yeah. You got to you got to bring in the triggering material otherwise it's not it's not the whole point of the movement is really just to trigger their political oppositions to do things that are going to make people angry to spit in the faces of their political adversaries. I really it think it is. Seems to be part of. I mean, yeah, isn't it definitely seems to be the, a lot of it. Isn't this part of the the Trump phenomenon? Trump was like, "Yeah, I'm going to come out and spit spit back at him," and everyone yeah. was like, "Yeah, I love it." 
great. They've been spitting at us forever, calling us Nazis, bigots, homophobes, transphobes. When we don't give a fuck what you do, like that's that's the Republican Party of the 1950s. Okay, <laughs> knock it off. Nobody's policing the racists in, in our party more than the the fucking the the uh, rank and file conservatives. It it is sad that it seems like politics has basically devolved into who can piss off the other side the most. Yeah, it it, it totally has. It, even I mean, I don't know the. Uh, I, there, uh, people want to crap on the Republican Party a lot, but I just I feel like I I mean I see things that give me hope, <laughs> give me hope that uh, mm-hmm. the Republican Party has turned a corner on a lot of things that used to bug the shit out of me. So right, yeah, they're trying to be a more moderate party. I've seen I don't. Um, did you watch Jonathan Haidt on? Glenn Lowry. This is a bit of a digression, but uh, I sent it the, the clip. You sent to you, it to I, me. I didn't watch the whole thing. Yeah, I watched. If, the if whole it's thing. out yet, uh, Jonathan Haidt is is basically making an argument that the Democrats are the party of sanity and the Republicans are the party of insanity. And I'm going, <laughs> okay, the math doesn't really check out on that for me. And mm-hmm. Glenn Lowry completely pushes back on Jonathan Haidt, which I'm glad. I mean, in in a good way. Yeah. But, well, Glenn Lowry's Republican, isn't he? Right. But he's he's talking about Jonathan Haidt is basically making an argument that systemically, because of Trump, the Republican Party is is uh, leaning towards authoritarianism. But it isn't I mean the whole January six hearings that are happening right now. I mean, Pence is a Republican. Last I checked, right? Yeah, but the problem. So, it. But and I, I, I I'm what, saying what, that just to make it right. clear for the audience. Pence right, stood right, up right. to Trump and said, "Listen, I'm not gonna. Yeah, but I'm but gonna certify the election. I'm not gonna. The different. Okay, so what Height is getting at, path. right? So what Height is getting at, um, and I think it's hard to weigh, to some extent, mm-hmm. um, but what, like, the issue is if Pence said, "I'm not gonna do." If I'm, I, you know, I don't have the legal authority, and I don't think it's moral to basically almost start a civil war, Donald Trump. So I'm not going to throw right, folks, right, because that would be fucking insane. Now, like that's where Jonathan Hyde's coming from. Because imagine if Pence didn't throw out the votes. I mean, but we, he did. No, no, I know, I understand that. I'm Look, saying, I, I, I have no assurances. Though. I have right. no assurances that if the shoe was on the other foot and it was Democrats in the same exact situation, that mm-hmm. they wouldn't have. That whatever de- that Kamala Harris would have done what Trump wanted Pence to do. Well, I have I mean, no assurance be, that that isn't going to happen. Don't, I don't know because it had to be this. I'm not sure. It would depend on who was the vice president, depend on what the situation is. Kamala um, but, Harris is going to do it. But that's to me. But this is the, the tribal part of the issue. Why it's so disgusting is that if the shoe was on the other foot, like we would just be in backwards land where everyone on the right would be talking about how the left. This is just. Another example of the left being authoritarian and blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, it's just people just can't move outside of their bubble. And that's what Haidt is responding to. He's not responding to the potential. He's responding to the whole, um, you know, trying to overturn the election thing. Well, the trying so he's, to... he, he's weighing that is more damaging to our country than, than the left's culture war issues, essentially. Right. One, it was Trump was fueling that. Trump was 100% yes. behind it. Oh, no, but wait, I was going to say... Pence didn't play ball. Mitch right, right, McConnell, right. who I'm no fan of, didn't play ball and castigated Trump for like an hour yeah, on the he, Senate floor the next day. Here's what would probably make Haidt feel more confident, is that if the majority of the Republican Party stood behind Pence after the fact and supported that decision, I don't think well, that's, that's a good the point. case. That's a good point, yeah. Right, and I think that's what Haidt is responding to. Right, Okay. That's a great. I mean, point. I think I, I think wish the Hyde world we live in, point. unfortunately, is that we have two parties that are both insane in completely different categories of, like, in different avenues of what they're insane about. Yeah. So. Uh, Satoshi was reptilioid for two hundred knock knock says congratulations to Sitch for finally accepting the the A team into his heart on this blessed day. I don't yeah. Know. <laughs> yeah. Did, when did this happen? Sounds yeah. like fake news. I Sounds heard like 100 percent fake news. Fake news. What I mean, I like saw you. Fake news. We all saw you in the in the chat before the stream. 
Oh no. <laughs> so when I wasn't here, did you sneak into the the Me? and Adam show account and you started, Me? started typing some fake news? Okay, listen. I thought that was you. You everyone were... that was not me any anything you saw in the chat from this account uh before the stream started was fake fake news from adam okay sitch accepted a team as his personal lord and no. savior no. No. uh on father's day i accept uh both my actual father and my surrogate father j mac as my lord <laughs> uh lord hank of house hill for 20 dollars says late and it's all sitch's fault that is true uh, Notice last week how Sitch didn't object when I called the show the pff, Adam and Sitch Free Will Farm. A team keeps their butts cleaned as class is dirty. What? That's awesome. <laughs> wow. Uh, yes. First of all, disgusting. Uh, second of all, no, I gave Adam, since the show is called the Sitch and Adam show, I decided it would only be fair if we called the Free Will Farm the Adam and Sitch Free Will Farm. You know? I'm all about fairness here. Did Andrew Clark send you that clip from efap yesterday he did he did uh, <laughs> on uh on efap they were going over about how they wanted how it should be called adam and sitch because it sounds better <laughs> hilarious there you, go. There you go. listen it's so funny listen, we all know that mauler and rags you know i know they have they, good they have some good movie takes but you know they have really bad uh they like to wind takes. you up so they're doing they're triggering the s class that's why they do right. it right uh, probably Sean for for twenty dollars. Thank you, Sean. Says S class tries to t <laughs> look just because I'm late. I'm getting all this hatred. Okay, just because I was like ten minutes late. S class tries to tell time by staring directly into the sun. In the sun. Does that work? A team can use vibrations in the air to tell time. This is why they are never late. A team reigns supreme. P.S. Can someone drop the Discord links? I have no friends. There you go. CT, please drop. Laser Discord links and whoever has the other Discord links. Yes. Feel free to drop yeah. those in the chat. Okay, let's get back to the video. Jackie, religious liberties are under attack. We're losing our right to teach biblical morality to children who are growing up in public schools run by social engineers who laugh at God and would rather have gender neutral bathrooms and drag queen story hour Disgusting. than teach young people about the wonder working power of the precious blood of the lamb. Yes. See, this is I, this is why. The irony. Oh. Wait, see, when you said you, you you didn't get into the 13 minutes of this video, as soon as I saw this part, I'm like, okay, I'm hooked. Because this is such BS. This is such strong and BS. Like, the argument against wokeness and, you know, teaching the gender-bred unicorn garbage in school, I've never, like, I'm not a fucking Christian conservative. I don't want religion taught in school. This is from a secular perspective. This is why when we had our conversation with Dr. Moeller, wokeness is a civil religion. Yes. And the irony that you just alluded to is that, you know, Contra is insulting or straw manning like, oh, it's all these just religious Christians want their religion taught in school. It's like, no, I don't want any religions taught in school. I don't want Christianity taught in school. And I don't want this woke religion garbage taught in school either. I can't remember who I was reading, but someone was making the argument that the quickest way to deal with wokeness is to declare it a religion legally, because <laughs> then you can <laughs> completely get it out of the institutions and you can yeah. make a compelling legal argument that it is a religion. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yes, that's the direction we need to go. There so, you go. so the this is the irony of what she's doing here because it is, I mean, they're they're being for, forced a, a religion is being forced on their children and they're just pretending like it's science, <laughs> even though right. none of this stuff has been scientifically validated or vindicated or anything. Well, not only is it not science and not been scientifically validated, but most of these fields that they draw upon are literally anti-science. Yes, yeah. Standpoint they theory say, is anti-science. Yeah, they, they literally don't believe in objectivity. They don't want to have descriptive theories anymore. They want to have prescriptive critical theories now. Like, this, this is such a ridiculous argument right? that she's, you know, making. And that's the irony. is She's got, like, the church music going on behind the church lady. And it's like, yeah, but you have that same church music going on in spirit behind, you know, the leftist. Brand, brand two, brand two. Yeah. The gender theorist. Right. 
It's just a different type of religion. We do still have a constitution in this country. I'm sorry that you feel offended by it. Believe it or not, the founding fathers actually wanted to protect us from... See, see, that's... I just... I feel like this video is from, like, 2012. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this, right. This is like someone got in their time machine and just hasn't updated with everything that's going on. Like, myself, I'm a... I'm a... Like, a pro-Christian... Christian atheist. Like, I, I believe there's value in... In the traditional norms of Christianity. And that the value can be objectively measured scientifically. So I'm not making religious arguments. I'm only making secular arguments. But this uh, this fundamentalist Christian Republican character, does that person still exist anymore? I mean, I don't know that you can win elections appealing to that person. I mean, they exist. They just don't have a lot of sway or power. Right, yeah. I mean, this is in the way that you know that they don't have a lot of sway or power is that you have you know Matt Walsh and Chris Rufo who both have those beliefs and yet they don't they frame don't. any of their arguments yeah. that way because they not. know that they're not effective. Of course not. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> which proves that, which literally proves that society isn't in that in that place anymore. Right. Um, whatever twisted necromancy these people think is Christianity, Jackie. These communists are polluting the innocence of children, and if you speak out against the grooming, they call you a bigot. Parents get no say anymore. They're being vilified just for having legitimate concerns about the deviant lifestyles promoted in schools. You know, one day your kids will come home and you won't even recognize them anymore. That's See this one. I'm, I'm missing all the comedy in this because it's all visual gags and I was just listening. I only listened <laughs> to the first 13 minutes, so. It is mildly amusing the the downing the pint of of beer and pumping the keg. I, I'll give her, I'll give her that okay. much. Okay. It's the real agenda here, sexual indoctrination. This generation that's coming up, 20% identify as LGBT, 40% are attempting suicide, and the remaining 70% are being delivered directly into the hands of pornographers, satanic cultists, or worse, Episcopalians. No. No, I won't stand for that. I'm sorry, what does this have to do with drugs? Well, everything. Addiction and sexual brokenness? These are two heads of the same serpent, symptoms of the same cultural leprosy. Single mothers, weak, emasculated fathers, childhood sexual Is anyone abuse? going to ask me what I think? Why was I invited onto this podcast to sit here and listen to the ramblings of a bigoted hate preacher? Well, God has nothing to do with hate. Christ is the definition of love. Well, I'm not talking about Christ, Virginia. I'm talking about you. Justine, if she doesn't hate anyone, then how can she be a bigot? You liberals call everyone who disagrees with you a bigot. Exactly. Why can't you just leave your emotions out of it for once and have a calm, rational conversation with people who have different opinions? So, okay. This is that's, such a, that's such To make fun of that perspective is just... <laughs> Really? Okay. Right. Well, I mean, you're, you're so right when this is like Contra, this is a video that Contra made in 2012 or right. even earlier. This is a video of Contra made in, you know, 20. This is, a, this is a video Contra made when George W. Bush was president. Yes. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> and somehow locked it away in a, in a vault and found it, you know, 10, 15 years later. And is like, oh, hey, look at this video I made back then. Because it's like, who... Like these are arguments that people were making against gay marriage, and I'm sure somewhere out there in America, someone's still making these arguments. But like, who cares about those people? This is not something that's focused on anymore. Yeah. This whole like, oh, I'm not a bigot. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Oh my god! Like, come on. Yeah, who's I, making I, these bi biblical arguments? Right. The conversation has moved so far beyond at least the interesting conversation. I'm yeah. sure Darth Dawkins somewhere in some Discord server is making <laughs> <laughs> right now. Actually, yeah, of course, right now, but yes. we're not. No right, one's paying attention. Yeah, no, no one cares. You know, what he's nobody saying. wants to relitigate the creationist debates of you know the early aughts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. You know, wake up, amazing atheist from his stupor of talking about his weird anarchical antifa nonsense. 
with his beard down to his floor and you know he'll start arguing about you know right. atheism again or something like this is what's happening and then and then what you said is so true this is what annoys me is that there is like i understand the idea that if someone is saying that like you're a horrible degenerate and you're gonna burn to hell or something like like that's pretty uh, that's a pretty rough thing to say it's <laughs> a pretty right. rough thing to say yeah. so, okay and if you do say to someone then yeah i don't think you know you need to be civil necessarily in your response but then the straw man here that contra is kind of lying out is you know you have the middle character the moderator who's like oh why can't you just address her points why you know why do you have to be hateful why do you have to be insulting and the leftist perspective is well she's attacking my entire like existence by calling in the question transness so therefore she's advocating for a genocide so therefore me calling them hateful or a bigot or a naughty name or something is warranted and that's the and that's the problem with how these conversations are framed is that any questioning of any trans stuff is framed in this way of of attacking the existence of trans people which is then twisted around into you want to enact, you know, the Vosh trans genocide, essentially. Right. And therefore, it means I can not only use whatever, ta- I could call you whatever names I want, but I can also use whatever tactics I want against you because dishonest, you literally want yeah. to kill me. Yeah. Yeah. Dishonest tactics become viable in this kind of atmosphere. Right. Yeah. Because it's all perceived as, as defensive. Right. Yeah. I don't know how to get around that. It's just they're going to do that because yeah. it's effective. So yes, just, I don't know the Rufo had some tweets where he was talking about, and I, I know you saw him, the tweets where he lays out an argument for calling the drag Queens trans strippers. Yeah. <laughs> and people were losing their minds over these tweets going, Oh, this is so dishonest. And how can you endorse this? This is mm-hmm. like dishonesty on steroids. And I'm going, Everything that comes out of your fucking mouth is dishonest. What the fuck? <laughs> like, well, it's also it's it's not it's not dishonest because he said, and it's actually very clever. He says, when I say trans stripper, I don't mean transgender stripper. I mean transvestite stripper. Right. Yeah. No. And so no. that's yeah, and that's sort of the the coyness of of the language. But I think it's a I think it's a highly persuasive, very good rhetorical technique. <laughs> Yes, and and he is careful to to make sure that it is an honest representation. I just I feel like obviously the CRT folks dishonesty off the charts. The whole calling everyone a Nazi just because they're you know a rank and file Republican is right. completely dishonest. I just the the goffing and and just you know f- you know fainting on the couch over the you know something that's you know, basically just a marketing strategy when your whole tribe is just dishonest as can be and feels justified in being dishonest because everything, you know, any comment or any investigation into the actual situation with the trans stuff is, is taken as a personal assault on every single trans person that ever existed. It's just, Mm -hmm. it's terrible. It's like, come on, chill out. Yeah, you're exactly right. And like this, this technique of my existence is under attack. Like this is very common. This has been employed oh, yeah. for years. I mean, before this, you know, we were getting this from the right with the whole like, you know, oh, if you walk into a Best Buy and they say happy holidays instead of, you know, <laughs> yeah, Merry know. Christmas, you know, this is the war on Christmas. Christians are under attack, our very yeah. existence. And, and I was thinking like, you know, it's obviously that was ridiculous when that argument was being made, but now they actually have a stronger because of all the all the woke shit. They actually have a stronger claim uh, to make now against all this stuff. And if you basically open the door to this idea that oh, if you're attacking quote unquote my existence and, and they you know it's a hyperbolic claim, and therefore that justifies me doing whatever I want, like you're just opening the door for the other side to use the same uh, dishonest or even violent tactics against you. Because then they'll say, well, you're attacking my existence. You know, you're making my children trans or you're, you know, whatever they want to throw in there. Yeah. (laughs) 
It's not going to lead to good outcomes. Okay. Of course not. Everyone needs to chill the fuck out. Why is that? I mean, I feel like that's kind of the fashionable response in a in an atmosphere where everyone's just losing their fucking minds like twenty four seven. Right. We need some just you know some some hyper cool. Just you know, take a breath, guys. Let's. This isn't the end of the world. Right. But so many people feel like, and and I guess a lot of it's just driven by the media. They're like, if we lose the next election. It's going to be genocide. It's, right. I don't know. I don't buy into any of that. So uh, CT says that it is dishonest, referring to the Chris Rufo uh, trans stripper thing, mm -hmm. uh, because they're not strippers. They're performance artists and do stand up most of the time. Well, see, this is part of the issue, too. It's like, I don't think anyone has a, pro well, I'm sure someone does. I don't think most people have a problem with, like, um, who, have you seen that movie, uh, The Garden of Good and Evil? Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. I believe so. Who's in that? I don't remember. But you remember that, like, it takes place in in your Louisiana, yeah. And your and your previous hometown of Louisiana, and there's like a yeah. famous drag queen, um, Madame Chablique or something. I don't remember what her name that's was. That's got the. That's got Kevin Spacey in it, right? Yes. Hollywood's oh, favorite right. groomer. And he plays. Doesn't he play like a gay yeah. murderer or something? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I might have spoiled that in the ending. But, it's uh, uh, a Eastwood, Clem Eastwood movie. That movie was yeah. so overrated. I think it got nominated for an Academy Award or something, and I thought it was I thought very, it was pretty good. It's kind of ho-hum, but... Okay. But, um, no, so Shabless Deval, Deval, I don't know how to say her name. But anyway, Lady Shablik, I think is how you say her name. Like, I don't think most people have a problem with... You know, oh, someone goes to a nightclub and there's a drag queen there who's just singing songs and performing stand up. Okay. Like, I, you know, who, I, who, no one has a problem with that. I don't care. It's weird because that's so different than like you have the, the drag queens that are not performing, you're not doing stand up. We're just doing like the walk down the, the line wearing like weird or scantily clad outfits. Or just at the pride parade, topless or whatever, with the fake boobs out, or maybe the real boobs. I can't. <laughs> Whether the trans or not, I you can't know, like, tell. These fake right. boobs look very. They move <laughs> the boob physics. Right, and so They're it's very sort of like realistic. one of these. It's sort of one of these situations where I understand what you're saying, CT, but it's one of these situations where like the what I would consider the bad actors of, or maybe not even the bad actors, but the more like this one version of drag queen that for some reason keep getting. Uh, pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed on 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 people like is sort of taking over you know the just having them do stand up you know uh, type of drag queen yeah and so that's why I would say I don't think it is dishonest to classify it that way and unless unless the left as wholesale in the LGBT community would also get on board with denouncing you know, inappropriate drag queen stuff around kids, which they don't seem to do. They seem to, like, Shu got in all this trouble because Shu was like, listen, don't take kids to drag queen shows where they're stripping or they're dancing provocatively or they're wearing lewd clothing or something. Like, don't take kids to burlesque shows, okay? Kids should not be taken to burlesque shows, whether it's a cis woman or a trans woman. Or, I mean, not a trans woman, a drag queen or a cis woman, okay? Kids shouldn't be at that stuff. And the fact that that's a controversial statement, that everyone can't just come out and say, yeah, that's bad, it kind of leads us down the road of Rufo saying, well, I'm going to start calling them trans strippers to sort of galvanize the public against this stuff. So. Yeah. Well, you can tell one side really just is... They want to stay away from that stuff, and one side is just they want to normalize it, which it's kind of fucked up, really. Uh, Kano for twenty dollars says, "Guys, Final Fantasy VII Reloaded is officially on PC now. Epic can sug a fug." There you go. Nice. I'll play it eventually. Uh, Renora Zoro is here for twenty dollars. Says, "Adam, how's your push-ups coming along?" Do you also do pull-ups to balance out the push and pull exercises? I started doing a few dips and pull-ups daily. My job is sedentary. I've been seeing great improvements in my posture. Yes, I I highly recommend it. Yeah, 
I are you do, doing pull? I, I do sets of pull-ups? twenty. I do do pull ups. Yeah. Okay. I do pull ups and push ups. I was like, I was like, Adam, you start doing pull ups. Okay, you got to work your back muscles. Yep, I'm doing both. Well, also okay, because of the drawing arm thing. And now I have virtually like zero pain after drawing for ten hours, so that's good. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I'm I'm getting buff. It's great. Yeah. Uh, Shadow Two Bravo for twenty dollars says, as a veteran, Hurt Locker is one of the worst movies ever made about the global war on terror. Counterpoints will back this up. Uh, <laughs> a team is best Dave as class is set. <laughs> there you go well i mean hurt locker is good as a movie i think i don't yeah. necessarily know about the politics of it or whether or not it's right. accurate but they right. do uh, movies for me are it's not motion pictures it's emotion pictures and that movie definitely tugs at the heartstrings so, right well it, yeah. it's one of those things where you if you see a movie about something you're know Familiar a lot about with, yeah. or a field you've been in, you're going to be like, this movie sucks. But if you haven't seen it, you're like, this movie is very emotional and good. So, yeah. 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 I agree completely. Okay. Well, let's see how that goes. Jackie, regular Americans like me are just trying to set people free from sexual brokenness and protect the rights of children. Kids who are struggling with gender confusion should have the right to access reparative therapy that will make them whole again. Reparative therapy? You mean handing gay children over to exorcists for years of torture? What a terrible wound of self-disgust to inflict on young people, telling them they're broken and polluted and they need God to make them whole. You people are- See, when, when did, I mean, has the Republic, I'm, I doubt the Republican party endorses conversion therapy today there may have yeah. been a time in the past when they did endorse conversion oh, sure, therapy yeah. right but was that the 1980s i mean jesus yeah, exactly. Christ. right we're talking right. about conversion therapy here <laughs> like i i i heard a ben shapiro clip a few days ago where ben shapiro was saying conversion therapy is stupid because it doesn't fucking work ben shapiro <laughs> okay right. Yeah, but he's not Christian. He's Jewish, Adam. Okay. Well, even he is willing to admit the science doesn't support conversion therapy even being plausible. Right. Yes. You're fuck you're fighting a fucking straw man. man. I don't know how you say it doesn't work. Okay. Milo Yiannopoulos it, it, has well, shown us that Milo, it does work. <laughs> Milo Yiannopoulos is in favor of conversion therapy now. It's worked for him. Look at him. He's not gay anymore. I mean, this there's some there <laughs> is some people. I'm joking, but there are there are some people who opt into conversion therapy themselves as adults. Right. Like they feel, you know, they want to become straight for whatever reason. Milo is an exa mm -hmm. an example of this, obviously. Although it's hard to tell with Milo how much of it is for real and how much of it is just an attention ploy. But I mean, there's another guy on YouTube who swears by conversion therapy and he's like a, a conservative Christian and he's done it and it's worked for him or whatever. I, you know, I can't, if you're, if consenting adults want to opt into it themselves, I mean, I kind of think of it like, you know, some people get hypnotized to get, to stop smoking. You know, they want to stop smoking <laughs> as a personal mission or whatever. I don't, I don't even think it's that. Mm. I, I mean, conversion therapy does not work because being gay is biological. Right. Um, but I mean, you can obviously decide not is to it smoking by a I mean, isn't any kind of, well, it, like some a, people it, have a, it an can addictive be personality. A yeah. Right. It's a biological addiction. Sure. Yeah. Um, but I don't think you should, I don't think an addiction and a sexual orientation mm -hmm. fit in the same category. Really? Um, yeah, I would say not at all. What but, is it? What, but hold on. Like. Oh, people like sex a lot. Why mm -hmm. don't we call call that an addiction? I guess in some case, addiction just means that it's harmful for you. Correct? Like it's a behavior. Uh, I don't that's know. Harmful. What, I don't know if addiction requires mm -hmm. that it's harmful, or, or whether it just means it's something that you're drawn to repeat. Okay, well, that's do. eating. Then is an addiction technically. I mean, I have to you're do it every right. day. I'm assuming. So, yeah. I'm assuming addiction has a negative uh, right. quality to the definition. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway. actually, no. Well, I don't know. According to the, de the def dictionary definition, it does not. But generally, right. colloquially, yes, that's what that's how we use it. Mm -hmm. um, but I wouldn't consider that a sexual orientation at all. Um, but what I was going to say is that, you know, conversion therapy doesn't work in that no, like, 
like if someone's gay and they want to not be gay because of their religion or whatever, like, yeah, they cannot, they can not act on that feeling. But the feeling is not going to go away. But they're never going to not be gay. Right. right. It's like, you know. They're always going to have same sex attraction. Yes. The attraction right. is always going to be there. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree. I completely agree. Sure. I mean, I just, uh, selling. yeah. I mean, I'm a, the heteros- I'm going to have heterosexual attraction. There's no way I like. It just can't. I can't. No, nah. it's not going away. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like if you're straight, I mean, someone yeah. can't like convince right. you into being yeah. gay or something. <laughs> yeah. You just see some women, and you're like, I'm attracted. Damn. I'm attracted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm attra- I'm attracted to that. <laughs> right. You're like, mm. yeah. Can you imagine going to some place where they're like, okay, they're putting up, you know, just the women that you're completely attracted to and saying, okay, I'm going to make it so you're completely ambivalent to this image and you're going, hmm, hmm, I don't doubt. I don't know if that's (laughs) going to happen here. Right? Right. Right. Like, what does that even look like? Just trying to, you know, empathize with the conversion therapy mindset. Who, how do you, I mean, where does that come from? You don't pick what you're attracted to. No, no. It's no. some deep innateness in you. Right. I didn't, see, Adam didn't choose to be attracted to uh, thick, big titted snake mm-hmm. girls with long ears, okay? No. Which is born that Long way. ears is just, ugh. <laughs> the, I just, <laughs> what, do you know they've done scientific studies where they've, made on long ears no they've made men sleep in t-shirts and then take it took those t-shirts and give them to women to smell the t-shirts and mm-hmm. rate the attractiveness of the smell on i have the I, I i remember talking about these studies in my slate classes in long years ago. yeah right. so and then they they figure out that that smell is linked to certain compatible like enzyme profiles in their blood and shit it's like Mm -hmm. that's crazy it is crazy there's a biological reason that you're attracted to that smell which makes sense i mean it's gotta it's gotta come from somewhere right Mm -hmm. you just Mm -hmm. smell that oh yeah this person's genes fit my genes very well (laughs) this is like a this is a match right here well i don't know if it's that on point but yeah i understand i understand what you're getting at I wonder how close it is. I feel like it is mm-hmm. pretty close. I mean, it's just one mm-hmm. one factor, one characteristic. Right. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Thickness you created. Let's get back to this boring video. <laughs> Are you cancel culturing me right now? Oh my God, she's totally cancel culturing you. Wait a minute. You people are selling the cure to a sickness you created. Okay. Are you? Hmm. So she let's accused just, her of conversion therapy, and now she's saying, "Are you cancel culturing me?" Let's just let gotcha. the let's just let the irony of that sink in. Yes. Uh, in the in the current uh, gender uh, theory environment here, you people are selling the cure to a sickness you created. Just <laughs> let that. Just let that. Just let that marinate in your mind for a second, okay? Right. Right. I don't. I can't think of anyone else we could accuse. We could make that same <laughs> accusation of Sitch. Could you? Can you think of anyone that um, you no, might I be think, able to make that accusation of? I think the fact that like trans people were, you know, one percent or less, and that the numbers are just drastically increasing, and that twenty percent of Gen Zs identify as LGBT now. I think that's a, a coincidence. You know, I, it's like. That's, well, it's yeah, like that's just natural. Adam. It's, it's just like natural. left-handedness. We're just trying to determine the amount of people in the world <laughs> that are left-handed. Of course, we aren't. We aren't devoting television shows to left-handed people and celebrating them to high heaven. But whatever. Just the irony here. It's just epic. I know. I know. The blinders. The I projection. Know. Not only that, yep. she had to dig up a character from twenty fucking years ago <laughs> and reanimate it like a hand puppet. Who's making who? Who is selling Christianity as the cure to all your ills these days? I mean, some people are, but but not anyone 
Yeah. It's not it's it's not inside the normal discourse of right. politics yeah. at the moment, you know. Cancel culturing me right now? Oh my god, she's totally cancel culturing you right now. Are you thought policing me? No. I'm trying to stop you from thought policing everyone else. You're saying it should be a thought crime? You're saying that I'm a thought criminal? Just because I happen to believe in the traditional biblical definition of marriage between a man and a woman who form a covenant before God who gave his only begotten son to wash away the sins of the world when he died on the cross and was resurrected three days later, all glory to his name. <laughs> it's so ironic, too, that the, the like the difference of the thought policing i mean go to twitter right now and type in mm -hmm. you know any like any variety of trans women aren't women or anything like that and watch how quickly your account gets shut down right i mean right who's thought policing well, who here i mean this is why this is really dumb and the setup of this video is really dumb is because both you know, the right wing straw man and the left wing straw man characters that Contra has created, like they're both trying to thought police everyone. It's yes. just a question of who is actually winning the thought police war. And right now it is the woke left that is dominating the thought police war. Yes. So like it's just just it's you're right, like the blinders on Contra here are they're like the she's got like Chrysler building size blinders on each side of her head. Just right. Like, yeah. Completely oblivious to the here? reality of the situation. Yes. Yes. This might be ivory towerism here. Well, no, it's, it's so funny. Cause they always bring up, you know, they always call everyone a fascist and it's like the, the current leftist woke movement right now is completely dominated by the whole weak, strong uh, enemy dynamic. Or they keep calling like the right and the religious people and the people that are against them, they keep acting like they have all this institutional power and they have all this dominating power in the country. And yet they're so they're actually like really weak at the moment right now. Yeah. And we know they're really weak at the moment right now because not only is culture completely dominated by the left and everyone, you know, people on the left are not getting canceled for any of this stuff. It's people on the right that are always getting canceled for this stuff or people who are not even on the right, but make moderate claims towards the center that are canceled by this. But then on top of that, on top of that, you know, they point to, oh, but, but the Republicans control all these state legislatures and they're passing all these bills and all this blah, 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 blah. There's literally one bill in the entire country that they can point to that was pretty sus, which would actually fit their argument, which was the the Texas bill that tried to make a child abuse to engage in any sort of transgender uh, transition therapy, which a court stopped almost immediately from being you know put into law. And the only other laws that are being put into practice, like the one in Florida, are so insanely mild that it speaks volumes to how much control the left does have on the mainstream culture. Right. If their big trans genocide law is something that says, hey, you don't talk about trans stuff until you're nine years old, <laughs> you know, in public in public school. Like. Right. Yeah. Yet the caricature is completely inverted here where. Yes. The Christian character is in the majority here and controls the culture hypothetically. Right. But I don't I don't know this Christian character that she's created. I mean, good luck if your kid claims to be trans and you have objections to that. <laughs> like, Child Protective Services could come in and take the kid away from you. Yeah, exactly. How are you exactly. in control? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Jackie, these are the silencing tactics of the radical left. And I'm sure the blue check Twitter mob is already coming for me because you can't say anything anymore. And Christians like me, our voices are being silenced. You know who's really being silenced? People who are silent. Being silent is a big part of being silenced. That's what being silenced means. So who's really being silenced? Not people on podcasts. Not rich morons screaming into the biggest megaphone in world history about how silenced they are. No. The people who are silenced are people we never hear from. Because and I really can't emphasize this enough, they are silenced. People in prison, queer teenagers in conservative towns, the actual downtrodden and oppressed people of this country, not you, Miss America, 
not you. This is so. So in Contra's videos in the past, when she would do the multiple character thing, she would usually do like hyperbolic versions of every character, and no one was actually supposed to be like a hundred percent correct. Yeah, I remember like each that. Char- yeah, each character is like kind of like a stereotype, flawed, and and flawed. Yeah, but in this video, it really seems like she's trying to cast the leftist character. As and maybe hero. I'm wrong here, but as like the hero who's just right. Yeah. About everything. Yeah. No. And I, but what she's saying here is really stupid. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> because if you're saying, "Oh, the people that are silenced are people you don't hear from," how do you, you have no clue what they're saying? Then you don't even know what they're being silenced about. Right. Like, like even if that was true, you could make no determination about what these people are are saying. And I find it hilarious that we're supposed to believe that basically the silence people have the same opinion that is accepted on every major platform and every major publication in the, you know, the country that they're supposed to be reflective of the silent people in our, in our society. I mean, if you're a queer teenager in a conservative area, I think you could probably build a pretty popular YouTube channel on that <laughs> profile. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I well, would call it thing. like queer under fire or something like that. Well, and that's why this is, this is, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because this is part of why this is a BS argument is that like maybe 20 years ago, if you were a queer teen in a conservative town, right. you were the only queer person there. But first of yes. all, I don't, I don't think that exists anymore in America because mm-hmm. yeah. kids are more naturally uh, to the left anyway and more accepting of this stuff anyway. So even in a conservative, even in a quote unquote conservative town, I'm sure there's a million queer kids running around. But hypothetically, if there wasn't 20 years ago and you were a queer kid in a conservative town, then yeah, you would be very isolated uh, from everyone else. But now in the age of the internet, yeah. where there's a million fucking communities that are all hyper uh, tailored to some, you know, any interest level including there's a million queer communities that anyone can be a part of. No one is silent. Well, like this is why this is, doesn't make any sense when you're like, if you always have an outlet to talk to anyone on the internet and a community on the internet, you being silenced doesn't come um, generally from like the fact that you're in a physical location where you can't talk to anyone. It comes from the fact that you're not allowed to talk on the internet. And I think that's why, people in the center and the right focus more on the internet as being the silencing tools, because that's the outlet that's supposed to be the outlet for everyone else that kind of uh, gets rid of locational issues. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just weird. Like, Oh, there's all these queer kids that can't go on Reddit or Twitter or discord or any other million communities and they're silent. I just, I don't buy this for a second. This is completely insane to me. Contra needs to speak for the marginalized, silent, silenced people. That no one knows what they're saying because they're so silent. <laughs> Otherwise, there's no Patreon. Oh, of course. This has to... Oh, of course. Larry. This has to happen. I'm sorry, I forgot. Are there... T- who... I'm trying to think who's, like, really silenced here. Hmm. I mean, we've oh, done a pretty... All those- all these queer kids that are running around, they're all silenced. That's why, you, that's why you hear about them endlessly on Twitter. I mean, we've done a pretty good job of shutting up the bigots and the racists. Right, right. I mean, they've all lost their their platforms and their PayPals and shit. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's... Maybe this kind of can reminds go me, out about... and, like, broadcast for them, right? Yeah. Well, this it kind of reminds me of, you know, was it last week or the week before with the, the Washington Post reporter who, you know, tweeted out, he retweeted that joke, you know, all women are either bisexual or bipolar. You just have to figure out which one. Oh, I know. And then the other Washington Post reporter uh, what was her took name? a screenshot. I don't remember her name. Somez, something Somez. She got fired. They finally, someone grew a spine at the Washington Post. Well, no, see, it's it's so funny. So she, so so this 
a female reporter, something so as, you know, retweets that joke and it's like, it's so disgusting that we have, that I have to it's be so you know, disgusting. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, that I have to be share a building, a physical space with this fucking bigot. Ah. And you know, she kept making a big deal about this fucking joke. The guy who it's funny because the guy who made the joke is woke as fuck. Right, he's a hundred percent woke, and so I don't really feel bad for him personally. But I feel <laughs> bad like, what it like, like. I feel bad what you. it represents. Yeah, because I forget there was some old you tweets. made your bed. <laughs> yeah, there were some tweets where he was 100%, you know, on board with cancel culture and much of other woke bullshit. But so anyway, he deletes the tweet, the joke, and he's like, I apologize. I'm so sorry I retweeted this offensive dad joke that's like a two on the scale of mildness. Oh, my God. And But that wasn't enough. And, of course, she just keeps attacking and keeps attacking this guy. So eventually the guy gets a month. He gets suspended for a month Unpaid without pay. Leave, yeah. yeah. Right. And you think that'd be the end of it, but no, this fucking idiot bitch moron who I guess has nothing better to do, doesn't actually have a real job, who's just so happy, just so addicted to Twitter and getting the likes and retweets that she just keeps bitching about this fucking incident. Okay. After the guy has been suspended for a month, she's still bitching about this shit, still shit talking all the Washington Post uh, head, you know, editorial staff and all the people at the the tops of Washington Post, and she won't shut the fuck up about it until she got fired. Because they're like, "Listen, lady, you won't shut up about this stuff, okay? You won't do your fucking job. You just all you do is whine about this and insult the Washington Post. Fuck you!" And they fired her ass because she wouldn't shut up about it. I just think that's hilarious. Yeah, I went and looked at her Twitter timeline, and it she completely goes silent. Got real <laughs> the day quiet she all got of a fired, yeah. Yes. So the yes. day she got fired, she stopped tweeting. <laughs> Well, you know, and I'm actually, I'm really glad that that event happened because she, I didn't realize this. She was in, she tried to sue the Washington Post a year before for, um, for sexual or gender oh, discrimination. Uh, they're, they were looking for a reason to fire her. They're probably right. thankful as hell that this all happened. No, but see, but, uh, but I don't even think that's fair to say because they didn't fire her oh, yeah. right off the bat. Yeah, they only fired her because she wouldn't literally shut the fuck up about this, even after they disciplined the person she was complaining about. Right, she just kept going on and on and on and on about this. But I'm glad this happened because this really needs to be a fucking wake up call to the people that run these publications, that these woke, cry fucking bullies, are just incredibly toxic and they provide no value to any publication or any business, and all they do is harm it. Yeah, you need to get these people out of there. Yeah. 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 There's got to be like a army of them at Twitter. <laughs> I bet there is. I listened to the talk with Elon Musk that mm -hmm. Elon Musk did a talk with Twitter staff. And oh, my God, the questions. It's obvious Twitter is completely run by SJWs. Yeah. Yeah. I listened to part of that. Um I wish it was him taking, I wish it, like, I wanted to hear the back and forth. Right. Because that'd be kind of, I think it's kind of boring. It, it made me feel better about Elon because basically he's like, oh, when it comes to free speech on Twitter, I want, I want basically everything that's legally allowed to be allowed on Twitter. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like he wants it to be right to the bar. And then his, his, and I think his smart about this, he's saying, but there should also be tools where if people don't want to see certain content, then they don't have to see it. And that's right. about it. But yeah. it should still be allowed to be up there. And then also they asked the question about like, how do you feel about diversity? And it's funny because he was basically like, I promote people in my company based on merit. I don't give a fuck about like checking boxes. Well, and also he said, you know, we should focus on having a billion people on the platform. Yes. And yeah. that obviously, if you're focused on having every single human being on the platform, you're focused on diversity. But the, right. that's where the the rub is because Twitter doesn't want diverse. Twitter wants all conservatives eliminated from the platform. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's sad. You, Mother Superior, you're not silenced. You just know that what you're saying is indefensible. So you defend your right. To say it okay but if i'm not being silenced then why can't i say the n-word why do you want to say the n-word so 
I only have freedom of speech God. when it conforms to your liberal ideology. God damn it, Jackson. Um, that sounds a little bit like being silenced. She's stonewalling me. All over America today, white parents are having to sit their children down and explain that there's certain words they just can't say because of the color of their skin. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. would be turning in his grave. Would he? I mean, he's definitely turning in his grave, but not for the reasons you think. Jackie, can I bring this back on topic? And I hate... See, I can't let you tell this video is boring. To me, like, this video is enraging. This is yeah. straw man after straw man after straw man after straw man. Oh, yes. The problem with free speech right now in America is because white people are just so sad that they can't go on the roofs of their houses and shout the fucking n-word like that's really the pressing issue that everyone's so concerned about oh why can't we all get an n-word pass yeah it's also it's completely backwards remember on the tuesday stream when we were talking to charlotte it's pretty obvious her mom already has the n-word pass and it's like charlotte that's going mom you can't say that shut up <laughs> What are you doing? Mom, don't say that in public. Right? It's there not the go. parents sitting the kids down going, you can't say this shit. It's the kids trying to shut the parents up. Right, right. She's like, I don't have a YouTube account. I don't have a fucking Twitter account. I don't care. Yeah. It's completely inverted. Anyway, who cares? That's stupid. Share the good news of the gospel. That's not the topic. I have prayed on this. And honestly, the Holy Spirit has filled me with so much... Do you, do you think Christians, too, conservative Christians, want to go around using the N-word? It's just... It's no. so weird. No. No, it's so weird. The, the Christians are generally about, you know, civility between people. Like, even, even the ones that are against the gays, that are against gay people, they still are, like, nice about it which makes it even a little more unnerving, but. Passion for young people struggling with same-sex temptation. You know, when I look out at all these angry people at the pride parade, doing all this sexual acting out and wearing provocative clothing in a desperate bid for attention, I see the broken childhoods and I see the craving for acceptance and belonging and I feel for them. I really do. Wow, you're such a good. Okay, I need to I need to address what you said, Adam, because mm -hmm. I think it's very wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you could say the same thing like 40 years ago, okay, when people were like really anti-gay. You know, it could be like, oh, all these fucking horrible Christians are out here telling the gays that they're going to burn in hell and doing all this stuff. And the gay people, they're just so nice. They're just, you know, they just want to be, you know, accepted by society. They want to live their own life, you know, and, and not have bigotry towards them. The people, there's some truth here. And this is the problem with what Contra's kind of putting on forward, and this is why I wish this was like old Contra where she was actually nuanced and intelligent, is that the side that generally uses civility is the side that that's losing not in power. <laughs> right. Is the side that's losing is the side that's not that's in a power. great that is a great point. Yeah. Right. And so like the second one side gains the influence, all the civility goes out the window because then they realize, oh, I can just start strong arming people into, you know, following yeah. me. So when they had the power, they were like, we're going to pass Prop 8 in California and just make gay marriage illegal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or Which, they were going to. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So they are. It's the civility really is. Is just because of the political dynamic at this point. Yeah. Well, see, and that's what's so dangerous. Th that when like the when you hear the far leftists complain about civility politics, um, that's why that's such a dangerous idea to to complain about that because civility is the weapon of the side that's losing the marginalized yeah yeah the, well the somewhat mar you know the culturally marginalized the politically marginalized and you want that to be the weapon okay because you because if you take away civility then the oh yeah violence yeah violence and terrorism yeah so 
So you want civility to really be the only viable path to political success. Yes. Yeah. Well, you want you want one side to have to be you want one side to be able to use civility as a weapon to force the other side to playing by the rules, essentially. Right. Yeah. Because that's what civility is. Civility is a, basically a respect for our, our institutions and so our you rule saying, of law and our processes. So are you saying that once the right does gain political power again, it's just like gay marriage illegal? Because that's the that's what the left is afraid of, I and that's what they're saying. I don't think that's going to happen at all. Um, I mean, I would be very surprised if the Supreme Court tried to overturn the gay marriage uh, right. law. I mean, if they did, that would be the biggest gift to the Democratic Party. That they, that would even be even a bigger gift than them overturning abortion. It would be such a sh like a horrible decision for them to make. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they'll do it. But even if they did, that, see, that would be very fascinating to me. I almost kind of hope they do just for the chaos factor of it all. <laughs> like, well, I don't, like I don't know if it is going to be chaos, to be honest well, it with would, you. Well, but see, I would be very interested to see how many states would then try to outlaw gay marriage again. Or would most states, even Republican states, just be like, gay marriage is fine. Right. I would be very curious to see if, uh, how that all sh shakes out. If they do, I think it's going to be somewhat backlash related. If if Republican states go after gay marriage, it's going to be backlash related over things like the the you know drag queen story time at at elementary school. Well, that and, will be the justification, but that would have right. that has nothing to do with gay marriage. Well, hold on. There's a difference between justification and and backlash. I'm saying mm -hmm. that in a world where these things that are people have a problem with because children are involved, in a world where that is not the case and just, you know, gay marriage, you know, gay gay couples are just like heterosexual couples and, you know, they're they get well, married I, and yeah, start voting right, Republican right. and like yeah. adopt a bunch of kids and have a, a family. I don't think the Republican Party is against gay marriage. Then, I understand I think. what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, right. Because of all that other stuff, people will get suckered into being against gay marriage, essentially. Well, I think they are against. I think they're against the the overtly sexualized, you know, branding that people want to bring out around pride month i think that's what they're that, really what, what, against i understand that but what we have to make clear mm -hmm. for people who want to uh, clip champ you mm -hmm. is that you're not saying that there's a connection between gay marriage and like drag queen story hour what you're saying is that because people have such a negative response to drag queen story hour or any of that stuff or a lot of the transgender stuff that basically people that are against gay marriage will be able to package them all together right and get people on board with being you know against it have you seen that clip that's going around that's the drag queen that's basically against all the all the super sexual stuff at pride oh uh, no i have not and drag she's a, a i don't know is it a she or is she with a drag queen well, I don't it's know. usually he if it's a drag queen okay so it's the drag queen is is basically saying all that super sexual stuff at pride and in your face kind of trigger the conservatives mantra is really hurtful yes to the gay community she's basically yes. saying that they they've had to fight the pedophilia thing forever and you know finally they're making inroads and then all of this stuff comes out and it makes them look bad so i mean i i'm yeah i understand what you're saying that there's no connection and that a lot of cons conservatives are guilty in the past of of linking homosexuality to pedophilia but that i mean that is i mean is it not is that not happening i mean i don't understand why what you're why 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 is it why are they so insistent on putting this kind of stuff in elementary school oh i guess they want to do it because they want to normalize kids around gay people they want they well, want they want to 
Right. It's they, not well, pedophilic. The, it's they want kids two things. to be comfortable around gay people. This is like the CRT thing all over again. Okay. Mm-hmm. 99% of the people that are in favor of CRT publicly being taught in schools have no fucking clue what CRT is at all. Of they course. They have no idea what it is. Right. They think it's the continuation of the civil rights uh, and they think it means something to do with being anti-racist or teaching, you know, the correct history. It's the exact same thing with all the queer shit in school and all the trans stuff in school. The people that are most people, 99% of people that are advocating for this think all it means is like, don't hate gay and trans people. Okay. But we know that that's not really what's happening, that the acad- on the academic level, the actual literature that people want shoved in the schools has a more a far more nefarious leaning to it. Right. And with CRT, obviously it's sort of like the great sort of anti-white, uh, anti-integrationist, anti-liberal individual rights, you know, black nationalist, black separatist ideology. And with queer theory, it's this sort of we need to deconstruct and destroy everything that's normative, especially things that are normative sexually. Well, and you know, uh destroy the nuclear family to bring around communism sure that's yeah that's like the even deeper level right uh, to it right and so yeah so that's why the sort of arguments shaping out kind of the way it is and you have like i haven't seen the video but you have the the drag queen that you're talking about is someone who's smart enough even if they don't understand that that's like the second or third level deep of what's going on in these spaces they understand like hey we spent years trying to fight this idea that you know gay people or drag queens are pedophiles and are preying on children and so we should all be in favor of this like don't sexualize pride parades you know if you want to go do sexualized stuff at nights and bars or nightclubs then be my fucking guest but out in public during the day during a pride parade it should be we are normal people we're broadening the in-group we're celebrating our acceptance in liberal society. And that's because the drag queen in that video, I would guess, has a liberal sense of il- liberal sensibility. Right. And they recognize intuitively that this weird leftist sensibility is different. The problem is most people are not attuned to that. They're just simply responding to tribal factors. As you said, they're just, we want to piss off the right. And if the right's complaining about something, then that means that you know, I have to be on the other side of it. And that's basically the end of the thought process. Yeah. It would, if pride was focused on emphasizing the commonalities between the two communities, that'd be fucking great. <laughs> that'd be totally right. great. Right. But they're focused on emphasizing the differences and often yes. the irreconcilable differences which is just a path for failure it's not a lot of not all obviously but a lot of pride stuff is not about emphasizing the differences it's about emphasizing the stereotype differences right you know for every uh because there was some video that was making the rounds of i assume a trans woman uh there was a guy who apparently had uh boobs um, woman, I don't know what, I don't know how they fucking identify. There's a guy that had boobs. He, he looked like a guy. He had like facial hair and everything, but he had boobs and he was, you know, and wearing a thong and he was running around during this, in the middle of the day during this pride parade, you know, flopping his tits everywhere. And I think uh, Andy No posted that this person was arrested for multiple times in the past for, uh, what's it called? Like when you're, uh, exposing yourself in public indecent exposure yeah indecent exposure stuff so obviously this is like a weird thing for them and then they're able to use pride parades as like cover right for this sort of behavior because you have all these you know uh liberals all these well-meaning liberals who are just like you know too afraid to speak up and be like i think this is fucked up and you know blah 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 and they're like i don't want to be called a bigot you know I, i guess this is where we are now right yeah sad and but for, um, for every one of those guys, there's you know ten LGBT people out there that are, you know, they just want to fucking live a normal fucking life. Yeah. Yes. 
Anyway. Good but... person for taking pity on the poor sad homos. You know, what you people really love is the aesthetic of being compassionate. But all you're really doing is calling into question the worthiness of other people's lives. Yeah. It's kind of fun. Again, the irony here, because again, obviously the leftists are kind of obsessed with the aesthetic of being marginalized. Of course. It's their whole identity. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Virginia, why can't you just live and let live, you know? Whatever happened to love your neighbor? Jackie, anyone who knows me will tell you that I'm the most compassionate person that they know. But love your neighbor doesn't mean anything goes. And it certainly doesn't mean that we all just bow down to the intimidation tactics of the secular ruling elite. It doesn't mean that we can't ask questions about this narrative we're all being force-fed that God and scripture have no place in American life anymore, that we're all supposed to submit to the takeover of these Marxist plutocrats imposing their queer ideology, which says that if your child comes home from school and announces she's a different gender this week, then you have no choice but to surrender her to the surgeon's knife. Slicing up tiny little children's bodies. That's where this is headed. Yeah, you're right. Only Christians care about their kids being wrongly yeah. diagnosed with gender dysphoria. Uh, well, <laughs> like secular atheists, they right. don't care. Well, in this video, it's actually, it's funny because all the people love this, this video. They're all, yes, queen in this video. This video if this was watched by right wing audiences, yeah, would do incredible damage, incredible damage to the left wing argument. Because if Contra and people on the left want to make it and they want to posit the idea that the only people that have these concerns about, uh, you know, kids uh, transitioning that don't need the transition, if they want to post that as that that's only the Christian conservatives that are making that argument then guess what? You're going to make people more Christian conservatives, you idiot. Oh, like, that's this, true. It, it's a complete, yeah. like this ploy, this straw man that Contra is creating will 100% backfire and blow up in her face and just make more of the people that she doesn't want to exist. Right. Yeah. It's. I just. I'm not going to be a Christian conservative though. You can, I'm safe. I understand that, but like, <laughs> it's just, I don't, it's so weird to me. How is it that it's so fucking obvious? It's so fucking obvious how people will react to this stuff. And we see people reacting to this stuff constantly. Like all this, you know, the, the sort of resurgence of white nationalism literally happened because, oh, we're going to start using racial identity politics to shit on white people. And surprise, surprise, you have a resurgence of white nationalism, you know, in response to that. And it's like, it's the same, going to be exactly the same thing with the trans stuff. And it's just how many times can stupid idiots walk into, like, step on the rake and smash themselves in the face again and again and again until they stop stepping on the fucking rake? I just, this, this is just weird to me because I just, it doesn't touch reality as far as I can tell. Robert Putnam has a bunch of studies on how the anti-gay stuff in the in the evangelical movement back in the 80s just emptied the pews out, man. Young people were not wanting to hear it. Young people didn't like the, you know, obviously, you know, as as homosexuality gained more and more acceptance, people came out of the closet and everybody knew someone who was gay. And they didn't want to show up in church and see people beating up on friends and family so right that just completely destroyed the evangelical movement but this is this is why this just seems like so out of touch with reality like who is this this character now i mean it, it seems like the it seems like the church i just unless you're talking about the westboro baptist church most churches are just not virulently anti-gay anymore well, they avoid the topic because they want to keep but the, the mega church is full of people. This is part of the danger. Another part of the danger here is that that effect that you're talking about, where the churches were losing too many people yeah. because of the anti-gay rhetoric. It's because, as you said, they would have a gay friend or family member and they would say, hey, 
this friend or family member is just a person like me. Right. Who has, you know, most of this, he has all or most of the same values that I have. They're just gay. And so it seems really fucked up to me that I'm going to some church where they're telling me this person is going to burn in hell forever. Yeah. But that was the process. It was because you looked at this person and you said, this person is part of my in-group. This person is the same as me. And that's why it's so dangerous to have this new, we have to trigger the conservatives. We have to destroy everything that's normative mindset because then that will not happen. People will not look at, at people and say, hey, this person who's doing the drag queen story hour for kids is the same as me. They'll never have that. Thought right. Process. You're Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly right. They're creating a stereotype of gay people that gay people will aspire to be and normies will not understand or relate yeah, to. Yes, exactly. She's create yeah, like a lot of this stuff creates negative LGBT stereotypes for individuals. Yeah. And it's just that's what that drag queen that you're talking about is trying to point out. They're like, listen, <laughs> like, you know, if adults want to do adult stuff, you know, with adults, that's fine. But I just, you know, <laughs> keeping away from the kids like have, why is this so difficult have you seen that video because it sounds like maybe i haven't okay no we, but i can we, i, I set it heard... aside i set it aside to watch on tuesday just because it's super right. interesting and compelling yeah. it's it's a, i've heard i've seen many videos like that video right from other people but i mean yeah no it's she she he i don't know it's 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 saying that community's is sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And that's just like, that's an adult community, which yeah. I mean, I can relate to, right? Sure. Just why you don't want kids at the sex, drugs, and rock and roll parties. Come on. Right. They're kids. Well, that's why I'm saying, I, I think the way to conceptualize a lot of it is comparing it to, to rock and to heavy yeah. metal to sort of, you know, people dressing up to do that stuff, you know, that none of that's, it's in the same vein. It's not more or less valid. It's the same thing. It's just such a buzzkill, right? Who wants, you know, you have a party, you know, there's drugs and alcohol going on. Some moron brings their fucking kid. You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> you fucking idiot. Right. Why are you ruining it for everyone? Uh, Dr. Diller for $5 says, A team beats his meat to pictures of feet. And keeps giving himself black eyes running into doors. Misinformation. <laughs> Misinformation. I'm gonna try uh, to stop. I'm gonna try to stop saying fake news. Okay. I think it's uh, Titachi, people. thank you so much for being two months free. Wool Seeker says, Happy Father's Day, everyone. And thanks for fathering us, Sitchin Adam. As an AT member, special thanks to Papa Adam. Hope you guys have a good one. Well, thank you, Chitachi. Even if you're a dirty, dirty AT member. We should have her on the Tuesday stream sometime. We should have her. We should have Danimal on. We should have Kaval on. Because sure. we have a bunch of, I mean, I've done stream. They've all been on. Well, Chitachi's been on one stream with me, and she's great. So Cool. And I'm down. Dan, we've done streams with Danimal and Kaval. I guess we had Danimal and Kaval. We what did, am I yes. saying? Yeah, what are you saying? <laughs> We should have him uh, on again. We can have him on again. Uh, Metalworks for eleven ninety for twenty dollars says she is aping analog horror really hard, and that's very annoying because I've seen it done better, like Local Fifty Eight or Gemini Home Entertainment. Yeah, maybe really? there's some of that. Yeah, maybe she is doing analog horror kind of uh, vibe. So yeah, I didn't I didn't catch that, but maybe. The Ductator for twenty dollars says my company gave me Juneteenth off tomorrow, so I get to watch it live. Yay, Slayer! Really? Oh, wow. A uh, layman for well, five Canadian might be the wrong message. There, yeah, but... maybe. A uh, layman for five Canadian. Hey, layman says uh, I was listening to you and Destiny and Actress Destiny Warrior and uh, Lauren's housing conversation. That was basically you guys just yelling at each other. So it was pretty funny. Uh, did you guys see Contra's tweet that said childhood innocence is a made-up com concept? It was insane. I did not see that. No, I'll check that out. That it's interesting if she said that because that's literally yes queer theory one hundred and one. It is yeah is the concept that childhood innocence is not real, and that's part of why there's sort of this jump to sexualize uh, everything or to you know explain sexual stuff to children. So that's. 
I'm I'm shocked that she went in that direction. I guess I didn't think she was that open about that kind of stuff. But I of oh sorry. I remember yeah. it was which what who is the who is the president from the bank war book? Okay, I'm spacing uh, Andrew out Jackson. Name. Andrew Jackson, yeah. Andrew Jackson was working as a like in the military as a Confederate spy or not a Confederate spy, uh some some spy when he was twelve years old, which is just kind of mm -hmm. crazy. When you think <laughs> of the concept of childhood innocence, right? That's pretty crazy, yeah. yeah. It wasn't the he was before the Confederacy. I don't remember them talking about that in the book at all. It was some other book I read. Oh, okay. I was yeah. like, I was like, he's like, a I badass. I only remember yeah. it because I tweeted it out. Well, it's it weird. Like, he was a badass, but he also was an idiot. So <laughs> he was doing as, as we learned from the the banking book. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, no one is slicing up children's bodies. What are you talking about? You absolute lunatic. Well, speaking of the transgenders, in the interest of... Isn't, I mean, there was that movie just recently and the they did a... I mean, they've done double mastectomies on girls that are under 18, right? Yeah, of course. Of yeah. course. Yeah. So when Contra says nobody's slicing up children's bodies that's not true <laughs> that's just factually incorrect yes. oh my god no one is slicing up children's bodies what are you talking no one is slicing up children's bodies what's up with that so okay i found the tweet i mean that's hand waving is it my tweet no i found contrast tweet. andrew that's jackson no. no look up my tweet how do i I'm find that your tweet <laughs> uh Contra said, this is from June 6th, mm -hmm. said, random drag queens in public spaces pose exactly zero threat to children. These people don't care about protecting children. They care about protecting, quote, childhood innocence. And ignorance romanticized. A bullshit fantasy made up by adults reflecting every adult prejudice. So there you go. That's a, that's a, that's a pretty dumb tweet. It's a pretty dumb tweet. Wow. Yeah. That's what you get when you your ivory tower goes up so high in the sky you can't even see what's going on on the ground. Mm -hmm. Hit it up. No, I'm not going to. <laughs> Talking about you absolute lunatic. Well, speaking of the transgenders, in the interest of full disclosure, I feel I should let our listeners know that one of our guests this week used to be a man. Isn't that right, Justine Tableau? Or should I say, Justin? Oh, come on. <laughs> really? I hear you laughing. I do like the picture of Eminem. That's pretty funny. That's a so, good joke. Yeah, for those of you who are just listening, she put a picture of Eminem up as the previous, the male version of ContraPoints. So. I feel like, I don't know why, I feel like Eminem looks like so many like pre trans <laughs> women. like something about his features. I don't know what it is. He's like a good default of like the pre trans woman. Fascinating. Do you disagree? I, but I don't know. I mean, oh, okay. okay. How is that? I guess he has a feminine looking face. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Please. All right, we're doing this. There's your bathtub. I know. Where's my censored? Oh, I got it right here. Here we go. <laughs> look, at this, look at this prude here. Where could he go? He's such a prude. Come on. We don't want to offend anyone. This is a family show, guys. Is this a throwback to the 1970s? No, it's a throw forward to the 20 I don't give a fuck. Well, don't mind if I do. Ugh. Nothing wrong with the proud history of good American tobacco. 
Good Virginia tobacco. Jackie. Uh, the Freedom Podcast LLC does not endorse the sale or use of cigarettes, vaporizers, or other nicotine products to individuals under 21 years of age. Some restrictions apply. Results may vary. Excuse me, Jackie. I'm really not... It's so bizarre that... I know what you're going to say. I could sense... I can read your mind, but continue. Go ahead. No, you tell me what I'm going to say. You're going to talk about the social contagion of cigarette smoking. But the denial of social contagion for trans stuff, right? No, no. I was going to talk oh, about. Oh, okay. I was going to talk about the entire movement being predicated on harm reduction, yet ah. doing something that's so provably harmful for yes. people. Yes. Okay, that's a good point too. Yeah. yeah. Which I just right. you throw away your harm reduction card as soon as you like glorify smoking. I mean, Ooh. the fucking mm -hmm. evil hollywood industry has gotten smoking out of most movies now i mean right come on it's like bare minimum that's a you know that's a great way to frame it because i noticed too i thought it's stupid that like and contra does this but a lot of red tubers and a lot of leftists do this where they have like the i'm drunk all the time because i'm miserable yeah aesthetic alcohol is not good for you <laughs> not only is it not like that doesn't seem to be like a a good like selling point for your ideology <laughs> but you're right from a harm reduction standpoint you kind of lose all your harm reduction cred when you're like advocating for basically rampant uh drug use in that sense yeah um but i'm surprised because i really thought you were gonna bring up the social contagion like contra smokes for like two seconds in a video and then feels the need to put up a disclaimer to not to, to get kids not to smoke right and it's interesting to me and obviously it was true that there was this big fear of social contagion and like oh we're making it look cool if you cigarette smoke but again there's a complete denial that maybe that effect is happening too when it comes to a lot of these transgender issues yeah that's obviously i mean they don't believe in social contagion all of a sudden so well they believe in it very selectively Right. Obviously. Yeah. But some things they want to be socially contagious. Well, that's why this is part of why this video is weird too, is that I mean, look, I could be wrong. Maybe there was some other debate that Contra made this video about. To me, this seems very much like an amalgamation of like the Matt Walsh on Dr. Phil show and other things like that. And it wasn't like Matt Walsh ambushed any of the people on that show, like about their transness. Like that was why they were on the show in the first place. Yeah. So I mean, I don't even know. I don't even know what's being referenced here. But bunch of straw men. Comfortable with this? I was not warned that there would be a transgender here today, and I really have nothing to say to this eunuch servant of jezebel well i wasn't planning to spend my day seated across from a goddamn exorcist but here we are virginia if you're not prepared to get splashed then you can get out of the free speech zone because you're about to get wet <laughs> excuse me i agreed to this podcast because i thought you were a conservative i'm a libertarian anything goes baby usa jackie the problem with libertarians is that a society with no values cannot function. Christians tried to warn you that if you changed the definition of marriage, it would be a free-for-all. And now, here we are, 96 points. You know, instead of have Contra, instead of dressing up as the Christian, they should just had, she should have just asked distributors to come in. I'm sure he would have been happy to play this role. Why? People are still butthurt over our talk, talk with Dave. I can't believe you brought it up again now. There's I, be like I brought it up because... Because I saw he posted about this video a while ago. Oh, really? I think he liked it. So now there's going to be I, I, 25 comments. Every, every you were time, so mean well, to no, Dave. I've lost all respect for you. Oh my God. Whatever. Those people can cry. Those people can fucking cry me a fucking moat of tears. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's fine with that. Um, but uh, no, it's just because it's every time the, the, like, the, the religious person talks, I can just see like Dave in my mind nodding, <laughs> <laughs> nodding a lot. And I, and I only because he, he, I think I'm trying to remember what he said about this. He liked the video. And I think that's kind of what he was saying. About Finally, it, our, our perspective is being properly represented. Yeah, exactly. In a, exactly. In a video. We've sure we've been thrown out of CPAC for five years running, but who cares? <laughs> right. Well, that's, that's not fair. Okay. Why? <laughs> Why? 
Do I have to be fair Ooh. now? Yeah, okay. Yeah, there you go. In five genders in American classrooms, it seems we've forgotten that God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Eve and Kai and Jaden and Caden and Lilith and Ashton and Skylar and Rainbow. Homosexuality is a gateway drug to transgenderism. And from there, it's just one step away to pedophilia and bestiality. And that's the real agenda here. These people want to lower the age of consent and legalize sodomy with all the beasts that walk the earth and the birds of the sea and all the fishes of the sky. Well, Virginia, if you're so worried about it, why don't you take your Mickey Mouse sexual neurosis back to the nunnery in old Missouri? Do they not have demons to slay in the back country? I rejoice in persecution and revile. See, like, <laughs> this video is so weird to me. Be and I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm interpreting this video completely incorrectly because you have like the right wing, super right wing religious person who, you know, they're making their own aesthetic argument about the problems they have with society. Problems which a lot of people agree with. They won't agree with a lot of stuff that the Christian character is saying, but they'll agree with like half of the things they're saying. And then the only counter to that is like the leftist character who gives no actual counter at all. They right. just say like, you're an exorcist. You're like a crazy uh, preacher person. Like, so what is, I guess, what is this video supposed to be doing exactly? What is the point of this video? It is to create negative stereotypes of Christian conservatives. Yeah, but it, it almost feels like it's doing the opposite. Because if you have two characters that are arguing, and one of them is making half of half of the points that you agree with, and the other one is providing no rebuttal, tangible oh, pushback. This is irresponsible platforming at its finest. Yeah, this was like this is so weird. Like Contra irresponsibly platformed herself. Like yes, <laughs> yeah. Like it's so bizarre. She's not even attempting to rebut these arguments. Yeah, like it's just very strange to me. Yeah. And yet, if you look at the comments, they're all like, this video is so well done. I'm losing my mind. Yeah, because it's all based <laughs> on the pictures and not the words. Or I like this former Q follower here. So, you know, there's no like, way really, the, vir the virtue signal. Oh, I fell down the Nazi rabbit right. hole. And now you've yeah. saved me, Contra. Yeah, you, Please you know, they're really, notice uh, me really in the. A good headspace. I have already deleted this comment once because of anxiety. Just want to say that your ability <laughs> to conceptualize and articulate both sides is incredible. I wish we saw more people that had this level of understanding for both sides. That's that that comment is just completely blackpilled me. I, I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight over that comment. Thank you. Yes. Is it? Isn't it like this? Someone honestly thought that this was a good portrayal of, of yeah. both sides of the argument here. Yeah. So. It's true. All conservatives are mentally challenged. Yeah. And and all leftists are basically feckless drug addicts, you know. <laughs> Crazy. Maybe that's true. For the sake of righteousness. For the Lord. What's wrong with drug addicts? You fucking There you go. I guess I'm out. just hoity toity over here. Anti drug addict. Watch out. Mm-hmm. Look, I would never do drugs in a video, for heaven's sakes, but, you know. Lord commands me not to hate my brother, Justin. Wow, super controversial, super provocative, super brave and super bold. We're living in Orwell's nightmare, but you're a freedom fighter and you refuse to be silenced. Amazing. Look, I just think it's great that three people with differing opinions can all sit down in a room and have a respectful conversation. Wow. Cheers to us. Is it great? You know, I don't think it's that great. And I don't think there's anything respectful about the two of you sitting here interrogating the morality of queer people, something you know absolutely nothing about. Oh, I know more than you might think. I used to be a homosexual. No, you God, what? No, I, I'm not. I, did, I, met, I checked out before the turn came. Okay. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Now she's the Miley Annopolis character. Yes, and actually the doing this today. I'm sorry, you used to be a homosexual? That's right, Jackie. Before I was saved. Well, also, if, you know, the leftist character is like, oh, 
you don't know anything about queer morality or whatever. It's like, okay, but so explain it. Yeah, us, what is then. queer? I yeah. want to know what queer morality is. Right. I mean, obviously, you're using a different different definition of morality than me, but let's get let's hear that first. Right. What is your definition of morality? I don't know if Contra's ever done a video on that subject. On morality? Yeah. Well, on like, quote unquote, what is queer morality? Yeah. Here, here we go. I used to be a lesbian. That's who I thought I was. I lived that lifestyle. You used to be a lesbian. Okay. Uh, name five things you love about men. This should be good. Uh, gather around everyone. Let's all witness the power of Christ. I'm sure this will be very convincing. I love the Lord who does not command me to be straight. He commands me to be holy. Fear not. You will no longer live in shame. For your creator will be your husband. Okay. Well, if you want to be the bride of Christ, then by all means, but you know, keep it in the bedroom. I'm tired of you people shoving your lifestyle in everyone's face. Virginia, I'm confused. I thought people are just born that way. Like, Jesus can't change that. Jackie, the mainstream media establishment doesn't want you to know that people like me exist because that goes against their narrative. But recovered homosexuals should be allowed to tell our stories. The ploy of the enemy. I don't, I just, I don't hear, I don't hear any, this, I don't hear any of this in conservative media. No, I know. That's why I just, I feel like this is completely divorced from reality. Well, what does this have this, to do with the conversation we're having now? This is, com well, it's, it's, to me, this is very dishonest because it's obviously supposed to be like a stand in for trans regret, which is far more common. <laughs> Right. Then, uh, you know, recovered homosexuals or whatever the fucking dumb. Term oh, okay. Is. I got you. I got you. So she's the metaphor. She's mixing metaphors here. It's right. Not really about that. She's playing trans regret. It's right. And it's hmm. well, it's so bullshit because there's plenty of interviews, plenty of articles uh, about people that that I've seen mm -hmm. that you can find about people who who transitioned and either had a bad outcome or realized they didn't actually have gender dysphoria as they got older and yeah. regretted it. Um, there's a lot of stories like that. When it comes to like gay people being quote unquote cured, like there's the none. only one I can think of <laughs> is Milo Yiannopoulos. And as you said, you're like, I don't even know if that's true or if he's just fucking like, <laughs> just try to seek attention because it feels like something Milo would do. <laughs> so. Like it's just so ridiculous to compare these two things. There's a there are a number of like internet famous detransitioners too. Yes. So why didn't she just play it as why it would be better if she just said, "Well, I used to be trans," because then it would be. But then she would have to actually address all the arguments relating to trans stuff, as opposed to creating this like 1990s level commentary about. You right know, christians that don't like gay people or something yeah yeah and also all of she'd be forced to grapple with all the differences between the gay situation and the trans situation which is just right. i mean they their standard argument in favor of the trans ideology is that you know this happened with gay people and this is the same path we're on the same path you know we just need to normalize it but mm -hmm. I completely disagree. I mean, it's they're they're like night and day as far as situations go. Right. Yeah. Is to make us feel that we cannot change. But what if every addict said, "Well, I'm just a junkie. That's who I am. I sexually identify as an alcoholic, so Jesus can't change me." Well, that's a good point. Uh, no, it isn't. Gay is just a feeling. Homosexual lust, same-sex temptation, that's a feeling, not an identity. Like, maybe you struggle with wrath, but you don't identify as wrathful. Maybe sometimes you want to punch a guy in the face, I want to punch you in the face, and yet, you haven't punched me. Lo and behold, you have a desire without acting on the desire. When I was saved, I left behind the false identity I used to walk in, and I was delivered by Christ's transformative love. 
My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. But before I made God... This is boring. <laughs> Lord of my... I mean, it is. This is so boring. How do people watch this schlock? I don't know. I don't know. This is it's so predictable, too. Like, comedy is about surprise, and there's absolutely zero surprises. Here. Do, you, do you think that Contra's audience is watching this part and laughing? You think they think this is funny? Why? I'm, I'm, I'm mystified. This is the thing. Good writing, when I read it, I know how I'm supposed to feel, and I feel that willingly, <laughs> <laughs> lovingly. Mm -hmm. As a writer myself, when I write good writing, I am trying to make it as clear as possible to people. This is how you're supposed to feel at this point. This is this this scene is supposed to make you feel this way. I'm right. I'm how am I supposed to feel here? I have no fucking clue. You What's want to be happening? as a parent. You want to be as, as a parent as uh, shooting missiles into someone's dick. Yeah. Well, I, I just yeah. You you understand? As, <laughs> yeah, you get it, man. As a as a co -author, an inside joke that only Adam got as a co author check. as a co author on many projects together such gets it <laughs> I just what's going on here what the what is happening here Sitch fill me in be my contra well, it's it's strange because like ninety percent or maybe not ninety like seventy five percent of the video has been dominated by the right wing character talking and laying out their worldview and their position. Mm -hmm. And like the leftist character has barely done any talking, hasn't really forwarded any arguments, hasn't even forwarded their worldview at all. Right. And, and you're right. I don't understand like what is Contra's audience supposed to be taking from this? Because the only thing I like, if I was a leftist, I'd be watching this and be like, Contra, this video is dog shit. Okay. It is this terrible. Shit. You're yeah. irresponsibly platforming yourself. Okay. But the only thing I can think of is maybe her audience is so in the bubble that they actually don't need commentary. All they need is like to them, they disagree with this stuff so strongly that she just has to put on an outfit and say it in a pious tone with pious music in the background. And they just laugh because they, they just, already come to the table thinking it's so absurd. Well, I don't even think she's master of the trad con aesthetic. She looks like a fucking hippie from, from Humboldt. <laughs> like, Oh, you're right. Yeah. yeah. I'm not I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. So uh, like visually she doesn't scream trad con and I just, what she's saying doesn't scream stream. It's, it's scream the, trad it's the flower con. dress. She needs like one of those blue dress, little white polka dots, you know, <laughs> then she'd be okay. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a different color headband. It's so weird. It's so yeah, right. weird. It's it like does. I didn't it's I didn't a see that hippie either, yeah. on the left. You know, this is this this chick belongs in a commune somewhere. Right. Right. That's and, funny. And there was I mean, I read that book on Prohibition and I was I was surprised how much Christianity and communism went hand in hand back in prohibition oh, of course days. yeah but a lot yeah. of the a lot of the communes were christian communists this is a christian communist here not well, a not a not a trad con or a neo reactionary none of the none of what she's saying sounds like something that i've heard in the neo react i mean we've we've done talks with neo reactionaries and done videos on the neo reactionaries so obviously Right. I just feel like this is delusional. She needs to talk to some people or something. Well, it's it's funny they bring that up because it's like, you know, we talked about this in the past with, uh, what was it, Mon Mondragoon? Mondragon? Yeah. I mean, that was started by, you know, a priest yeah. or a pastor or something. Like, like economic Marxism or economic socialism does go, can conform to a lot of uh, Christian ideology pretty pretty neatly pretty yes. easily yeah so we kind of forget that because nowadays so much of the focus is on sort of social cultural marxism or what we would call social cultural marxism which economic marxists would not like that we call it that but, but and that is 
that is all, all that stuff is completely antithetical to Christian Christianity. So I just, the things my, my dealings with the neo reactionary community, which, you know, mm -hmm. obviously we've gone back and forth with them and have, you know, we disagree on virtually everything, but th these, this isn't even an accurate representation of the things that they're concerned about. Well, this person isn't supposed to be a neo-reactionary. This person is supposed to be a traditional uh, Christian conservative. But the neo-reactionary... Like the, the 80s or the 90s. Like or something. the neo-reactionaries are the mm -hmm. only ones in the, in the, the YouTube sphere that you mm -hmm. could make a plausible argument that they're anti-gay. No, I mean, listen, I'm sure outside of our purview... Right. There's, you know, some, uh, what was it, 700 Club style. I'm sure there are, you know, boomer channels that only boomers listen to, so we're completely unaware of them, that have medium-sized audiences of, you know, 700 Club style Christian conservatives or they're anti-gay. But right. I don't see how that's relevant to either the YouTube space that we all occupy in and that Contra occupies, or the mainstream political conversation, because you don't, as you're, as you're saying, we don't really see that in the mainstream political conversation at all. Right. Unless she thinks that this is supposed to be some sort of prophetic video of the future that we'll see two years down the line once this, the evil Supreme Court overturns, you know, gay marriage. Maybe that's what she thinks this is. I, I, I couldn't tell you. I was looking up. I was trying to figure out. Joel Osteen's position because he's like the most obvious avatar <laughs> for like the mega church pastor. Right. And I, it says right here, me the mega church pastor doesn't like to talk about LGBTQ issues, but when pressed, <laughs> he says being gay is a sin and the church doesn't host yeah, of course. gay marriages. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But look right there in the very beginning, why do you think the mega church pastor <laughs> doesn't like talking about LGBTQ issues, right? The mega right. church pastor is not going to go on Joe Rogan's podcast and have this conversation that uh, that ContraPoints has dreamed up in her imagination. Nobody in the world is going to have this conversation. That's why I just, I'm like, as, as, a, as an artist, right? Mm-hmm. Like, don't you want to say something meaningful about the world? This says nothing meaningful. This is like a right. just a, a giant, like masturbatory experience. Well, I'm thinking like too, you know. I mean, would you expect so that Prager you? I mean, I don't know if they had, but I, I can't. It's hard for me to imagine Prager you would have some like person like this on be like fuck the gays. Yeah, not. I at think all. they've actually had the opposite. I, I think they've had videos. I don't know if it was Dave Rubin or someone else who was all like, I'm gay and a conservative, and that's totally fine. Right. Yeah. They want... Yeah, conservative Republicans, they want they want to compete for the LGBTQ vote. They do. <laughs> they, like, they want those votes. It's just weird. It's weird. It's not meaningful. It's just... I just... Uh... I mean, the lighting's cool. I like this little plastic bag effect. <laughs> That's a good part, right? Desires. I was controlled by sin, by drugs, by alcohol, by homosexuality. So you used to be cool and now you're boring. Wow, behold the power of Christ. I just, I feel like a lot of projection went into that last, that last line. I feel like ContraPoints is, is signaling. ContraPoints, let us know if you're talking about yourself when you say, I used to be cool and now I'm boring. Uh -huh. This is this video is, I mean, I feel like it's the opposite of cool. I really do. Be, is it cool to be in the bubble, Sitch? I mean, I feel like that's, there's nothing more uncool no, it's not cool than being be completely... You know, well, lacking any self reflection. I mean, it makes you cool to other people in the bubble, right? R is it? I mean, yeah, of course. It's ironic that she's making fun of Christians. <laughs> two, two Contras million 
plus audience that watched this video and upvoted it. Contra is the coolest fucking person ever. And this video is the most profound video ever videoed on YouTube. Right. Yeah. Somehow I just think it's just, they, it's like a, it's the same exact thing. It's like a, they're just, they're just doing it because it's cool to be cool. Like it's sure. cool to be a Contra fan. Sure. I don't think there's any substance here. You think it's cool to be contaminated in fornication? Yes, I do. It's pretty cool. I'm sure we're all a little contaminated in fornication. Is this a joke to you? Do you find this humorous? Yeah. I don't. Because I have glimpsed the gates of hell, where unrepentant souls endure the horrors of sin. Away from God, shut out from grace, tormented by unyielding guilt and shame edgy man so yeah there's something interesting which is because i was i was listening to this i didn't watch it right so spoiler the end of this video which we don't really have to watch is a five minute long sequence where one of these characters uh, has a total mental breakdown and becomes addicted to drugs and the drugs are sold to them by the devil. Mm. Wow. Okay. I think that character is the leftist character. Right. And so again, this seems like, is this intentional? Is, is this Contra saying that, <laughs> that like LGBT leftism just leads you to being a drug addict and horrible and miserable? Cause that would seem to basically confirm everything the right wing character is saying like if if that's how this video ends doesn't it i guess i you don't know which character it is because they're naked I think it's in the supposed bath to be this character. well i'm assuming it's this character because if they did the flash forward where she's in the bath right um to show that it's this character right and i and i think the message is supposed to be that the leftist character does very poorly in this interview slash debate. And so everyone online starts hating on her right. for doing poorly in the conversation. Mm -hmm. So it was like, is this entire, is this entire hour long video just supposed to be about that one idea? Like a leftist did bad in a debate. And so people on the left didn't like her. Cause that's insane. If that's what, this entire video is all of that amounts to. And there's nothing deeper to it. This is just, uh, this is, um, there's so many cliches in this video. That's what, the, why I turned it off. That's why I got triggered. Just. Yeah, but you see, so cliches are a big part of queer aesthetic. Cliches are boring as fuck. They're supposed to be like, it's supposed to be like, oh, I'm pointing it out or I'm intentionally using cliche as a cliche and therefore that makes it funny. Right. So ironically which, using cliches. Yeah, which, you know, works occasionally, but I don't think it's working in this video. I feel like this is like a dozen cliches per minute <laughs> video. The CPM rate on this video is too high. So <laughs> it's terrible. Saying? Yeah. I can't take it. Cliches are just horrible. Bad writing. Yes, we've all been to Cincinnati. Can we wrap this back around to the drug topic? Uh, Virginia, you're saying you used to be an addict? That's right, Jackie. What were you addicted to? Miracle Whip? <laughs> Veggie Tales? Uh, communion wafers, maybe? No. I was addicted to alcohol, to pornography, uh. to lusting after women, and to hype. <laughs> hype? You, Virginia Lamb, were a hype addict. Look, Virginia, can you drop a quick story time on this? Because I am intrigued. Jackie, I would love to testify. You know, growing up, I never really felt connected to my mother. Girl, not this. When I left home, I was lost. I was a wretch. I was on fire, and I rebuked that fire. I used foul language. I went out clubbing. I cut my hair off, I gained weight. I was tempted by same-sex attraction, and I struggled with gender confusion, you know? I was always a little more masculine. I'd even started down the path toward transgendered, 
I used to shoot up testosterone. That's why my voice is a little lower. Yeah, the two of you sound kind of the same, honestly. If, if I didn't know, I don't think I could tell which one of you is the man. Neither of us is the man, Jacqueline. Uh, though, if anything, this one's the man. she He's the one injecting testosterone. God has healed the feminine within me. All along, God was tugging at my heart. <laughs> Such, I, just, I just have to check in every now and again to make sure you're still awake. Oh, I, just, I just can't wrap my mind around this. This video is just making Contra's right-wing character like sympathetic and making the left-wing character like devoid of anything. Right, yeah. It's so strange. This is so. This video is so bizarre to me. The right wing character is definitely on the character arc. Yes. On the right. journey. Right. right. Yeah. It's the transformation. so strange. What is? What is the point of the video, and why do her fans like this video? Right. Yeah. How? I mean, like, how do they? How do they watch this? What do they think is happening in the scene? Are they laughing at the at That's this what, character? That's my big question. Yeah, what's going on? What are they feeling? I don't know. I I want I desperately want someone to walk me through it. Like, what is cool about this? It doesn't seem cool to me because I have no connection to what's going on. I mean, if the drug, even the drug, and I don't know, I'm wondering if she explains what hype is, but there's a different aesthetic for someone who was hooked on LSD, LSD and someone who was hooked on ecstasy or someone who was hooked on meth or cocaine. <laughs> so as soon as you say one of those drugs, you kind of, you're clued into like, okay, I get this journey here. Right. But hype, I mean, I don't, okay. What does that, what does that mean? Well, I mean, I guess we have to, since we all have to interpret everything because it's a Contra video. Like, so hype would be, like hype addicted to the hype around being trans maybe or something oh, or okay. leftist i don't know because when she takes it but at there the is end of the no video, drug equivalent of that right when she takes at the end of the video it basically seems to act like fentanyl okay so so it's a heroin type drug yeah the, it's guess, one that i, I didn't even mention yeah i mentioned four drugs and i missed heroin i know i know yeah. So, okay. But for me, the road to heaven led through hell. I felt a terrible void inside. I lived in the flesh. I lived in sin with another woman, hoping to satisfy oh that hunger. See all those shots of like Contra with the really lame 1970s backdrop? Like it's all ironic, man. It's supposed to be stupid, Adam. It's supposed to be. It makes it funny. Is it? It's not. I mean... You're right about the right wing character being the sympathetic character here because <laughs> I mean I don't like that she's a homophobe, but I mean Yeah. She's lived. Yep. This is a thing. In in good in good writing, obviously every character deserves a character arc. Like one of the things about good people is they have the capacity to change. And we like to see that change. We like to revel in that change. The bad guy, they don't change. And it's kind of one of the character flaws that make them the bad guy. And Contra is totally coming off as the bad guy here. The leftist right. is completely coming off as the bad guy here because right. there's no character arc, right? Yeah, uh, that's a good point. She's a I drug mean, addict, alcoholic, it's to the bitter end. <laughs> You know, usually the, the protagonist who is your good character has the character arc. The antagonist, the bad guy, very rarely has the character exactly. arc. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Except for the movie Serenity, where the bad guy does have a character arc. Oh, which, I haven't seen that. Which is actually badass. What? You haven't seen Serenity? You're no. kidding me. How is that possible? Serenity? Come on. Wait, is that the... You didn't cry when. Oh, Wash... I have seen Serenity. I have seen Serenity. That's you the, didn't the cry one based on the when TV Wash show. died. <laughs> that was the one based on the TV show. Oh, spoiler alert! Wash died. Uh, the Nathan the Fillon. Yeah. I don't remember. I never liked it. 
I didn't really like the TV show. Yeah. Either. The Josh Whedon thing. It is badass because yeah. in not many movies does the bad guy have a character arc, but the bad guy does have a character arc in that movie. Well, the best show that had an antagonist to have a character arc is that I've seen, uh, at least that was an American show, uh, was Avatar The Last Airbender because they had, it was very interesting. I've never seen any show, at least an American show, do this. Mm-hmm. The primary antagonist is actually a secondary protagonist to the entire series. <laughs> so he has his own character arc and his own villains that he has to fight the whole time. Right. So it's it's very interesting, very well done. So you've mortally wounded S class now that they now that I don't like Serenity. You, that you've never seen Serenity. No, I have seen Serenity. I just don't remember it. Okay. I remember I was perturbed by the fact that they were like space cannibals. And I was like, how do space cannibals fly spaceships? I don't understand this. They're like mindless zombies. Hmm. The Reavers? The Reavers, yeah. They seem kind of like mindless zombies. I'm like, how are they? How do they have technology? <laughs> it's like idiocracy. I don't know. This did you watch did you, itself. did you? What was the name of the TV show? Firefly. Firefly, that was the name, yeah. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't really like the TV show or the movie, honestly. I never watched the TV show, but I did like the movie. You never watched. <laughs> You're like you never seen the movie. You haven't seen the TV show. It's based on. <laughs> well, first of all, I'm a movie guy. Okay, I don't want to get. I don't. I don't like oh to make the commitment God. to a hundred oh. hours. It was of, only like one season, I think, because it got canceled or something. That's why there was a movie. Firefly or Serenity is a great movie. That movie okay. rocks. Yeah, I I'll don't... take your word for. It. I haven't seen it. I've I literally saw it when it came out, and then I never saw it again. So yeah, I don't remember it very well. But... Anyway, so uh, yeah, this video. I mean, Contra. I'm sure fancies herself a writer, correct? I mean, she writes all this stuff. This right. is all written by her hypothetically right i mean i don't maybe she has writers now i don't know who knows if she has writers now got... this is bad editing because this writing is atrocious oh when i gazed upon her beauty i thought sunlight had broken through the clouds but the light i saw was nothing but the fire of my own wickedness i knew that lifestyle was wrong but i couldn't quit until she broke my heart. And then, I was cast into the outer darkness. Yeah, she probably got tired of your Jesus bullshit. It was like a part of me was ripped away, and I was left to face my brokenness alone. What was she, a Capricorn? No, a Sagittarius. Well, there's your problem. Next time, maybe try a water sign. Shh, stop interrupting. I'm living for the drama. Jackie, I was alone. I was suicidal, I was an addict, I was lost. Until one day, I decided to go to church with my mom, and I was surrounded by these women singing. What can wash away my sin? What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus that washes white as snow. And I felt th- this is almost indistinguishable from like a like one of those uh, Christian propaganda, like poorly acted Christian propaganda pieces <laughs> where it's like, I used to do drugs and f- have lots of sex and I almost died. And then I found Jesus. Right. And like if Contra, who I'm assuming is not taking that step is producing something that's almost indistinguishable from that. <laughs> right. What, what is it, happening? What does it video? mean? Yeah. What does I it just, mean? This I've, you know, I've hung out with a bunch of junkies that, that switch over and their new addiction is Christianity. <laughs> right. But the, it does. I mean, I would say that the side effects of Christianity are far lower than the side effects of, you know, shooting the negative up, side effects. Yeah, yes. the negative. Yeah, yeah side, I agree. Yeah, shooting right, up that's, on a regular right. basis and like, right. I mean, some of these people are. I mean, they were going to die or commit suicide in their twenties. So I, I don't necessarily know if the if the power of Christianity is such a bad thing for them. 
It's not, right? Yeah. So I just I don't I don't get this. I mean, if if someone is in a dark place and you know they really are surrounding themselves with people who don't want the best for them, and it's really hard to 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 form you know lasting friendships in these drug type situations. <laughs> obviously, mm -hmm. if someone is in that spot, how does the ideology of of que queerness get them out of that? Well, that's the problem. It yeah. doesn't. It makes it. In a lot of situations, it can end up making it worse. Yeah. So I just, I don't know. Obviously, people turn to turn to religion because it works. They surround themselves with a, a completely new social circle that is anti-drug, which right. that keeps you away from drugs. Yeah, it does. Right. Very powerfully. Well, so. and that's, you know, what we talked about, the danger of wanting to deconstruct and get rid of everything normative, right. traditional. Because it's like, yeah, there's some bad things that are in tradition that you want to change. There's a lot of good stuff yeah. in tradition that you that you shouldn't change. You shouldn't just do it. You shouldn't just do whatever the opposite of what you think. You know, yeah. Society tells you to do. I'm very, very lucky. I've never had a super addictive personality. So, but I've been around right. a lot of people who have, and it's just they can't control themselves. Right. It's kind of repulsive to me. I don't. Mm -hmm. You should always be in control. Well, that's easy for you to say, Mr. Born Lucky over here. Well, no, it is. And it is a born lucky type situation. So I just, you, you have to be able to respect that. Some Sometimes those people who aren't as born as lucky as some of us, mm -hmm. religion is a good way to counterbalance that. I mean, it's a, sure. a cultural way to counterbalance that. So, Well, just, as you said, it's... It's replacing one addiction with another. Yeah, but a so, healthier addiction. Right. It's an addiction. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was saying. It's an addiction that's generally more pro-social and healthier. Productive, yeah. And more productive, yeah. Yeah. So that's my big question. I mean, obviously, right. I, I don't even know if ContraPoints does conversations with people after that Chris Hayes nagging she got. I mean, she's <laughs> <laughs> like probably not going to do any more <laughs> conversations with people right that's right we we covered like a million years ago right uh, chris hayes interviewed contrapoints and it's the weirdest conversation ever right. because it really comes across like chris hayes is negging contrapoints right. and trying to like hit on her get her into to, bed or something yeah it's so creepy yeah it's so creepy because i've never i used to watch chris hayes a million years ago like when I was in the, the left bubble and I never seen that side of him. It was very bizarre. Yeah. A little this bird, tingling. a little bird told me, oh. a little bird told me that Chris Hayes is a big freaky deaky guy. Yeah, I know. I know what little bird you're referring <laughs> to. I don't want, I don't want to out, I don't want to I don't, out I don't, a I don't little know. bird. Yeah, I'm saying, I don't know if it's the most reliable of uh, sources, but sure. Sure. It's fun though, right? It is fun. It is fun. <laughs> Just imagining Chris Hayes just, you know, obviously. Snorting coke and fucking random right. strangers in a nightclub. Yeah. With a gag ball in his head, with a gag ball in his mouth somewhere. Oh, I'm sorry. He's not fucked. He's being fucked. I'm sorry. Yes. From my body, and I knew I was hearing the voice of God for the very first time. Not just the words of the hymn, but the voice of the Father speaking directly to me yes we all like music and suddenly my pain made sense i don't have to live this way anymore in that moment i was transfigured by the holy spirit i was cleansed i was healed see all this is boring cliche sitch i can't take it so fucking cliche yeah but it's it just it, it's boring cliched but make but again, I don't I don't understand the point of it in this video. This is like an after school special from nineteen eighty. <laughs> it's Listen, so Adam, boring. you've just you've never felt the touch. Okay. God has oh, never transcended the calm and touched you in your no no place and made you feel special, Adam. Okay. Look. So you can't relate. The conversation has moved mm -hmm. on, okay? We have video games now. We we're like we're on the verge of cyberpunk being real. Uh -huh. 
Uh-huh. This is it's boring. Okay? <laughs> Like, save the fucking revival shit. Like, <laughs> let it die already. This is so just, it's bo it's evil because it's boring. I was delivered. I was sanctified. I was redeemed. My guilty stains were washed away, and I exchanged my brokenness and pain for his loving grace. Okay, so I'm confused. Do you eat dick now? What's your deal? Jackie, my deal is that I entered the throne room with a repentant heart and rebuked the enemy that keeps me from the Father. When I found Jesus, I found someone who truly loves me. And through obedience to him, my identity is no longer in my attractions, but in Christ. You know what I think, Virginia? I think that sound effect was obviously put in there because of the way they're shooting it as comedy just so you know i want you to, i want to point that what? out the the throwing of the box the the opening the rapper sounds and that is supposed yeah. to be comedy that it, this right. is interrupting the other woman as she's speaking it doesn't come off that way to me but it might I work if there was some inserts i don't know what is the message though is the, the libertarian character dismissing all this like Okay, I don't know. I guess. They I don't, don't care. Know. Like It's comedy. I think okay. that you are immoderate in love and immoderate. See all that rapper? <laughs> it's kind of annoying when you're trying to you, listen to what You like saying, those but... disgusting bomb pops, don't you? No, nah, those are Oh, I thought you did. Terrible. I said you did. Yeah. Okay. Good. I'm like ice cream stuff. I don't like the Well, I mean, there are good popsicles out there. Ice. But what ice just like i don't know <laughs> adam is anti-ice you heard it here. listen you heard it here first adam fruit flavored anti, ice adam is anti-colored ice yeah okay you heard it here first butter it with it, substances bake it and look at this well any adam second only now. likes adam only likes pure ice cream he doesn't like colored ice that's multiple colors he only likes that pure pure bread ice cream it's just i'm so I'm so offended and disgusted by your bigotry right now. What? <laughs> Stop being mean to me. <laughs> Look, I'm being tortured right now. I'm having to watch the most boring video ever made <laughs> on YouTube. It has a mil it has a million and a half views. Just This I, is not boring, Adam. This has a million point five views. Okay. I don't get it. I don't I it just, has I don't understand. A hundred, twenty-five hundred thousand likes. I know. Those have to be pity likes. Mm. I feel all those. I feel at least fifty percent of those are just pity likes. I see. I see. And so you need an imaginary father figure to make all the rules because you can't control yourself. But your weakness doesn't mean that everyone else should have to live in a state of enforced mental infancy. Mental infancy. Bondage to the flesh. See, this This is what... I mean, is it our... Christianity's kind of been neutered to the point where they're not in a position to kind of force it on everybody. But that's the problem with the left right now. The woke people are in a position to force their ideology on people the way Christianity once was. And they're right. doing it. They're forcing people to be woke at work and... You know, yeah. woke on social media or mm -hmm. suffer the ramifications. Did you see that video that was going around of the HR person? I mean, thank goodness they fired her ass, but bragging yeah, did, yeah. about how, you know, we will look at your social media. And if you're not woke like me, we don't give you a job. It's like, yep. fuck the you, fuck? bitch. Yeah. That's Disgusting. Not, yeah. Well, and again, the, the irony here with the leftist character, because I mean, she's talking about like, oh, you know, we have to build society around your... You know, you being an infant, your infancy, like that's literally the woke mantra. <laughs> it's true. Is, you know, we have to bubble wrap all the edges. Everyone has to conform because, you know, it, how safe dare spaces. you? Right. Yeah. Everything is to be safe space. You know, you simply saying something. If you simply utter words that I disagree with, well, that will send me in like an anxiety, depression spiral for the next week. So, you know, you have to shut the fucking shut up and everything that you say has to be carefully crafted before it leaves your lips right 
It's not cancel culture. It's accountability culture. Yeah. We got to so make you accountable for not being woke enough. If it wasn't for Contra's Twitter feed, I would think this video is like Contra becoming a crypto Christian or something. Really? <laughs> but I know that's not the case because Contra's Twitter feed is still the same. So Still woke AF. Yeah, so I just, I, it's so fascinating. Hmm. Okay. I, I am, I wish she would, she'll never talk to us at all. Right. Um, she doesn't, she very rarely talks to anyone live and it's only in very safe spaces. Um, she had a debate, which is sad because she had a debate years ago with Blair White that was very interesting. Did we cover and it was that? Based, I don't remember. We never covered it. Um, which was basically Blair, like it, they basically had two positions. Blair was position was their objective reality exists. And we as humans need to be able to identify objective. It was literally the Sam Harris, Jordan Peterson debate. Blair was taking the Sam Harris position that there is objective truth and we need to talk about it and identify it. And Contra is taking the Jordan Peterson position saying, well, that objective truth can harm people. So I think we should focus on metaphorical truth. Wow. That was the entire conversation wow. for like four hours. I kind of like it. Yeah, so it's very interesting. And it's just because I would be very curious to talk to her to be like, what What did you think this video was about? <laughs> yeah, we need a commentary track. Maybe there is one if you're like a patron or something. Right. Is mental infancy. I know, Justin, the chains of sin. I know the murmuring complaints of the flesh, the itch, the ache, the shame. I lived in mud. I lived in filth. I know the thorns, the seething cauldron, the great whirlwind that whips sinners round an endless wheel of pain. But my shame was hammered to the cross, for those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Virginia, who are you trying to impress? With this ostentatious sexual anorexia, who is the beneficiary of your erotic constipation? God? I really don't think he cares, Gorge. Celibacy is not a good deed. To me, this... So, what's not being addressed in this video, by Contra, is that the reason a lot of religion works is because to spiral downward into a sort of hedonistic lifestyle of just doing whatever thing your physical body wants you to do, which often leads you down the path of addiction. Like there's some addiction that, you know, you feel good while you're doing it, mm -hmm. but then at the end of the day, you produce nothing of value mm -hmm. and you end up feeling empty and hollow because not only do you produce nothing of value, but then you have no, you, know, you end up sabotaging your friendships and your family life and you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, because you don't have time for anything else except for like chasing the dragon. Um, oh, chasing the like, dragon. Look at you. Right. You got the terminology down. There's a good South Park about that where, <laughs> where uh, Stan's father becomes addicted to, uh, to Guitar Hero. Oh, wow. And he has to literally chase the dragon in the video game. But... Um, and, and so part of the reason that like religion works is because it's sort of, and it kind of comes back to like the guilt pride thing we talked about with Dr. Mueller. It kind of creates this idea, which sort of detaches people away from, from just being adhered to like their physical desires and it moralizes it. And it gives people like a strength and a will to seek something outside of like your immediate physical, uh, yeah. I guess desire and to sort of look towards the future. Yeah. I think that's part of why Christianity is so effective at, at, at what it does is because it's sort of saying like, Oh, you have to concern yourself with, you know, you're going to burn in hell when you die, which, you know, you have to sacrifice, you have to make sacrifices now for some, building something good in the future. Yeah. Which is sort of an idea that we humans all should have. And we shall all kind of struggle with, or some people struggle with, especially if you have addiction problems. And you have to address all that. I just to have the leftist character just flippantly make these flippant comments or they just brush it all aside. I mean, I don't, how is this counter anything? How does this help anything? 
that's why like this video it's, this video is so bizarre because it seems like this is contra advocating for religious values or yeah there is <laughs> that's why i titled the video contra argues with herself and loses there is power there is power in suffering there really is like path, yes. path yes. of most resistance like get in there and fucking i'm gonna do this because it is difficult and the right. hedonistic lifestyle doesn't lead you there it really doesn't right. yeah well i mean obviously humans evolved to find meaning in adversity and overcoming adversity right and you can't really get around that so i don't think hedonism is part of contra's profile though that's inarguable it? it always has been yes i drink too much i smoke too much i'm I mean, I think she calls herself a degenerate, so. Well, it's weird because you think that she want to get away from that because literally the Christian, like the religious Christian stereotype of being gay and doing anything non-normative sexually is stereotyped as hedonism. Right. Which, first of all, considering gay and hedonism the same thing to me is absurd. But, like, so it's weird that she kind of just would play into that exact stereotype <laughs> let's like walk right into it. you don't you can be gay and not be a hedonist i mean i would argue of course. most gay people are not hedonists but right you know no, but I, like i don't know there is an like an older christian conceptualization that the reason people yeah, were gay was stereotype. not because yeah. right was not well not just stereotype but that literally the reason people were gay wasn't just because they were born that way was because they were hedonist right. because they're hedonists because it's just easier to ferment the bang men because men are more willing generally than to bang, you know, a bunch of women. So, which men are more is willing. obviously insane because I don't think anyone really thinks of sex that way. <laughs> right. It all just sounds like a lot of words to say that you are gay and you hate yourself. I don't think I could have put it less succinctly myself. Is it hate to worship the glory of God over the glory of self? Where is my nail? Is it hate to be anchored to the Savior's will that leads me from temptation? Damn it. To walk with purpose, abiding in the identity of who God made me? Oh my god damn Is it hate to heal the brokenness and be made whole through radical obedience to the Holy Spirit? Have you been made whole, Virginia? Because to me, it sounds like you amputate half of your own soul and you call it sin and shame. Well, that's my definition of sexual brokenness. <laughs> Why am I being lectured about amputation by a castrato? She's hilarious. She's a wit. We are all half angel and half beast. The flesh must die so the spirit may live. The soul, by definition, is not the flesh. Look at that. It's so boring. It's being upstaged by a bag of Doritos. I had no idea that ContraPoints was doing product placement in her videos now. She's probably gotten paid three grand by Doritos. The Doritos uh -huh. bag is so prominently placed <laughs> that I'm dying for a bag of Doritos right now. Jeez. This is where every... I, I mean, if you looked at ContraPoints analytics, I'm dead certain that the drop-off of viewing when that Doritos bag was shown is <laughs> enormous. Because everyone's like, why am I watching this garbage? I need some Doritos. Have you really wandered so far astray? Have you feasted? Oh my God, they look delicious. They're those they're, flaming they're hot. Flaming hot ones, yeah. Those are so good. Oh God, what I would give for a bag of flaming <laughs> hot Doritos right now. Oh, this video is torture. <laughs> With such profligacy on apples of Sodom that you think the urge to fornicate is half the soul? No, Virginia, that's not what I think. Okay, I figured out the joke. The joke is that She's giving this very deep and meaningful speech, which yes. is just a string of cliches that is not yes. really deep and meaningful in any way whatsoever that we've heard mm -hmm. so many times before that there's no surprise to to make you, you know, feel anything by the words coming out of her mouth. And she she's being upstaged as she's giving this moving, you know, in quotes, moving speech by someone just eating a bag of Doritos. Which, I mean, that could be funny if it was actually a moving speech, but the fact that it's just a string of incoherent jibber-jabber doesn't Yeah, but see, you're, you're, you're completely wrong. 
Mm -hmm. I'm wrong. I will actually, I think you're right. And that's the intention. The intention is there. Yeah. Right. I think you're right. But it's I think a giant wrong. fail. Yeah. Right. I think you're wrong in that it's not, what she's saying is not an incoherent string of jabber jabber. What she's saying is something that lots of people have felt. And you can't just hand wave it away as absurd. Right. You'd have to, if Contra wants to argue against this or make this out to be absurd, she would actually have to put forward an argument or an alternative to say, like, listen, you can live a healthy lifestyle without hating gay people, or you can live a healthy lifestyle without devoting your life to Christianity or something. That's but the that message isn't really we need right now. Right. But that isn't being, but Contra's not putting any of that forward. She's just glibly dismissing, just throwing out like Twitter snipes. That's our message that you can live a, a fulfilling lifestyle without hating gay people. Right. I mean, I yeah. feel like we've made that argument many times on the show. I know, but so, but you would think Contra would be on board with that, like, would try to put forward that message, and it's just not. It's it would be more meaning, to do so. It would be more meaningful coming from her than us, but. Well, and then it's even worse because if the end of this video is the leftist character succumbing to drug addiction, that's why I'm saying this just reads like a weird, you know, after school, save yourself the Jesus special. Right. Yeah. I don't, you, you make a good, you make a good point and I want to modify what I'm saying. I, I, I agree with you that that path that people take is often a meaningful path. It's a common I, path. It's a common path and it is meaningful and it moves people and they obviously right. That's why, yeah. transform right. their lives. I'm right. saying aesthetically the communication of that is in no way artistic in any way, shape or form because she's just, she's basically doing the, we've heard it a million times, Christian speech. So that's yeah, what, no, it's yeah, not right. moving because right. aesthetically it's, it's not moving. Right. Yeah. It's yeah, I mean you're completely right. It is cliche, right? I mean obviously it's like a common is, path because it happens a lot. It's cliche because it happens a lot. It's not adding anything new or interesting to the conversation. This is why Jordan Peterson, I think, has been so effective because he's taking that path and he's kind of, you know, revivifying it. He's he's articulating it in a way that's more engaging than right it was before yeah yeah no that's exactly true but in order to for this to be successful with the doritos joke it has to be <laughs> that kind of jordan peterson oh my god i'm you know what she's saying is moving is right. you know something that i'm but i don't i really don't think contrapoints as a writer is capable of make writing something that is moving or meaningful well i mean I, she used to like she used to her videos used to be interesting right her videos used to be nuanced so i disagree i mean it was possible at some point i don't know what's going i don't know what's happening nuanced she's, and meaningful are different things though. well I, okay her videos used to be nuanced and meaningful to some extent okay and it feels like she's just succumbed more and more and more to the leftist bubble and has lost more and more nuance and interesting things to say and interest and, and meaningful things to say as she becomes more and more politicized. Right. Which, I mean, that's part for the course. The more you become tribal, the more you get sucked into one side of things right. and blind to the world, then yeah, obviously you're going to start to say less and less meaningful things, and less and less interesting things, except for people that are inside your own bubble too. Right. Yeah. Because the people, because what happens is when you get sucked into the bubble, especially if you're a content creator, you know, you get, you know, captured by your audience. And if you get captured by the more extreme, loud, vocal minority of your audience, you know, the most extreme factions of the bubble who are the loudest, who are the ones capturing you, they don't want nuance. They don't want meaning in, in these in these bubble situations, in these bubble audiences. They want gospel. They yeah. want preaching. So you lose all the nuance. But you lose all the interest and meaning. This is the purpose of an ideology. An ideology's purpose is to collapse nuance to yes. black and white decisions so that yes. everyone can adhere to them. It's kind of uh it's kind of interesting that that, That's true. That's that occurs. True. Yeah. 
because I uh, think contrapoints would make the argument that the black and white thinking is detrimental on the on the Christian side, but wouldn't recognize that there's just as much collapsed, nuanced black and white thinking on the on the leftist side. Right, which is weird because she used to acknowledge that, and she's been canceled. I mean, Contra has been canceled by the that. left. I don't think Contra's ever been canceled by the right. Contra's been canceled left right. by the left relentlessly. So that's what's another thing that's weird about this video. But uh, Mr. Dolphin, thank you so much for being a free will seeker for three months. Says Adam, I heard you like Jim Jarmusch. Have you ever seen Dead Man? I think it's Johnny Depp and Jim's best movie, probably in my top ten of all time. When I went to see Dead Men, I made the mistake of doing ecstasy right before we <laughs> walked into the movie theater, and I never finished the movie. I didn't see the whole thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I watched half of Dead Men, but yeah. Johnny Depp is great. Yeah, I should watch that whole movie. I should finish that movie. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. <laughs> uh, yeah. Do an ecstasy before you. Uh... <laughs> before you see a movie it's not always still, a good idea this i did this happened with isaac this was isaac's idea <laughs> oh see there you go that's the problem you trusted isaac when we walked out of the theater i was like that was the yeah. dumbest thing we've ever done like <laughs> what was the thinking what was the thinking behind that i've i've you know, <laughs> i've never done ecstasy but from what i've been told it seems like doing ecstasy and then watching a movie would not be a good experience. i couldn't keep my eyes open <laughs> yeah I was like, ah. uh, <laughs> Detective Tales for 200 knock knocks. I just yeah. wanted to say that even though I'm confused, I will take the case and find out what a woman actually is. Well, thank you, Detective Tales. That's right. Oh, wow. That's Detective Tales, everyone. Uh, famous, famous in the uh, Lance Lauren Southern conversation about, uh, about the, the Aboriginal children that were buried under the church ground it turned out to be a bunch of tree roots and rocks oh yeah <laughs> detective so thank you detective tales i i trust if anyone can hit the bottom of what a woman is it's detective tales i've been trying to set up lance versus lauren southern part two but it's not going well i don't mm. think i don't think lance wants to wants round really? two yeah he doesn't mm -hmm. lauren's in lauren's in with both feet but i don't know I see. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Lance I mean, I don't blame him considering idea. it turned out that he was completely wrong about. You think that's what it is? Of course. Well, what is he supposed to argue? She's going to say, she's going to say, Lance, as I said, we don't even know if those are bodies. And then it turned out that they weren't bodies. They were tree roots and rocks. And you're an idiot. What is his response to that? Well, well I, mean, I mean, you know, maybe this time, but there were other times that it was real. I mean, <laughs> can't really argue <laughs> Is how do we make that how do we make that happen? Because it really I guess it's not advantageous for Lance to debate Lauren Southern again. Well it would be if he thought he would win. So so how do you how do you convince him he's gonna win? I don't know. Be like, listen. You can't Lance. be dishonest though. You have to tell Lauren, would you debate Lauren if she can't bring up the fact that you were wrong about the tree roots? <laughs> If we get a print of you, she promises not I'm to bring down. that up. I mean, I would, <laughs> I would float that. I mean, I would say, okay, let's. He's not going to agree can't. to that. He's not going to agree to that. He's not going to, or she's not. No, going to? he's not going to. He won't. He that that would be admitting defeat. I mean, I don't even. You could the debate could be about something completely different. Sure, it could be about anything. It's okay. just there's this. It's unresolved. He right. called her out and ran away in the middle of a debate it was mm. we all saw it it was epic yes it was it was epic for its Come entertainment on, value except except the debate yeah that's debate lance uh anarchy for 20 pounds thank you so much says i just want to say i love you guys never get to watch you live because uk time keep up the great content it shows it shows like this that'll shift our culture back to something normal again well thank you anarchy uh, I they also so. said that S class is a class. Well, you're wrong about that part, but uh, they I also do. said A team is pretty great too. So. Oh, awesome! We came in second place. Right, that's good. Oh, hey, Caff Aiden. Caffeinated Tweaker says, "Pitch a debate topic he'll be confident in." What? Do, what would go. be? What would be something he's confident in? Ask him. Ask him if there's what he would want to talk to Lauren about. Okay. If not the indigenous 
I said Aboriginal. I don't know why. The indigenous first worlders, whatever the fuck term they use. Yeah. Uh, hey, Aiden. I hope you're doing well on today. Uh, Aiden for five dollars says, "Wow, a sad, confused addict finds meaningfulness in religion and becomes a better person." Cringe. Yeah. <laughs> Is Aiden? Did Aiden join the the Church of Catholicism? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not from. I don't know. I feel like Aiden might be a Christian now. Have you have you accepted the Lord into your heart? The I mean, Lord I, of Esclasa. I'm I'm basically yes. a Christian, so I'm <laughs> okay. like reflexively a Christian. Okay, atheist. What are you Think talking about? Is that you have a vulgar cracker barrel understanding of Ooh. human sexuality. And you're on a save the children type moral crusade because you lack the adult capacity to face the demons in your own head. You talk about the flesh and same-sex temptation. Well, what even is that, Virginia? I want specifics. Aiden says yes. She's found. She's Catholic. So there you go. There you go. There you go. This, this argument's not effective. I mean, there's some truth to it that she's saying. It's not effective. That, like, yes, people have walked a path that led them down something disastrous, so they want to block that path away from everyone, right? That's what. That's why you know we people want certain drugs to be illegal and stuff like that. They're like, oh, I couldn't handle this, so you can't handle it either, right? You know, it's sort of the, the. Uh, interestingly, it's sort of the toxic smother mother. Mental, toxic feminine smother mother mentality right if i can't handle something you know no one can handle it and there's some truth to that but i don't think you can just say hey fuck you just because you can't handle it doesn't mean you know no one else can because it's sort of like well that's true but it means that society should discuss these things in a sort of nuanced non-simple black and white way right like yeah i think all what drugs should be legal terrible thing you're so afraid you're gonna do if jesus stops holding tell me you don't want a, some flaming hot doritos right now well i i can't eat flaming hot doritos because they're filled with cheese but oh sure. really god oh my god that's so painful i would eat that whole bag right now <laughs> it looks so good i would and then it would be very painful if i did does somebody let us know if Contra has product placement because this feels like product placement to me. I mean, but. she should after this, right? Yeah. Holding your hand for 10 minutes. What? No mouse sounds. Jeez, Contra, what's going on here? Is, is this what people want? We, can, we, have to get, you, we have to get to the video. They want to hear you chomping? We got plenty of time. Think you're going to rail a line about? of hype off a of stripper's tits? Excuse me? Answer this. What do you think erotic love is a desire for? Wait, I know this one. Sex. No, that's too easy. Erotic love is not aimless pleasure seeking. It's a longing for... See, this is supposed to be the meaningful, the really meaningful one. Oh, is it? Yeah. She did a caricature of the meaning of the last one. This is this one we're really supposed to be like, yes. So this is I the know, meaningful part. If I turn on erotic love, mm -hmm. I don't have safe search on and it's just porn results. <laughs> oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I was like, I don't know what definition of erotic love she's referring to. Because right. I always thought in, in the fields that like break up the like, you know, platonic love, erotic love, whatever right. the other million loves are. Erotic love was always sexual. So I'm, I don't know. Of what course. She's yeah. About. Yeah. Connection for recognition, for wholeness, to traverse the lonely void that separates us from each other, to liberate repressed energy, to feel alive. Love is not the flesh. It's not temptation. It's nothing like the urge to punch someone in the face. It's nothing like being an alcoholic. It's not a craving. It's a yearning. This is weird because it's like she's conflating erotic love with love. love. Right, with love, love. <laughs> right, because it's like if you just have a lot of 
as some people do because of Tinder and other shit, if you just have a bunch of like one night stands with people, mm-hmm. I mean, you're not going to feel like it'll feel physically good, but you're not going to get some great emotional fulfillment from any of that stuff. How do you know? You're not going to, because Adam, I, hate to, <laughs> I didn't know, I didn't know how to tell you this. I'm actually a pickup artist. Okay. Oh, wow. I didn't want to tell anyone because it would ruin my image as an enlightened centrist, but I'm actually a highly successful so. pickup artist. So teach me. I want to pick up floozies. You're a married man. Right. That's true. I can't share the dark arts with you. Okay. Right. But like, you're not, if you're just like having like one night stands mm-hmm. with people, you're not going to feel. <laughs> not lonely you're not going to feel not isolated you're not going to feel any of these emotions that that requires an actual like meaningful relationship with oh not God. just a love relationship but with friends and family as well oh my goodness what are you laughing at this show just got way square all of a sudden oh okay excuse no. excuse me for being like listen i'm not saying you shouldn't go around fucking okay i am saying that i don't think you should go around banging people constantly you can do it. I'm just saying you're not going to find meaning in your life by doing it. Okay. Right. Yeah. No. That's all I'm saying. That's beautiful. It Thank is you. beautiful. I Thank like you. That. Listen, Adam. We need some church. Let me do. Do I need to turn on the soundboard? Do no. I, I just choir music best, behind me. Best case talk? scenario, you can find someone that you love that you do really have erotic love for as well. Of course. Yeah. Of course. That's that's, best that's the best. Scenario. That's what yeah. you want. You want yeah. erotic love with someone that you actually care for right. beyond just fucking. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. God, it's so depressing when you've got one without the other. Like either, exactly. either way. Exactly. Either way. Exactly. You're so yeah. correct. Yeah. It's, oh, God, that's so painful. Anyway, back to the back to the. Schlock. Well, this is weird because th- this this shot mm-hmm. happens at the end of the video. Yeah. And it's her making out with the devil drug dealer character. Oh, that sounds like a meaningful relationship. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's just a lot of mixed messages here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. The desire union with her other half, Aristophanes. But you people don't understand that because you are... She, the you people she keeps throwing out too, I think. You people. What you, do you mean, you people? The you people... Kind of has a negative connotation. It oh, really does. Kind it, of. It reeks kind of bigotry. Yeah. Yeah. The whole you people thing. You Christians are all the same. I mean, that's why there's like 25 different denominations. Because <laughs> they're all the same. Vulgarians. You have no sense of humanity. And you have no sense of the erotic. Well, that sounds like a bunch of liberal Marxist bullcrap. Jackie. <laughs> Your brain is so small. It's just so tiny. Look at me. You're a dumb dumb, okay? And I'm. I I just I. I'm sure Joe Rogan could hold his his own with contrapoints. I don't think it'd oh, be oh easily yeah very yeah. difficult yeah. Right. I think Joe Rogan is so much more well read than contrapoints. It's just the amount of hubris, if that's supposed to be the Joe Rogan character. Is well, just... I mean, this isn't supposed to be a one for one Joe. I mean, right? Because it's you know the character looks nothing like Joe Rogan. It's supposed to be like some right nondescript libertarian free speech rah rah right. American individual. You know, right. yeah. yeah. This isn't Peter Coffin dressing up as Destiny. You know, mm-hmm. using a you know, pretending to be destiny and then when confronted and saying it's not actually destiny <laughs> right. situation. Okay. She did have the disclaimer in there too, so. Right. I'm going to need you to stop talking. As usual, the cancel culture woke stoppo is trying to silence me. Sh- Jackie, I really am trying to silence you this time because you're so stupid and I can't stand it anymore. So shut up. <coughs> I'm giving you the plague liberal Okay, well, I hope it kills me because I'm done. See, I'll never get sick because every day I drink a pint of antifungal hedgehog medication. See, she, now it's totally Joe <laughs> Okay, Rogan. there you go. There's the Joe Rogan. What are you talking about? I was wrong. You were right. A literal Joe, Joe Rogan. Rogan reference. Right. Medication. Doctors don't want you to know about it. I could not possibly be more done. You may be done. 
But I'm not. Well, you people never are, are you? You want to talk about yearning? I mean, I get it. I used to live in shame. I know the insatiable longing to be with another woman. Yes, we've all noticed. Let me tell you, it is not freedom, it is bondage. You do not possess the flesh, Justin Tableau. The flesh possesses you. Rebuke it and be free or perish as a slave for the women. Listen, that's just how every guy feels with a woman, okay? That's, you know, that's the problem. She's lesbian. She doesn't understand that. <laughs> what, do of sin. what are you talking about? <laughs> Guys lusting after women? No, the, the feeling of bondage. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, yeah. Is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You people do love to rebuke things, don't you? Justin, the love you yearn for can only be found in Jesus. Only he can fill the void. I know. I used to be like you, Justin. I was lost. I was blind. I was confused in my identity. I used to reject the gospel until my sin- Isn't this whole video a rebuke of Christianity? I feel like it is. Um... When it she's, either when she is says, or is an endorsement. It's not clear. When she says you people love to rebuke things, I'm just yes. like, look in the fucking mirror. You right. made a 57 minute video rebuking Christianity. Yep. And took everything from me and I needed a savior. And then I called out to God for salvation and he came to me as a loving father. Jesus, look at the head on It's that. not too late for you, Justin. You are so loved. God loves you, but this, this is not God's intent for you. It is ridiculous to me that you think you know God's intent. The height of cosmological narcissism. I'm sorry, has Reddit gone offline? Have we run out of fedoras in America? I'm just trying to understand why you hate God. I'm just trying to understand why you hate love. God is love. Is he? The only love worth having. What you call love, the sin I used to live in, the world, the flesh, and the devil, that only ever brought me pain. Yes, because heartbreak is painful. Love is painful. The poets are unanimous. Love is bittersweet, says Sappho. Eros, giver of pain. What's Sappho? A pagan pornographer, the sort of filth these people want to teach to children. Well, if the Aeolian lyric poets can't tell us what love is, then God damn it, I don't know who can. Well, God for one. God has a sexual plan for all of us. That's hot. God's plan is for male and female to be one flesh. Men's and women's bodies fit together for the purpose of creating children. You do realize you don't need a man to have a baby, right? Sem seminal fluids are not difficult to come by, even in this economy. You have a guy? A semen guy? That's just most guys. Look, I do need to brush up on my apologetics, but since I'm among heathens, clearly, I will do my best to argue not from faith, but from reason. I l oh, look. Ben Shapiro showed up. <laughs> I just, there's not, I, I feel like there's not a lot to say about this just because. No, it's just a lot of jibber jabber. A lot of empty rhetoric. Yes. Well, hmm. th there's this, it's weird to me because the beginning part was kind of focused on like someone gets addicted to stuff and they kind of go down a bad path and then they find religion. Right. That's a story that I think is common and because it's common, it makes sense to me and people have lived that life. But now it's like Contra has done like this bait and switch where now this is a story about love. Hmm. And I don't think that there's a mass of gay people running around who are like, I wasn't addicted to drugs and I had no problems in my life, but I was gay. And then I decided to find Jesus. Like, like I don't think love is the issue here. Right. Right. I, I don't think being gay is the issue here. I think it's, I think it's finding meaning in your life. I think it's drugs. I think it's addiction. That's the issue here. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I think part of the problem, this is why I think, 
this is part of why I think queer theory is so horrendous because it does, queer theory is attempting to saddle uh, LGBT people with an inherently toxic lifestyle right. that will make you, um, will make them unhappy and make them miserable. Right. As opposed to being like the liberal conception of individual rights to just say, hey, you know, go be gay or trans if you have gender dysphoria and then be a normal, productive member of society who lives a pro-social life. <laughs> the problem you know, if you is... want to party on the weekends, that's, you know, that's fine. But, you know, you don't want a downward spiral <laughs> into just throwing every uh, norm and tradition out the window because a lot of those are there to protect people. Wokeism doesn't see itself as a nascent religion, but it really is. So it, yes. it's not old enough to have worked out any of this complicated stuff about meaning and fulfillment and mm -hmm. forgiveness, all these complicated ideas that other religions have incorporated into their, their philosophy. It's just, it's not in the wokeism yet. Yeah, no, you're, you're exactly right. You're completely right. So I just, it's bizarre because this video here is basically ContraPoints crapping on a more evolved philosophy, Christianity, that has solved a lot of these problems and kind of, you know, surreptitiously offering wokeism as an alternative that hasn't solved any of these problems and not really mm -hmm. articulated how wokeism is going to make you any better off in life other than this one thing that they latch on to. And it, it, it is even like a shrinking subset of Christians that, you know, focus on the anti-gay stuff. Like I said, that's why I looked up the Joel Olstein thing. They would rather just not talk about it because it's uncomfortable for them because, you know, there is an anti-gay contingent in their flock that they don't want to mm -hmm. encourage because it, it's politically unfeasible for them. Right, right. Yeah. They, know, they know that there are anti-gay parishioners and there are pro-gay parishioners and they don't want to stifle the tensions between those two because they want a happy flock right you mean draw you mean draw up the tensions they want to yeah. stifle the tension. yeah they want to stifle yeah 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 they don't want to stir up the tensions. they don't want to stir up the tensions that's exactly what i meant but right but it is advantageous i guess what's happening here is is contrapoints is trying to ignite those tensions in the the <laughs> in the other in the other tribe to foment dissent and maybe that's what's going on here it's well it's like, like a covert play but this is why this is annoying because i feel like if contra made this video two years ago right it wouldn't be this or maybe three years ago it wouldn't be this insane straw man you would actually have someone on the right who would be articulating you know a valid critique of some of the transgender stuff, you'd have the more center libertarian podcast host, which would be sort of playing, be playing the middleman, who would be probably more in line with our feeling on a lot of the trans stuff. And then you'd have like the leftist person who would be taking the more extreme position, but would be acknowledging and accepting some of the problems and saying that they are going too far, they're going too far in some places. And this would be a far more interesting video to sort and more, far more useful video, I think, to her audience to be like, listen, you know, there are some valid criticisms. They go too far in some places. We go, you know, we have some valid points, but we go too far in some places. Right. And instead we get this like weird schlock mm -hmm. of just this, let's rehash a 1980s, 1990s argument that no one has anymore or cares about. <laughs> right, yeah. But we'll do it in the 2022 aesthetic so right, nobody right, understands right. that this has completely become passe. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, 
there is, I mean, the debate that seems, the underlying debate here seems to be, you know, freedom versus security and the freedom being on the left and the security being on the right. Mm -hmm. And there, that's a, that's a dilemma that's as old as time. Right. Like, I don't, I, I just, I don't think the Christians are as trying or are as vocally trying to limit people's liberty as they once were. Well, so. but it's the thing that's weird is like, it's not, it's not even clear because like the, it's not even like the left is just the side of freedom anymore either because no. the left is also the side of policing everything too. Cause it's, yes. as it's become, it's new as wokeness has become this next civil religion. Right. It's sort of throwing freedom in the trash can. I mean, freedom and it's as just like the hedonism. facade of freedom. Right. I, this is state mandated hedonism. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> I understand what you're saying. Yeah, How right. free can it be? If they're like, no, do those drugs. Just fucking get your... Right? Right, right. If you're being forced to be free, are you really free? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm not, well, I'm you're, not sure. You're, you're not forced to be free. You're forced to adhere to someone's conception of what it means to be to free. To be free. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's a, that's a far more interesting and complicated idea than anything that's been articulated <laughs> in this video so far. Yeah. Well, I just wish... Why... Why can't, why, she's got an hour here. Why can't she articulate a complicated argument? Why is this all, I feel like this is a musical where there is absolutely no story. Like it's just all, all numbers. We're going from well, no, one see, number to the next. What you're, what you're reacting to is that there's a story here. It's just so unclear that you don't know what to grab That's, onto. There is no story then. Well, no, there's this, there's a story. You just, we don't know what it is. What is the, what is the conflict? The conflict is you, you have this religious fundamental type, uh, you know, accosting this, uh, leftist translating. What do you mean? A story, a story for me yeah. is somebody wants something, but is having difficulty getting it. And neither one of these characters have articulated well, it's a, okay, it's a, a video goal. essay. It's not a narrative right. story. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, neither one of these characters have articulated it. I don't know what either of these characters want. The religious character doesn't seem to be forcing her ideology on anyone else. I mean, well, no, she no, that's I disagree. She does want to enforce her ideology, obviously, on the rest of society. Um, where, we don't know what where, the leftist character where, where, wants. Where was the line where she said that? It's to me that's very apparent. I don't know if she it said is? it explicitly. Yes. Okay. To, to me, what you're relating to, what you're, what's confusing you is not the lack of motivation from characters in a video essay, which is obviously not going to conform to a narrative screenplay like a movie. What's confusing you and making you bored is that it's not even remotely clear what the point that Contra, the creator of the video, is trying to put across. Right through this video essay. That's what you're reacting to. If we were going to clean this up, yes, we could introduce some convention like this video is about X and I want to give you three arguments why X is true and you should believe it. But that see, what would okay, the what the would issue. the X be in that? <laughs> Here, here's here's the issue. I, it's in, Contra intentionally doesn't want to do that because her audience, I think a lot of Contra's success, again, is mm -hmm. it is appealing to this like artsy fartsy queer aesthetic where everything's fucking vague. No one knows what the fuck anything means, and everyone can project whatever meaning they want into it. Right. It's a it's a Rorschach ink blot test. Yes, exactly. You look at it and you say, "Look, I love this." Yeah. Right. But it's listen, X. <laughs> Contra, if you want, me and Adam will help you out. If you want to send your scripts to us before right. you start filming, we'll be happy to help. Okay. Yeah. I think we could punch this up. We can make this into something better. Needs more robot Hitler, I'm telling you. <laughs> you can't you can't go wrong. It needs more robot Hitler. It needs more crotch missiles. Okay. Yeah. Is that that crotch missile is a good idea? Crotch missiles is a terrible idea. How come you don't like the crotch? Oh my god! 
love it's reason. Perfect. Tell me this, Justin. Which first of all, it was missiles aimed at someone's crotch. But you've given me an idea now of a crotch missile that could. Be... You want you want the character to have missiles that come out of his crotch that aim at other people's crotches. Well, I just think if Skull Crusher, okay. if Skull we'll call Crusher, him crotch rocket. Yeah, if Skull Crusher could like. Like an Uzi came out of his crotch. That could be pretty cool. Adam wants his character in the comic to have a gun. A rocket gun launcher. His, his dick yes. that shoots people. Yes. I want my dick literally to be a rocket launcher. <laughs> How cool would that be? You see, this is what I have to contend with when I'm talking to Adam oh, about yeah. the story. I have to rein oh, him back. Yeah. I have to rein him in. Rein Get him ready, back. guys. Get ready. <laughs> It's going to be fucking Sitch, amazing. Why can't my character shoot a missile on his dick? Do you ever, first of all, everyone loves that idea. If you put a poll up right now, it would win no. unanimous. Yeah, they, don't. you don't understand. They like it as a troll. They don't like it as actually like in the comic. I, do, I don't know. You it's know, so whenever I'm writing, it's the ideas that you just can't get out of your head that kind of always make it into the script. And I feel like this is one of those ideas. No. This no. is one of those big ideas. Mm -hmm. It would just Crotch look rocket. so cool. Oh yeah, it looks so cool. See, that's see, that's the thing. When people think it's funny, they think it's funny because it's stupid. But you are like, no, it's cool. <laughs> so that's where the disconnect is coming. From. Fun, first of all, this is this is the magic of Quentin Tarantino. All uh -huh. of Quentin Tarantino's movies are comedies. They're fucking cool because they're funny as fuck. Like comedy yes. is comedy. Does he is... have a movie where someone shoots a rocket out of their dick? I hope he doesn't do one before we have a chance to do it so we okay. can okay so we can uh have providence over it i see i see we're gonna corner the market on dick rockets right yeah yeah okay anyway why are we doing super villains and us we should just do a story that's all the whole story is about robots or like robot people android cyborg people and all they do is fight by shooting missiles and guns out of their genitals okay i mean books... guys shoot you know, rockets out of their, their dicks and women shoot missiles out of their tits, you know? I mean, book three, I'm open to that. Okay. <laughs> I really, That'll be the entirety of, of book three. will just be genital-based really warfare. Yes. I mean, we've kind of set that up with book two, so. Listen, it's all, listen, it's all, it's all symbolic to the warfare that men and women, you know, engage in every day using their sex and their genitals as weapons. And we're just bringing it to life in the comic book page by having them actually fire missiles and bolts at each other. It's deep. This is a deep story. It's a, it's a deep loving story. That's right. <laughs> we know about love, okay? We don't need I mean, any of this flim flam. And in our world, the act of sex is very dangerous because really it's like you're shoving one weapon into another and at any moment the other oh person can kill you. This is and so, beautiful. And so you it's like just like real sex, you know, it's an act of trust. You know, you're right. putting yourself in a vulnerable position to the other How person. About this? How about this? The female robots, their genitalia is a trip mine. And it's got like the lasers. <laughs> like, the laser grid? It's got the laser grid. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So I have to place the rocket launcher inside the laser grid. Yeah. This is the worst story I've ever heard in my fucking life. Look. Listen. In order to make love, this is way higher oh stakes than pregnancy. Yes. How is it not? Yes. I mean, what does pregnancy even look like in that situation? Okay. It's all rocket launchers and trip mines from here on out. You give birth to little baby bombs. Oh, that's great. It's symbolic because, you know, babies blow up your life. So, you know. I really think Contra should reach out. I think she could use With amazing some... ideas like this, Contra. Don't you want us to help raise <laughs> Chris? Just, I'm... It would be less boring. you got to admit that much. <laughs> like, Contra, you know what this video needs? It needs crotch-based weaponry, okay? If the religious character shot holy water <laughs> out of her vagina... <laughs> And the trans character shot, I don't know, uh, gay porn out of her butt. Oh, <laughs> this would be such, a, you know, a much better video, right? Maybe. Okay. I got the wormy cam going, so that's there what I'm like. Go. I'm trying to pay attention. Is better a love that is eternal or a love that can be ripped away at any moment? 
I'm sorry your girlfriend left you. That must have been really hard. Just answer the question. Nothing is eternal, Virginia. Except I'll be right maybe back. sanctimonious assholes. Isn't a love that is eternal superior to a love that is fleeting? Yes, Socrates. It is. Notice how Sitch left during the love part of the video. During the totally insightful part of the video that we're going to learn about deep meaningful love between two individuals i wonder if i wonder if contra is in a relationship do we know that do you guys have the answer to that is contra points in a deep meaningful relationship i mean i'm married so i've been you know i've done the you know walk down the aisle thing and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, I'd like to think I'm in a meaningful relationship with another human being. It is certain. And don't you yearn, not just for a love in the moment, but for a love that lasts eternity? Yes, Socrates, that is evident. And isn't eternal love what we call God? Yes, Virginia, we all want to be loved, but sometimes we don't get what we want. Hmm. So you have no argument. Do I really need an argument? This is just a semantic trick. You're saying that God is eternal love and then magically that must exist because you defined it that way. So I mean, if you're in a position where you can't even define the word woman because your ideology prevents you from defining it in a way that 99% of people accept. <laughs> I don't think that you have a leg to stand on calling somebody's argument a semantic argument. I really don't. I don't, I don't think that angle of attack is open to you any longer. It's just, it's not, it's not. You got to take that back, Contra. So you don't have an argument? I'm sorry. Interesting. I didn't prepare to have a debate about Neoplatonism with a five-alarm lesbo cosplaying as a trad wife. I'm supposed to take this seriously? See, we have proof. She meant this outfit to be trad wife. Which I just, it doesn't read trad wife to me, but maybe it's just... Maybe it's just me. I don't know. The the red bandana really reads more, you know, South Central Bloods than Trad Wife. But that's just yes, my, my whatever take. you said, I yeah. disagree with, and you're wrong. No, you can't no? disagree. Oh, okay. Why? Why am I even? Oh, the la the loud kitty came in. You guys are in for a treat. <laughs> What are you doing? What? Here, what am I doing? Why am I talking to these people? I think you're here. Do you hear the thunder? God led you here. I did, Justin. yeah. That was you. I don't think God yeah. leads people to podcasts. Clearly, that was me, this person. transgender identity of yours is a defense against the emptiness you feel inside. There's a hunger in your soul. This is, I mean, I've never even heard Matt Walsh make this argument. What the fuck? <laughs> Nobody's making this argument. <laughs> Nobody is making this argument. Who is Contra listening to? Yeah. The argument that they're making is that there's a social contagion element that's going on to transgenderism, that a lot of people are being influenced to believe they have gender dysphoria when they don't, and they're creating false positives in people mm -hmm. who don't, don't have gender dysphoria and probably, you know, are just doing it to be cool. I mean, there's a term, it's called trans trender. It's been around since I think 2017. Like what, who is like making this weird argument that you're turning to transgenderism to fulfill some emptiness in your life? I've never heard, God, I don't even think ac Quackademic Agent makes this argument. Yeah, I've, I've never heard this before and it doesn't even make sense because usually the like the focus a lot like with trans stuff is with kids play, uh transitioning yes and generally yes. with kids it's an age where it's too early for them to be like contemplating the 
emptiness of their life. Yes, exactly. In any like meaningful way beyond like normal puberty woes, you know. Yes. So. Ben Shapiro, Matt Walsh are saying consenting adults do whatever you want. I mean, they both pitch themselves well, I don't as know Matt No, Matt Walsh is, I don't think Matt Walsh is saying that, but I think Ben Shapiro is saying that. I don't, I don't think Matt Walsh has a problem with adults transitioning, but. I'm not sure about that, but um, well, I think they're, conf they're confusing, or I think Contra is conflating because an argument has been made that, you know, kids will, or kids could uh, adhere to a lot of trans stuff or LGBT stuff in order to gain attention or to seek, you know, to be special through school or be applauded in their school for coming out. But I think that's completely different than sort of like the religious argument that is being put forward here. Yeah. I think Contra is conflating the two things. A bunch of impressionable Contra fans are going to walk away thinking that this is the rights argument when I've never, nobody's making this argument. This is completely ridiculous. This is propaganda misinformation 101. I mean, right. cloaked obviously. And you know, this is just art, you know, for, for entertainment purposes alone, but mm -hmm. just bad, whatever. Harm re second point against harm reduction. No pleasure of the flesh can satisfy. Do you not feel the thirst in your body like a parched land? Well, yeah, I feel the thirst. I'm sure we all feel the thirst. If I may quote Psalm 63. Please don't. You, God, are oh my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will raise up my hands. I will be fully satisfied as in the richest of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. Virginia, Go to therapy, says the delusional man who thinks he's a woman. You're the one who needs to go to therapy. No, you go to therapy. I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. I will pray straight to Satan. Look, can't we just agree that we are all a little Looney Tunes? <laughs> you have your Jesus bullshit. You have your gender nonsense. And I, well, I'm sure I must have something. The free market. Right. We all have our little delusions. The important thing is that we cling to them and we never let go, no matter how much evidence gets in the way, because that's what makes us free. We don't all have our delusions, okay? There are some of us that are delusion free. So. Is that true? Yeah. I don't think, I don't think that's true. Really? No, I think we all have our delusions. What, what delusion are you laboring under? Let me help you disabuse you of that delusion. Uh, you, we know what it is. There's, there's a reason we sell free will on the show. <laughs> the delusion that we have free will? Isn't that the, the greatest delusion of all? Well, I think just in the ability to question shows that we aren't delusional on that Well, let me, let me be clear. Free will isn't... Free will exists. People can ha people can have free will. I think delusion is that most people do act do use free will. We don't yes, have that delusion. delusion though. We are right. delusion free. I guess are we delusion free? Let me think. I mean, it's nice to pretend. Like <laughs> one of the things that I like about this community is we're just mm -hmm. we're, we're like fuck your delusions. I mean, I don't know. I think about it. Maybe I can't think Maybe. of it. Like. I mean, I know what people will say. People will say that MMT is a delusion. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> I mean, Adam, I, your delusion I is understand that you don't believe that. in God. Okay, that's your delusion. You're a dirty, dirty atheist. Right? People could that's say that. Delusion. Sure, I get that. I'm saying that. What is the delusion? I don't feel like we're. Del <laughs> I feel like we're completely. <laughs> we <laughs> we are delusion free. Right. That's true. There you go. There you go, folks. Me and Adam, 
100% delusion free. We are the only people on planet Earth that have no delusions. We only care about truth and facts and right. evidence and objectivity. We are the perfect big brain enlightened centers. Hell yeah. I feel like you're being sarcastic, but it's true. There you go. People come true. here for truth. True. People come here because they want, they don't want the delusion. Right. They want to say no to the delusion. Take the hammer to the delusion until yeah. someone disagrees with us and then we're delusional again. So it right. Matter. Yeah. <laughs> and freedom is what makes America great. Other countries, they don't have choices. But in America, we have the freedom to choose whatever we want. So can we do drugs? No, that's illegal. I thought you said we could choose. Yes, but we have This is so frustrating because Contra keeps mixing in things that are true and good with hyperbole and the whole thing off like it's bullshit. Right. Because there's a lot of truth from our libertarian uh, centrist here on, on the straw man hour that, yeah, part of what makes America work is that there is a freedom that allows us to get along to some extent, as long as we're not fucking with each other. And you mm -hmm. can't just throw that away and say, oh, there isn't really freedom because we can't all do drugs. We don't live in a fucking anarchy, you know, an anarchy where we can do whatever we want. Right. Which is an, it, like, that's a talking point for children. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We're going we're gonna to be adults here. I know you're playing dress up Contra, but come on, let's, let's try to be adults. <laughs> We're trying, trying to, to have actual interesting conversations and interesting points. We're trying to maximize individual freedom. Right. But not to the point where people are just indiscriminately murdering each other in the streets. <laughs> like, yeah, right. there's a, a balance to be struck here, which, right. I mean, I respect, you respect. I'm not sure. Right. Contra is like, if, if you can't, you know, if you're not able to buy crystal meth out of a vending machine then i guess the american project is an utter failure but okay right right i think we can debate we can debate how much individual freedom is going to be the best for society right you have to make the right choices and what if we want to make the wrong choices well the boot of the law will crush you without mercy you will be locked in a tiny cage that is literally the i mean the whole narrative story arc of the conservative character is she was allowed to make the wrong choices and came back to 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 jesus to jesus on of her own free will and volition right yeah and it supposedly feels better about it right what's what's happening yeah. here i don't know the yeah that's the Lord. The Lord is unhappy with this video. <laughs> Was that thunder? Jeez, you're yes. getting fucking killed over there. It's not even raining. It's just thundering. They laugh. God is upset that we're watching it this. Is. Oh yes. wait, that's that's the Florida. That's a don't say gay bill. <gasps> right there, God is pissed. Wait, maybe God's <laughs> on Contra's side here. God wants you to be able to say gay. <laughs> yes. How dare if you? you? If you listen really closely to thunder, it's saying. Go every time the lightning strikes. How dare you? The opposite of freedom. Well, we have to be tough on crime. It's the only way to keep this country free. We have to build more prisons. Just see, this is this is like leftist talking points bingo here at this point. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Make sure you get every every single talking point in so your audience can clap like yeah. Seals at the circus. Yeah, exactly. Who decides what the right and wrong choices are? Well, father decides. Father always decides. Father. And do you always do what father? That's not the libertarian conception. Yeah, what the oh, fuck? fuck? It's like I've straw manned conservatives for 30 minutes here. Let me straw man libertarians for the last half of right. the video. Father well, I mean, decides. she's not even. Well, and also, this well, the character, the character's not even libertarian anymore. No, because they're libertarian, all. they would be fine with people doing drugs. Of course, yeah. Anyway, yeah, um, that was right. ridiculously out of character. Sure, but it's like it's not who 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 but like a very religious person is going to say father. You know, 
God decides what is allowed. It's like, well, no, people vote. You know, I mean, we live in this thing called a democracy contra. I know you're aware of it. You know, people vote on politicians and legislatures to write laws. <laughs> like, I don't know who father is in this in this conceptualization, but yeah, it's goofy. Father says, of course, we always do what father says. Why? Because father says so. Why can't you this, just admit I mean, that you hate God? This is like absurd. Yes. This is completely absurd. Yeah. Now the libertarian is a God-loving gospel person. <laughs> Listen, this is, this is bullshit. This is such bullshit. <laughs> God, because you want to sleep with men. Oh, I don't want to sleep with men. Yes, you do. You're a man who struggles with gender confusion and same-sex temptation. No, I'm not. I'm a lesbian. Just like you, girl. My heart was also broken by a woman. I thought she was a cat girl. She turned out to be a fuck boy. Ugh. You are a straight man. I mean, at this point, I wish. But no. Definitely a gay woman. We're all stuck with it. Hold on. So, you're attracted to women, but you became a woman. Does that mean you're attracted to yourself? No. In the mirror? No, because I'm not a fucking animal that can't tell the difference between my own reflection and a different person. Does this is, you're, you're so right, like, that this is a conversation from 1990. Like, who, who's like, oh my god, if you're trans and you're, and you're straight, so that makes you gay when you transition, does that mean you're attracted to yourself? Who, yourself? Like, who would ask that question? It's like something a five-year-old child would ask. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I'd be like, oh, you're gay? Oh, do you just, like, look at yourself and masturbate? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what? It's so bizarre to me because the whole persona of ContraPoints is, like, the the queen of cool. And the, everything in this video is so uncool. Very cringe. Yeah. It's very cringe. I mean, I, I would want to... I would not want to do this as... I mean, even as an actor, I would think, oh, these roles are going to make me look like a dumbass. I don't want to play these roles. I look stupid. Yeah. This is real decline in quality contract. I like to, when I, I like to play a role that's a badass, right? Someone that's got like a rocket launcher for a dick. That's what I want. <laughs> Neither of these characters... These characters, Neither of these no. characters have a rocket launcher for a right. dick. That's true. No, no character. Here these characters, dick rocket launcher. these characters no. lactate soy milk. That's what these there characters do. Yes, true, true. And not even good human milk. Not even oat milk, but soy milk. Right, the milk of soybeans. <laughs> how how do they get? How does how do they milk soybeans? <laughs> Oh, see, Adam, they have to find the soy teat. And they have to squeeze it just I've seen right. A, I've seen a soy You've bean. Seen, but you've I've seen never the soy seen, teat? I'm going to look up soy bean listen, with the, list, the way they get soy milk. Okay, listen. The way they get soy milk, Adam, is that they find the soy teat and they play uh, videos of Matt Walsh and Ben Shapiro without trigger warnings. And it just gets them so upset that they start lactating. Soy, soy bean. Milk. With breasts. <laughs> okay, don't look that up. Desire is always for something that you lack. You can't desire yourself because you're already one with yourself. Desire feeds on absence. It reaches out across a void. I don't know. I think if I was a lesbian, I'd fuck me. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing. Aren't a lot of serial killers transgendered? Do you have bodies in your basement? <laughs> You better watch out or you're going to be next. Are those clothes even yours? Or are you wearing the clothes of your victims? Jackie, <laughs> I will drizzle a red wine reduction over your liver. And I will feast upon it. Jackie, these transsexuals, they're the greediest of all perverts. It's not enough for you to possess a woman. You also have to appropriate female beauty for yourself. Who said anything about female beauty, Virginia? You're the one who keeps bringing that up. <laughs> nice. Got her. Shut up, dum-dum. I said it to hurt her, and not to entertain you. You stay out of this. Look, so you're a straight man. You could have had a wife. You could have raised a family. Your life could have meant something. 
but you threw it all away? You really think having babies is the only way to have a meaningful life? Do you have babies? Well, priests don't have babies. Maybe think of queer people as priests. Except, you know, the people we have sex with are adults. Whoa! Okay. That's Catholic. Got him. That's not Christian. It's kind of crossing a line, don't you think? Oh, has free speech gone too far? Now it's gone too far? Can we have a civil conversation, please? Is it impossible? This does, it, did, it doesn't change tone at all from the minute 13 mark. <laughs> like, it's really just... It's like how... This is like a how much can you take challenge. It really is. It's just so, it's so substance, substanceless. Well, no. So the substance, the, the, what's going on right now is that Contra is complaining about how, oh, you know, the, the right is constantly attacking trans people. And they're saying, you know, the, the right wing person is saying all these horrible things to her. She keeps calling, she keeps dead naming her. She keeps calling her just, okay. Calling a straight male. She keeps denying her humanity. She keeps doing all these horrible things to her. But then when she drops the, you know, priest rape children joke, oh, suddenly everyone's like, oh, it's a step too far. Can't we be civil? How dare you? I can't believe you would say this. That's supposed right. to be what's happening. Here. Okay. I mean, the priest, the, the, the rapey priest joke is like standard... I mean, that's comedy gold there. That's been around forever. <laughs> right. Nobody's nobody's uh, upset about that. I mean, there's literally a part in the South Park game where you have to, you have to fight off rapist priests in the closet. Yeah, yeah, see? And they try to molest you. With their, their attacks are that they try to molest right. you. It's pretty commonplace <laughs> and acceptable to yeah. beat up on Christians, I think. Of course. Which, you know... That's great. You should be able yeah. to beat up on everyone. There you go. Right? There you go. Sitch, for instance, loves to go to Twitter and beat up on trans women or trans men. No, I love to beat up on... One of his favorite things to do. That's So that's not true. He loves to go on what Twitter I, and misgender as much as he What can. I like to do is I like to go on Twitter and beat up mouth-breathing morons. Oh, that's who true. Are, who, instead of having a brain, have a cavity have a recess that is so dense and devoid of information that a black hole has formed in their mm -hmm. skull. That's uh, what I like to beat up on. Yeah. Well, to have a civil conversation in America today, well, that ship has sailed and sunk. Uh, Virginia, I believe you were about to exercise Christian humility by explaining why you're but see, but barren. This is why this is so bullshit, because... Like, yeah, if a trans person was talking with someone the person kept fucking dead naming them calling them him or he or whatever i'm not gonna throw shade at the trans person for you know attacking back calling them a bigot transphobe yeah calling them whatever hateful word they want to i don't care that yeah. that's not how these conversations manifest at all in the real world that's why there's a total written insane straw man the way these kind if someone says hey i don't think we should be promoting you know gender ideology to children in public school right and then they say oh that's the trans genocide yeah yeah you need to take up arms they're coming for you they're going to they're going to they're gonna DeSantis, Ron DeSantis is building a private army and he's going to call up anyone. And if, if you think any, if you think any family member or neighbor is a transer, you can call up the Ron DeSantis private army and say, we got a transer here. Come get them. Okay. That's the conversation. That's me. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know what the fuck world that Contra lives in that this conversation takes place except in her own mind. But. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They say they, they just say the most milk toast thing, and it's like they're off to the races about trans genocide. It's that's right. awful. Yeah, but see, and that's what's so insane about you can't even have the conversation. They haven't misgendered you once, <laughs> right? But that's what's so insane with like the conversation, you know, online that was going on with Shu, where she's like, like pointing to weird shit at Pride, and is like, can't we all just denounce this? And then. 
like there's a no yeah <laughs> there's a no from not everyone on the left but from a lot of most especially of them, the yeah. bread tuber types you know we're all running defense for this all like like you know big joel uh lance uh contra uh, so many people were all running defense for this shit instead of just saying like they didn't even say this is bad i don't like it but it's happening very rarely and it's not like and it's being blown up to be like it's happening all the time they didn't even say that they're saying like this is the norm i didn't they're saying give that us this isn't a they're saying that this isn't bad this isn't a problem there's nothing wrong with this i'm gonna level with you sitch this shoe on head drama yes it's about 10 times more exciting than this boring fucking ContraPoints <laughs> video. Can I please just have just a sip of the shoe on head drama? What happened on Twitter with you? It sounds like she got, she, she was uh, calling out some weirdness at pride and everyone jumped on her or something. I don't know this drama. Well, no shit. So, she tweeted out the video. Yeah, of course you do. She, you know the video in Texas that everyone was throwing around of, you know, the there was a bunch of and they were doing, they were dancing and they were walking along the runway and it mm -hmm. looks like it's in a nightclub and there's a neon sign that everyone points to that says it's not going to look itself and there's kids in the audience. And this is supposed to be like a family-friendly uh, drag show. Right. You know that video that everyone saw? I have and not seen everyone, this video. Yes, yeah. you did. You, of course you've seen this video. Let's I have not, no. You have seen this video. I haven't seen this it. Is, okay. I sounds terrible. Sounds awful. Like I literally something don't I don't want to see. This is insane. But, um, and every fucking person on the planet uh, retweeted this video mm -hmm. from Shu, including Matt Walsh and Ben Shapiro and all the people. And not only did they retweet the video, I'm Shoe pretty sure they found retweeted. this video? Well, she didn't find it, but she saw it and then tweeted about it. Okay. And then it seemed like everyone retweeted her tweet about it. Okay. Including Ben Shapiro, Matt Walsh, and all these other people. And what was her so, tweet? Her tweet was like, we should just denounce this, right? This is bad. Yeah, essentially. Okay. Right. right. And and so everyone was jumping down her throat because they're like, you public, you know, you popularized, you blew up this thing that's not a big deal. And now all these evil right wingers are irresponsible platforming. Yes, you're irresponsibly platforming this. And now all these evil right wingers are attacking the LGBT community and right. reacting the trans genocide. You ah, caused the trans. So Shoe on Head is actually responsible for the trans genocide by this yes. point. Okay. Right. And how did Shoe respond? I think. She eventually deleted the tweet. I'm not 100 percent sure. What? But Shoo! it blew up like after like weeks though. Like it blew up. It got like hunt like tens, if not hundreds of thousands of retweets and likes. Wasn't and, it on Tucker Carlson stuff. or something? I feel I it feel was like probably I'm... on Tucker Carlson. Yeah, like it was everywhere. It was everywhere. I feel like someone showed a clip of like, oh look, now it's on Tucker Carlson. That's what happened. They're like, shoo! This tweet you blew up was on Tucker Carlson. I know. That's like ah practically white supremacy there yes so did she is she still in it trouble? wasn't an ice i like shoe. No, i don't no, want no, no, you no, to no, get no, in wait, trouble whoa 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 uh-huh pause okay okay there was a narrative right that was pushed around here okay that was like because there was a neon sign that said it's not going to look itself and people said Oh, it's terrible. They're saying that drag shows aren't sexual. Well, look, there's a sexual sign right there in the background. And the the defense was, no, this is actually not a nightclub, but an ice cream shop. And that's why the ice cream shop has the sign. It's not going to look itself. It's double entendre about ice cream. Okay. Was it really an ice cream shop? No, that turned out to be okay. fake news. Oh, okay. okay. There was a very, very bizarre coincidence where an ice cream shop in the same city that was not that far away from this nightclub had a sign that said that too really no yes. way yes right but it's it's a different place it's a different place if you if you actually look at the image the ice cream shop uh, uses like it's all like the it's not going to look itself sign is in all in capitals and the one from the the drag queen show at the nightclub is in cursive or an undercase writing and it's a, a different place and I found the website, or I don't remember what it is at the top of my head, but I found the bar that has the drag queen uh, show. And this Sitch was marketed. Dug in. Hilarious. This was marketed as a drag queen 
show for children or a family friendly drag queen show. Wow. So it wasn't an ice cream shop. No, that, that was a commonly passed around myth. So, hmm. and that was people carrying water for the, for the pride thing with the kids. Right. Well, I mean, I saw it and at first I, I believed it too. Cause I saw it and I said, Oh, I thought that makes sense. And then it was only when I looked at it like a couple more times, I said, wait a minute, the signs are different. Mm. And then someone else pointed out to me, I think on Twitter, and they said, oh, no, it's it's from this place. I said, what? And I looked it up and I was like, oh, shit, it is in that place. It's just a really weird coincidence that there's an ice cream shop nearby that has a similar sign so that I believe is completely unrelated. It's You're in a weird club. position, though, um, if you're just a normie who has no problem with gay marriage or gay people doing right. whatever they want to do, you know, as adults. But just like involving children in this situation seems like a bridge too far. And well, it's, just, it's weird. Cause it's like, it's, it's weird to me. I don't have a problem with drag queens at all. Okay. Even though my biggest problem with drag queens was that I was forced to watch RuPaul's drag race at one point mm -hmm. by various girls that I was dating because right. girls eat that shit up for whatever right. reason that is beyond my capacity of understanding. Well, okay. you know, if you're getting, if there's like, you know, a relationship going on. Sometimes you have to make sacrifices. This is how the world yeah, works. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. No, but. But so, so I don't have a problem with drag queens. I don't have a problem with RuPaul's Drag Race. I don't have a problem with any of that shit. Okay. But it's weird to me that there's like, because it becomes moralized, there's nothing, there is nothing moral or amoral about drag. Drag is an, is has nothing to do with morality. Okay. One way or the fucking other. It has nothing, so it has nothing to do with children, but yet too many people act like it's some moral fucking duty to impart this, uh, this, I don't know, wh whatever you want to call it, this culture, this, this activity, this click onto children. It's like, I'm not over here saying, Hey, I'm really into violence, anime, uh, action anime where characters are brutally, you know, mm -hmm. f like killed. And I think that this should be put in front of children and that there should be right, family normalized. friendly, you know, violent anime watching children activities. Like, why do I give a fuck? Like, that's my problem with this. Just you have your own thing. Okay. Why do you have to fucking force it down everyone else's throat? Why do you have to moralize it? It's just an activity that people like to do. I'm not over here. Like we have to force children to play violent video games. We need to force children to play lewd video games. I'm not, I'm not over here like, listen, guys, I don't know if you know this about me, but I like ASMR, okay? Yeah, he does. It's fucking and disgusting. And I think ASMR is a moral duty which should be shoved down the throat. I think all children should be forced to listen to ASMR in school. Like, I, I just, I don't understand why there has to be this idiotic moralizing component to it okay if do you want me to tell you i know why, teenager but... why likes to watch rupaul or an adult likes to fucking go and dress and drag i don't give a fuck they let them do it okay why does every why does it have to be everyone else's fucking responsibility it's easy to forget and i often forget because it's such a terrible stupid argument but here's the argument we live in a world where people have have chastised and demoralized these communities, mm -hmm. you know, isolated them, right? built negative stereotypes around them. And we, in order to fight that, we have to show that people who like violent anime <laughs> are just normal fucking everyday people, okay? Uh -huh. And in order to do that, we have to show very young children that there are people in the world who like to watch violent, super violent, just blood curdling, violent anime. Right. So right. the children have to see somebody like a normal person sitting down and watching that and not get freaked out by it because otherwise they're going to develop negative stereotypes about people who like that kind of shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But see, no, that's a great, it's a great comparison. That's what they're and doing. Right. That's the whole point right. of it. That yeah. is the argument, but it's so fucking dumb because it's like, no, that's bullshit. If, if you want to remove the stigma from it, 
that's fine. Remove the stigma of people doing in drag. You don't, there's a difference between removing the stigma and promoting. Okay. And I don't this, know, to me, I, mean, I feel like the growing stigma up where is I grew just up, biological, though. It's like, well, first of all, I don't even think the stigma is fucking real anymore. Okay. From my own personal experience, mm -hmm. okay, growing up in a very diverse fucking place where I had girls that liked RuPaul's drag race for some whatever fucking reason. And right. I had to watch this crap. Drag was not fucking stigmatized by anyone I knew, okay? So these girls are fucking talking about, oh, the fashion, the fashion. I don't care about this shit. Who's stigmatizing it? It's completely outside of my world of experience. It's, you weren't, so not only that, Yeah, I'm you sure people were stigmatizing in the past, but now I, I don't fucking know. So it doesn't have to be promoted. That's different. And that's what that's what Shu was focusing on was the idea of, of pride doesn't have to be about your sexual kink. And you think that this would be such a basic fucking argument that everyone would be behind. But no, there's all these assholes and there's videos that I have that we can that we can watch at some point where people are literally making the argument like, no, pride and, and sexual kinks are inherently tied together. You can't you can't intertwine. You can't, you know, untangle that fucking knot. And it's just it's it's so fucking infuriating. It's so fucking stupid. Yeah. These people are so insanely dumb. Yeah. Well, bad, dumb because politic as a political strategy goes, it's like one of the it's up there with defund the police. Yes, because yeah, they're they're just galvanizing people to hate LGBT people. Yes, That's yeah, all they're doing. It's and it like you have to literally be the dumbest fucking idiot alive. You have to have your head shoved so fucking far up your ideological ass to be blind to that. Yeah. I just don't understand it. I don't understand how people could be that fucking stupid. Well, Pete, a lot of people are stupid. I guess. Just stupid by their very nature. And they're being driven by their gut intuitions. They're just like, intuitionally, we have to support this. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you're right. It's not... It's just that's what they want. And so then they trick themselves into believing it. Plus, it triggers the conservatives, so it's got to be a winning strategy. I guess. Triggers me, but for completely different reasons. <laughs> well, it triggers us because it's a losing strategy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I don't want to live in a world of hate. I want to live in the liberal utopia. Okay. Yeah. Where everyone gets along. That's right. Yeah. I'm... Yeah. Someday. Well, I Someday. hope shoes survive the onslaught of... She'll be fine. People hating on her. And life of self-flagellation is more meaningful than mine. I walk with this. I mean, what is, I feel like sometimes drug use is a little bit of self-flagellation, but I don't know. Been there. Spirit, until the day I go to glory. That's my meaning. Your meaning is what? To fabricate an already fading illusion of feminine beauty? until you rot away unresurrected in the earth? And for what? To mutilate God's image and to live a lie? Anything else? Who the fuck is making these arguments? Who's Contra talking to? Nobody. Bad music cues too. I just, the whole, it's just so weird. It's so, that this, this is conversation so, is not happening in the public discourse. It's not. It's This is not saying, this. all this is, is creating just negative stereotypes of of religious everyone. Religious people, yeah. But as as bad a negative stereotype as the kind of racist negative stereotypes they had in the 40s and 50s of black people. That's like, that's exactly, that's how bad this is. Uh, Tim the Ancient for $20. Thanks so much. Says, how do you prove to someone what cultural milune, milu? Mm -hmm. That's how you say that, right? Cultural milu, milune? How do you say that word, Adam? Mil milieu. Milieu. Uh, cultural milieu actually is. Like, I wouldn't know how to go about showing someone like Contra that Christians aren't really like her character, aren't really a thing anymore. Thoughts? I mean. That's my you, thing. You just say, listen, Contra, give me the video that the popular video of the popular political commentator who's making these arguments. Because I don't fucking see them. I don't see where this is happening. Yeah, there was a there was a guy in the writers' lab, very good writer, mm -hmm. flamboyantly gay, 
And he was a hardcore mm-hmm. Catholic. <laughs> I mean, I just, I don't, this is so weird to me. Like, I know a bunch right. of, I know a bunch of Christian people that are just, I, I get maybe it's just Los yeah, but Angeles. Are, so, right. so. But yeah, you live in a very progressive right. place. Right, yeah. You know, I live in a probably more progressive place, not as progressive as Los Angeles. But I mean, I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's conversations like this happening in, you know, parts in America, in church. I just don't see what's happening publicly in the political space because if anyone made this fucking comment, they would get canceled immediately. Yeah. They would get stripped from the internet for hate speech. (laughs) So ironic. Uh, Zach Crin for $20 says, if childhood innocent isn't real, that means age of consent laws are irrelevant. Can I fairly call them groomers now? Sorry, I'm 20 minutes behind. Also, a team reigns supreme. I don't think... I don't think childhood innocence has anything to do with age of consent laws. And I think if we were to really tease that out, it would lead to places that you don't want it to lead. So I'm not sure that's a line of logic we'd want to follow. Right. Because it's going to, it's sort of going to, it's it's going to fall on how people define what it means to be childhood and like to be innocent. Exactly. And, you know, Adam just brought up the example, like Andrew Jackson was 12 years old and like spying on, yeah, I don't know, whatever army he was spying on, you know, there's 12 year olds running around in child and warlord child armies that are like shooting people, killing people. And so, you know, how much of childhood innocence is social and how much of it is biological, you know, it's sort of, it's, that's a vague line that I don't think we want to associate with something as serious and severe like age of consent laws. Because, I mean, I, you know. James Lindsay makes the argument that kind of those secret Marxist thing is to sexualize children to separate them from their family. Right. And then be able to indoctrinate indoctrinate them politically. Right. I don't know. I mean, it's hard for me to imagine people are doing that and, you know, on board with doing that consciously because it's just so nefarious most people aren't doing it consciously. But they, the way that you sell that, though, is you tell people, listen, we have to show kids that the gay lifestyle is just normal and so they don't develop negative stereotypes yes, right. against gay people. I mean, I don't... It just... I. If you're not promoting... It seems like... When those negative stereotypes existed, they existed because children were taught those stereotypes at a very early age. So it's, instead of teaching them being gay as normal, they taught them being gay as subversive, right? Right. And But if you just don't teach anything about being gay, then, I mean, why can't you just not teach anything about being yeah. gay until... Right, or just say it's normal and then move on but when when someone when someone discovers that they have same sex attraction i mean by then they're not they're older they're not they're not in elementary school right usually yeah 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 i don't it's you can't have intelligent conversations about this kind of stuff though yeah uh try star l L1011 for $20 says contrast a childish understanding of Christianity. Now I'm not saying the Christian God is the real God. I have my own opinions, but her understanding of the God of the Bible is poorly understood and it makes her look silly. I agree. I agree yeah. True. Uh, TriStar L1011 for another $20. Thank you so much. Says religion works because it creates community, provides accountability for their members to hopefully prevent them from doing things that hurt themselves and others, provides a path to redemption and provides local charity. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. I think I think providing a pro-social community is a huge chunk of it. And yes. I think we're all looking for a community to fit into. Yeah, it also right. promotes uh, forgiveness, which forgiveness is good sure. for you at a psychological level, and it's good for society. If you have you know, tit-for-tat struggles that go on for generations, <laughs> it's like in, 
in you know feud wars that's not pro social that's not good for society i often right. i mean i just fo there's a there's a really good book on on this i'm spacing on the author but you have to get the idea of you have to promote the idea of forgiveness and get it into society if you want society to function to to be pro social and functional and i just christianity does that i mean the whole passion of the christ the whole narrative is built around forgiveness like you know god soul of the world that he gave his only begotten son right i mean right. this is a this is a like a forgiveness narrative i don't how do you put how do you convince people and forgiveness is hard i mean i know more than anyone like i i'm a grudger man <laughs> i just it's hard for me to forgive people especially when they've you know done me wrong Nobody wants to forgive someone who's done you wrong. Talk shit behind your back, stole your girlfriend away, you know, uh, fucked you over in a business deal. Like, there's all kinds of ways that people can screw you over. And it's very hard to let that go, but it's very good for your psychological health to let that go, and it's very good for society to let that go. How right. do you foster that idea without some grand narrative about, you know, God and Jesus and all this kind of... It's just, it's well, made for that. It's, yeah, it's difficult. But I mean, that's my that's one of my biggest problems with the civil religion of wokeness is that it's anti forgiveness, totally anti forgiveness. And I mean, I just this is my if you want to talk about building a civil religion that is, you know, divorced from. From, well, you know, you can have God or not have God attached to it, but, you know, a civil religion has to be functional for everybody. If you want to build something like that. I just, I can't, how do you do it without the forgiveness component? And unless you're you talking, right. yeah, unless you're talking about how are we going to build a narrative where people respect the power of forgiveness, I just, you, 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 I mean, you have to have concrete yep, conversations about that kind of stuff. And none of this stuff is happening in any of this woke scolding that's going on in this video, but. No. Uh, knowledge for $20. Thank you so much says, every time I think this clown world has reached its peak, it breaks my expectations. Thanks for keeping me grounded in based centrism. Yeah, Very cool. Vosh is, Vosh is uh, enraged right now. <laughs> oh my God, a centrist. How dare you? You're just allowing the fascists to walk the marching and take over. Mm -hmm. I don't care what Sargon says. Centrists are the kingmakers. Centrists have more political power than anyone. And the idea, the idea that your political perspectives are taking a backseat to ideological, ideologically driven extremists just seems laughable to me because... I just you're I mean just because you're you're taking the political you know you're basically adopting political opinions uh a la carte and not subscribing to whatever my team says is correct doesn't mean that you're subservient to those teams how is that logical sitch sitch left cuz he knew I was going to go on a tirade it's not logical, okay? Well, I just I don't I don't understand. I mean, I've thought that's a, it's that rhetorically that is a good retort that, you know, centrists don't have any any uh, core principles because they're, you know, voting with whichever tribe like the tribes are what's driving the policy prescriptions. Is that even really true, though? I'm not. I'm not sure that it is. Well, no. So what? It, it sort of is true. It's, and we talk about this a lot. It's the extremists are pull. Are they're always trying to pull people in directions, and then the centrists are the kingmakers because basically what happens is something happens in the society or the environment that tips the centrists into being pulled into following one of the directions that the extremist wants to pull them towards. Right. So, but it's a, it's a both, it's both. But I guess the problem is it's conceptualized as 
the the centrist doesn't agree and is just going on going along and has some third position but normally for me it's like oh yeah i totally agree with that side so i'm not there i'm not adopting their perspective they are sharing my perspective right yeah else would be a lie if god exists i'm sure his mind is bigger than yours and with or without your approval and understanding, I will always be the way I am. Look, can't we reach a reasonable compromise? I think you should have the right to do whatever sick shit that you're into. Just leave children out of it. Like, whatever this is, keep this away from children. And that's why we should increase police funding to fight, fight the, the war, war on drugs. See, so so Con it's interesting. Contra is essentially taking the Vosh position, or not not the exact, but like a similar Vosh position, where you have the libertarian centrist character is you know is basically just capitulating to fascism, essentially. Oh, is that what's going on there? Yes, because she's thought, like, I thought she told the Christian lady off. No. She, so I don't know why Contra flipped the frame around. You know how the signs are backwards? Oh. Keep this away from children. And that's yeah, what, what happened why there? we should increase police. Oh my God. Speed. She broke Wait. the directing rule. We'll compromise. There's a, was a, okay, there. See, see, she flipped the direction. What happened here? I don't know. It's artistic. Is this okay. supposed to be like a memento type thing that's going on here? I, I, it's supposed to symbolize, the, you know, you know, like the. Is Dutch this a Fight angle. Club thing? Like, okay, the... you, you, you know, like in the first day of film class. Oh yeah, the, the teacher is like degree rule. Well, no, not this isn't the, this. She's not breaking the hundred eighty degree rule. Okay, you know, how in like the first day of film class, the teacher is like the Dutch angle is when the camera turns to the side and it's used to emphasize like a psychological distress or breaking point within a character you know mm -hmm. so like i'm assuming that's what's going on like you know the the f things being reversed is to symbolize like the peak you know psychological uh breaking point for the character the leftist character okay because even the the uh, supposedly moderate libertarian character who's saying, you know, you can do whatever you want. They're still saying, just keep this, keep your degeneracy away from children. Right. We need to increase policing. So it, it is sort of like, that's what I meant when I said Contra is somewhat adopting the extremist Vosh position of like, that there's this all or nothing uh, position with LGBT issues. And if you don't accept all of it, then, you know, you're you're just a bigot. Ouch. Like whatever this is, keep this away from children. And that's why we should increase police funding to fight, fight the, the war, war on drugs. drugs. Listen, Justin. I'm just trying to help you understand how lost you really are. I know my place in this world. I've found love, family, belonging, fellowship in the church. Have you found fellowship in the LGBT2A dollar sign community? <laughs> well, obviously not, because it's a bunch of wounded people wounding each other, case in point. Though you are one of the worst I've ever seen. So you're alone, you're far from God's grace, and you have no cat girl GF. Can you honestly say that you're happy? That you're fulfilled? That you have a purpose? That's why I don't understand. This video is like an act, like it's pro the religious point of view. It kind of is drifting in that direction. Isn't yeah, it? like it's so bizarre. This is so strange to me. I don't, but obviously that was not her intention. That's why I'm just baffled by this. She gonna come out as a Jordan Peterson fan? <laughs> is that where this is headed? I'm a conservative now. That you have 
Got to read it. Hi, Justin. We are still praying for you. Hope to see you at Christmas this year. So this is, I guess, her her family member or her father or right. her mother. Denise Tableau. Right. The, are those phones really waterproof? I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't drop it in the water, but... I think they are supposed to be waterproof. I wouldn't risk it. I feel like I want to try it, though. Okay, you try it. You, you try it on your own. Phone. I want to try it with Contra's phone. <laughs> God, what I would give to see the YouTube analytics on this video. Oh, man. Well, treasure you know, trove of information it's um they you know they start doing a thing where it's not all the time but sometimes you can see like what the most watched uh, parts of a video are have you not noticed have you not seen that no really oh you can see it on this one okay i'll send you a, a send, screenshot send me the screenshot yeah i'll bring it up i'm curious so what how do you do that it doesn't do it. I can only I see it in Firefox. I don't see it in Chrome, which is weird because Chrome is Google, so you'd expect to. Uh... Hmm. So it shows you like what the. Oh no! It shows it on Chrome too. Let me sign. If you mouse over the scrubber, right, it shows you like the most watched parts of the video. It shows you where like viewership increases and then declines. Really. Yeah, you've never you, you haven't seen this before. Can you screenshot it or you have I to? I did. Scrub. I sent it to you on Twitter. But you don't see the whole part of it. No, no. You, you see on the timeline. It oh, shows you're you, right. Look at that. It shows you the peaks and valleys of the video. Yeah. Look at that. Okay, I gotta know where these peaks and valleys are. Yeah. I mean, they're where you would expect them to be, essentially. In the bathtub? Well, no, the, the, the valleys are where the religious character goes on the long On the speeches. long rant. Right. right. And the peaks are like contra points in the bathtub naked. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, my, my word. I don't think I have that on mine. I got to check it out. You should. So I'm totally, I've got the wrong perspective here. The peaks are probably where I'm tuning out, where I'm like, oh God, this is so boring. <laughs> the fuck? More of contra points in the bathtub blocking people. No, no, no. This way, is she's blocking her... somebody being blocked by some see there's a whole like lore here which i'm not fully up on mm -hmm. um give us the cliff notes i think i believe the cliff notes are that that this justine character wait, let me go back because i wasn't watching justine sacco that that the leftist character that contra's playing this justine character uh, wants to bang the Antifa trans cat girl character or is in love with her, but that the trans cat girl character has blocked Justine because she did so poorly on the podcast. I think that's what's supposed to be happening. Right. Look, she has an A cab header there. Yeah. That means all cops are bastards. That's what that stands what that for. Means. Yeah. Hello? Couldn't they just change it to all cops Hello? are based? Jesus. So scary. Don't say that name in front of me. How did you get in my house? Oh, I get into a lot of people's houses. Who are you? What are you? Well... 
I used to be an angel. And now? Let's just say I'm in a different line of work. A satanic visitation. At this time of year, at this time of night, in this part of the country, localized entirely within my bathroom? Yes. This is, is this, gonna... this is it's comedy a, gold. That's a comedy. Yeah. This is uh, like... A meme from three years ago. What happened? What's is there? I'm missing the meme action of it. That's the uh, the Simpsons meme. Is the, it really? Oh yeah, wow. the the Skinner uh, trying to make dinner for a uh, superintendent, and he sets his kitchen on fire, and, and the superintendent's like, "What is this?" And he says, "The Aurora Borealis." You've never seen this meme? No. He says, "The Aurora Borealis," and this part of the this time of year, and this part of the country localized in your kitchen. Okay, well. Don't worry about it. Hilarious. It's the baked the baked hams. Uh, I just I can't believe ContraPoints is citing Simpson. Yeah. The, well, I don't. I mean, it's just it's old name, so it's weird. But right. anyway, it's anyway. I was gonna say it's hard to make a character ominous or scary if you hear them talking through a cheap mask. Yeah, okay? yeah. Here's your artistic endeavor. If you're gonna do that. Gotta okay, have a don't vocal be lazy. effect. Yeah. Listen, don't be lazy. The person's wearing a mask. You can't see their mouth moving yeah, at exactly. all. Exactly. Okay, so you know what that means? That means you can do their audio separately in, cl in crystal clear audio. Yeah. And you can just add it in. <laughs> okay. Well, you can also use one of those killer vocal effects to make them sound like they're demonic. Right, you don't want to play yeah. it up. You, know, you can add a little, you know, if you want to add like a little bit of it. No, you want a demonic effect. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, but so just I, that was, it's just lazy. Why don't do the audio that way? Come on, yeah. come on, Contra. You're supposed to be like the, the editing master here, cinematic master. Well, and the acting is just awful. I don't well, feel okay. that's like, always been that's always been the case. <laughs> I don't feel. <laughs> The horror I see. that you would I have see. if some stranger entered your bathroom while you were dressed just, like that. Yeah. <laughs> if I was, if I was at home alone in the bath, and and that character came <laughs> into my home, I would be like, "Where's my gun?" You'd be throwing shit at them as you scramble out of the bathroom. Fuck yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, I wouldn't be making Simpson meme jokes from three. Years. There you go. But anyway, we, we find faults with the realism of the shot. Okay, guys, yeah. that's what's obviously she must know that it's a demonic manifestation. Yeah, good for her. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would be just as scared if it was a demonic manifestation, <laughs> right? Yeah. Sure. I mean, home intruder and demonic manifestation. I mean, I might go with the demonic manifestation. I mean, it depends. Are they are they one of the demonic manifestations where you have to agree to something? Because then you can always just tell them to fuck off. Oh yeah. So that's better. They than have a, contracts like a, to uphold. Right. That's better yeah. than like a guy who wants to kill, steal, or rape you. So. Yeah. It's gonna be a weird sex thing. Do you want it to be? No. Look, I've had a terrible day. I'm really not in the mood for this. Well, I can help you with that. Can you? Sure, I can help with anything. Depression, anxiety, insomnia, pain, boredom, failure, shame. Shame? <laughs> is it the shame? Well, yeah, there's the shame. There's always going to be the shame, but it's a complex cocktail. There's the heartbreak, there's the loneliness, the self-loathing. I'm a parched land loose. I've got the hunger. The emptiness inside. Oh, emptiness inside. See, now you know why I distribute like this video, Adam. This is just basically validating. Christianity, uh, yeah. Well, Christianity is validating sort of that this, you know, LGBT stuff is not going to fulfill your quest for meaning in life. Right, yeah. And it's so weird to me that her community is not, is celebrating this video. I just, I don't understand what people take from it. They need meaning in life too. Yeah, but she's not. She's not. She's not 
putting forward what the what a meaning is that someone could find in the LGBT community. Right. Yeah. So it's like it's just it's very bizarre. Hey, well, baby girl, let me fill you up. I thought you said this wasn't going to be a weird sex thing. It's not a weird sex thing. Potions, Justine. Potions. I have potions that will fill the emptiness inside. Potions? Elixirs, serums, tonics, medicaments. Think of me as a salesman. An apothecary. And I, just, I feel so embarrassed. <laughs> I do, yeah. You don't like that every time she talks to the mask, the little like fluff of the thing like comes out it's from the air. So, from her. this is so embarrassing. <laughs> I just, uh, it's like high school play, you know, level. level I mean, level. it's worse than high school play. It's more Middle like middle school play. It's more like the play that you put on for your parents and they don't, and <laughs> nobody comes over to see. This is like, yeah, this is a kind of performance only a, only a parent could love. Yes. Yeah. I just, uh, it's supposed to be funny. It's supposed to, Adam, it's campy. Okay. It's campy and funny. You just don't get it. This isn't how to do camp. This isn't how you do camp. No, it's not. Yeah. It needs correct. some blood. Yeah. Yeah. I have potions <laughs> and the, the writing is just, it's not even funny. It's, I can't, is it? Like it feels like it's trying to be serious. I mean, I, I, this is I like, can't tell. I can't tell honestly. This is like the room. This is like the the room, but bad. Wait. Oh hi, Mark. You mean the room, but bad? The room. Is well, bad. the room is so bad that it's good, but this is like yes. it just missed the so bad it's good part. I see. Like it's I just see. so bad, right? Well, here's what's interesting. So Contra's previous video before this. Right. It was 10 months ago. So you think this was a, I got to put a video out type situation? Maybe, but that has 4.4 million views. The last one? Yeah. Well, this one could, I mean, it was 10 months ago, so this one could. Yeah, but I don't, I don't think this is going to reach anywhere near that. It's so weird, this space that we inhabit because has contra peaked is this the is this no, the dying are we looking well, at no, a dying I'll tell you why here? Not. okay so her previous video had 4.4 million views her video before that which was the JK Rowling video had 5.4 million views right the video before that is called voting and it only had 1.6 million views right so she you know like she goes up and down yeah okay I didn't. I mean, I watched a J.K. Rowling video with you. Right, we covered that video. Which I think it was more interesting because there was it, more. There's more to talk about. Right. Um, but it was terrible. Yeah. Yeah. This video is just the descent into madness. I guess I don't know. Great. Dave likes it. Okay, so it's got to be good. <laughs> A dealer. Are you trying to get demonetized? Sorry. Oh, a demonetization joke. Funny. <laughs> We've never done that. What before. potions? We've never done a demonetization. No. I don't know. It's just. <laughs> it's... Do you have? Well, this is one of my favorites. It's called hype. This will make you come alive. You'll jump right out of your sh This will make you come alive, my pretty. It's called hype. I mean, what's his performance? I don't know. It's, it's just... So judgmental. I, just, I feel... I mean, if you're going to try to do movie quality stuff, you're going to get compared to movies, so... Well, Contra has never done movie quality stuff. Let's be real. Right. But it's attempting to be movie quality stuff. Well, definitely. Contra has always done. Contra was like the first person on the left who made videos that was not like I'm sitting in my bedroom, you know, just talking to the camera. Right. So I approve of zero. The bar was low. 
I approve of zero of these music cues in this video. There's been no music cue that I thought that was well placed. Yeah. Well, no, the music cues are fine. It's just you don't like the music. No, I don't like the. I don't like where they're placed. I don't like the oh, tone okay. of them. I don't like any Listen of it. To this yeah. guy. Everybody's a director. Even in this Mr. Night Club social type. justice detective. Did your social justice detective you get four million views? No. Mr. Friended. No, not even. Well, there close. you go. Yeah. How dare you? How dare you insult Queen Conch, Queen Natalie? Right. How right. dare you? You're right. It's all about views. It really is. Yeah. yeah. Who am I to judge? Maybe people. I mean, like... we all know that true art is Transformers Seven. That movie had so much money made. Fried China. It's obviously an artistic masterpiece. Is that the one with the dinosaur and the and the? Is that the one with the uh tramp the robot dinosaur? That's the one where the dinosaur transforms into a helicopter and it fights the giant robot flea that transforms into a baby with a heart of gold. That's badass. I got to admit. Yes, that was my favorite one. Yeah, wasn't big into the Transformer movies, but. Show, say goodbye to shyness, self-doubt, inhibition. You'll have energy, confidence, charisma. You'll finally get things done. You'll. Oh, you'll finally have charisma. This will be good. Connect with people. You'll always know just what to say. Lucy, the time for that was about twelve hours ago. At this point. I just want the pain to stop. Pain? Well, I surely have something for that. It's called Void. Oh, One drop of this. There was a different drug. All the pain. I forgot. I, I apologize for getting the drug mythology in Conscious video wrong. Hype is like cocaine and ecstasy, and Void is fentanyl. And Downers. Hell. I apologize. That's okay. Hype is fun. Boy, this sucks. Yeah. I can't figure out, is that like a, does she have a a roll of packing tape stuck to her mask? I feel like maybe it Where? is. will melt away. The aches of the body, the agitation of desire, the sting of heartbreak, boredom, grief, and shame. All of Where's the duct tape? What? It's like on the side? It's like a roll here stuck to the cheek. I, I, you know, I can't see whatever you're doing, right? You're gonna have to describe it to me. Are you talking about the thing that's like under the nose and above the mouth on the left side? Yeah, it's like a big roll. It's like a big round okay, roll. You're, it's not, like you're a, not helping me. It's like a soup okay. can stuck to stuck to the cheek of the mask. Okay. Talking about the, okay. Oh, 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 oh. The I, cylinder no, shape. No, 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 no. Okay, you're not helping. But it's I understand what you're talking giant. about. Giant. Yeah, the giant. Re okay, no, it's a collar. It's like a weird collar. Oh, okay. I thought it was a roll God, of packing tape. You're just terrible at exp like explaining. Like things. red Christmas packing tape. I can't imagine trying to play shreds with Adam. It'd be like the fucking worst thing. On the planet. It is terrible to be honest with you. My wife always hates it. <laughs> like, he's anyway. like, it's the thing. It's the thing that looks like the soup can. Like, wait, give me the, yeah. the spatial location, Campbell Adam. He's like, it's the can. thing on the there. <laughs> I did say the cheek, so. It wasn't that bad. I know, but that would I okay. Forget it. Oh, this is so cringy. All of that will fade away under a warm blanket of serenity and love. Yes, I know what void is, but that's a very hard potion. And it's a dark path that I don't want to go down. Baby, it's my job to lead people down dark paths. You'd really rather sit there in your little tub of sadness. It's my job to lead people down dark paths. See, there you go. That's it. You like the little lighting effect? Little, little lens flares coming off. Come on, baby. The candles. It's my job to lead people down dark <laughs> paths. Come on, baby. That's what Lucifer sounds oh. like. I'm telling you, a voice effect, like a demonic voice effect, would make oh this a million God. times better. Hmm. I'm not scared of this. Would you? You wouldn't take drugs from a demonic voice sounding guy, though. I mean, I have a couple times, but <laughs> <laughs> okay, most, I take most, it back. most of the time, 
most of the time it's just like dish soap or you know not really real drugs so mm -hmm. when you talk to the demonic voice person it's just dish soap sometimes you get lucky right and it's real what do you need a clear mind to process how bad you were on that podcast because it was embarrassing, humiliating, honestly. It was difficult to watch. Shut up. Is it some kind of masochism? You just want to feel all the pain, man. Because you're not impressing anyone. I mean, what is your plan for this evening? You're going to sit around stalking your ex on social media all night? Because that is pathetic. And it's so unnecessary. Because you're choosing to feel bad. When with one drop of void, you could be in bliss. Wait, I thought the other one was a bliss. I'm confused now. I thought the void was just like wallowing your misery. Well, no, the void. No, it's like heroin. It makes you just zone out. Oh, okay. Everything feels good, man. How many times you've done heroin? Zero. Oh, okay. But I have seen enough Breaking Bad episodes. Okay. Oh, you know what it's like. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Pass. The cool kids are doing it. The cool kids are absolutely not doing it because it's not the 90s. Kids today are vaping Benadryl. Don't you keep up with this? <sighs> okay, I mean... Ironic, considering uh, the entire video has been a lack of keeping up with anything, but okay. Right, yeah. Politically, <laughs> you're yeah, not keeping a up bit of with a, anything. A little bit of a self-report. Yeah. I respect your choice, but I'm not going anywhere. I will stay right here, and I will remind you every minute for hundreds of consecutive minutes that your pain is optional. That's my only, that's the only line I like in this. I will remind you for hundreds of consecutive minutes. Really? Only, I think that's a funny line, yeah. Oh, man. Adam doesn't like that line. No, I was like, how did how did that not get edited out of the first one draft? minute for hundreds of consecutive minutes? It's just a funny line. A it funny is line. okay. Yeah, hundreds of consecutive minutes. Hundreds of minutes. Hundreds of consecutive minutes. Okay. Hmm. And I have the antidote right here, but I guess you'd just rather feel pain and shame. And humiliation, and heartbreak, and boredom, loneliness, despair. This is real. This is like pusher territory. <laughs> this Isn't is... this like after school special? Right. What is hat like? The this is why this is so weird. The only thing I can think is that the video is supposed to be innocent trans lady goes on evil podcast and talks to evil religious person who attacks them and bullies them and attacks their humanity and then does poorly on the podcast because she's not prepared for that conversation. So then she goes home and becomes a drug addict and you're supposed to feel bad for her. But like, that's not how it reads to me. The way it reads to me is, Oh, you have, you have uh, some, right-wing person who believes a lot of crazy bigoted shit but also seems to have their life together and then you have a left-wing person that believes a bunch of crazy shit also mm -hmm. but doesn't have their lives again right and becomes a drug addict. so it's like i just it, it, this is so weird yeah it really reads like a after school special for jesus yeah the type, the lifestyle you could have, should avoid at all costs. Yes, right, exactly, exactly. Hmm. Disappointment, failure, anguish, frustration. Look, I'm a smart person, okay, and I'm not going to let you turn me into some kind of pathetic junkie. Pathetic? Is it pathetic to feel good? Because when I look at you, I see someone who feels bad. And to me, that's pathetic. Well, the thing about that... It... Okay, just give me the goddamn void. Well, that didn't take a lot of convincing. 
I thought I was gonna be here all night. Well, my will is weak, okay? Can I have the potion, please? All right, well, let's be a little patient. You should really do this the right way, okay? It's called harm reduction. What you're gonna do is put- So, it's so bizarre because- The pain the, like, that you're feeling? Well, well not. Nah. Like, that's all right. That's all gone. I'm numb to that. Right. Um, this video is not... We've watched so many worse videos. Really? So we've watched so much This worse might be the worst video I've ever seen. No, no you're wrong. You're wrong. This video, this video is might painfully be... unfunny, no. painfully unreflective. We've watched so many worse videos than this. Um, but, no, it's, it's, it's so bizarre because this video is called The Hunger. Okay? And it's about... Obviously, it's talking about that people have some deep meaning, like a deeper search for meaning within that they need to find the answer to. And you have the right wing character finds it through religion and the left wing character finds it, doesn't find it, is doesn't find it in the LGBT community whatsoever. And is now trying to hide up the lack of meaning in their life by taking heroin right. or fentanyl. Okay. This is where the video ends. No the way. remaining part of this video is artsy fartsy shit of Contra just taking drugs and slipping down and down and down, which we don't have to watch. We can skip, you know, we can skim it. There's no positive message towards forwarding left wing meaning in this video. How the fuck is her audience watching this and applauding it and thinking it makes their position look good at all? This is like this is like Hans talking about how the left, at least when they were on economic issues, they could talk about, you know, boosting people out of poverty. <laughs> like right. what the fuck now? It's like now they got nothing. Yeah, this is so like is this a cry for help contra? Is this entire video just a cry for help? Somebody please save Contra. Okay. Yeah. Somebody do a wellness check on Contra. I'm worried. <laughs> wow. I mean, I I always. It's not religion. It's finding a community that you can. It's finding meaning. Be a part of. Well, I think meaning comes out of, out of being, a part of uh, something bigger than yourself. That's why you I, are correct. Yeah, you are completely correct. Yeah. Some. Some people find it in religion, but wholehearted, like t the technical aspect of it is just embedding yourself in, I mean, some people find it in work. Some people find it in sports. I mean, all right. these things are becoming a member of a team, you know, a part of something bigger than yourself. That's what people, that's what motivates people. I'm mm -hmm. sure there are people, mm -hmm. contra, you know, ContraPoints fans that are like, that gives them meaning. I guess. Yeah, sure. ContraPoints herself doesn't really have any, doesn't get any meaning out of it, <laughs> which is sad. <laughs> That's like the saddest part of this. I don't know. Maybe, maybe she's having an existential crisis. Maybe she read Irreversible Damage or. Right. And started realizing the harm reduction thing is not really happening. Uh, Dr. Diller in the chat says, this is a perfect representation of the fault of postmodern deconstruction or the faults of postmodern deconstruction. Yeah, it is. And it's just, but it's weird because that was obviously not, I assume that was not Contra's intention. That's not how Contra's audience is interpreting this video at all. So I don't get it. I just, as a human being, and maybe this is just me, but construction, building something, creating something is so much more fulfilling than deconstruction. Just deconstruction is. Well, I, I don't, I don't agree with that. I think people, I think long-term that's true. Um, but you, Deconstruction is easy and it gives you the feeling that you're accomplishing something more than maybe you actually are. And I think that's part of the allure of it. You know, it's interesting. I never thought about it till just, you know, what you just said just now. You could actually map deconstruction and the 
the desire to constantly deconstruct everything that actually has a lot of comparison to drug use of sort of like chasing a fleeting sense of purpose. Right. And I think deconstruction, I think rampant deconstruction sort of fulfills that exact same uh, feeling. So that's interesting. I never thought about that. I guess there are people though that have never really built anything or, or had that sense of accomplishment when you really build something, construct something, make something. I mean, Contra at least made this video, which is a sure. manifestation Contra's made of a, construction. Contra's made a, a very successful YouTube channel. Yeah, that's huge. Mm -hmm. That's hard to do. Yeah. Uh, Gentleman Damon for $20 says, not related to today's, to today's topic, but regarding Matt Walsh uh, desiring truth despite being Catholic, is it possible to steal man by saying God's existence is unfalsifiable or it's very easy to establish the truth of someone's sex? Um, no, I don't think that's... I mean, you can say that. I don't think that's inherently valid. Well, okay. So the issue with the Matt Walsh, Matt Walsh thing in, in searching for truth, it's not that someone who's religious can't search for truth. I mean, I'm, I, as I said a million times, part of your sitch bingo, I am an, I don't just believe in God. I am a theist. The question is, in the irony that happened from the Matt Walsh conversation, is that if Matt Walsh wants to prescribe political uh, positions at the end of the day based on religion and not on truth. Like if Matt Walsh had control of society and he said, I want to make gay marriage illegal, okay? I don't know if he's actually said this, but just hypothetically, if Matt Walsh says, I want to make gay marriage illegal, and if I was you know, ruler of America, I'd make gay marriage illegal, that wouldn't be based on something objectively true. It wouldn't be based on thinking, you know, looking at statistics or thinking that gay marriage is worse for society or whatever. It would be based on his religious belief. And so that would be the, the hypocrisy there. But that's why he doesn't rely, and we talked about it when we we're watching this, that's why Matt Walsh doesn't rely on religious arguments for the trans conversations, because he knows that they're utterly not persuasive and that they only appeal to his own bubble, his own religious bubble. And he's trying to broaden his message to a larger, more general audience. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Clark, thank you so much for joining Andrew Clark. Finally joining the free will seekers. One seeking truth is one of the most, motivating and meaningful pursuits people have and i mean i don't i don't like disparaging religious people because a lot of there are a lot of religious people that believe they have the truth that you know their religion is objectively true in a in a very real like even scientific way mm -hmm. i don't i disagree but i still this is the, this is kind of the, the, the difficult part of life is that people have these conflicting truths. So, and we right. have to find a way that we can navigate a world where those conflicting truths don't cause us to kill one another because that for 90% of our existence, that's been the case, right? People yes. go to war and kill each other over their conflicting views of how the world works. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's, and that's the, you know, all the people that want to throw liberalism away. That is liberalism. Yeah. Right. That's what they forget. Liberalism is the thing that prevents us from murdering each other. Yeah. <laughs> that has been like 99% of all human history. Right. But that's why it's, you know, all the people that have been whining about the downfall of liberalism have all been wrong. <laughs> because mm -hmm. it's it's effective at preventing us from killing each other what well, has been effective up until now so hopefully it continues that well yeah but even if it any any fault that happens now is it because it's not a fault of liberalism it's because 
it's being liberalism is being replaced by marxism yeah, some other or by by leftism yeah so. some other new religion has right. usurped it yeah yes uh confused moofish for 20 canadian says this is like peak evolution of internet parody culture Contra's audience doesn't care for an argument. They just want to see her act out silly strongman on stage they can laugh and clap at. True. A guy for $20 says, Wokeism has solved the problem of meaning, Adam. Meaning in life is just a construct, it's just a construct used to enforce white supremacy on marginalized queer communities. That's their narrative. I mean, that's yeah. their truth. It's sad, but that's their religion. Uh, confused Moofish for 20 Canadian. Thank you so much. Says plus one on the crotch rocket launcher, but where do you load the rockets into? Oh, okay, listen. Oh, ouch. <laughs> listen, Adam, if you want your character... Does that mean they're going to go on my butt? Do I have to... If you want your character, Adam, in the comic, to shoot rockets out of his dick, right? I'm fine with that. But you have to have... We have to have a scene... Where it's being that loaded? Sitch has to be the one to load the rockets into into your ass. Into the buttocks. Has to shove it in your butthole to to, to load your oh crotch. My, oh crotch my rocket. goodness. Okay. Okay. You've convinced me that we should avoid <laughs> that scene. You, you don't want that scene in the comic? You've convinced me. You don't want that scene? Okay. You've convinced me that that scene is not a good idea. So I think that's, I'm on board now. I think that's a very funny scene. I think the scene should be the loading scene or the shooting scene. I think the scene should be that our characters are having an argument. You want to install a mm. crotch rocket. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm telling you, it's a stupid idea. Right. And you go ahead and do it anyway. And then you realize after you've installed it, that you need me to, to load, load the rocket into your bottle. <laughs> I have to bend over, you have to bend over. and take the rocket. Do you want to draw your character, which is you, no. making a face as a rocket is being shoved up your ass? Uh, no, not really. I'll pass. No, you're going to pass. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm not. Okay. How about this? How about yeah. the rockets are mm -hmm. made by nanobots that I just drink? <laughs> How about no. that? That's not very funny. How about that? That's How about I just funny. drink no. the nanobots? No, 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 no. And then the rocket of... Got to be some kind of nanotechnology. No. No. Wouldn't the rocket just go through the butt and out the <laughs> other side? Is it a collapsible rocket? It's got to be nanotechnology. That's how it always yeah. is. Uh huh. And then when you shoot it out of your crotch, the exhaust of the rocket like blows a hole in your pants out your butthole. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! You weren't yeah, kidding we... about the violent anime, were you? There we go. We figured it out. Uh, Nova Leon for twenty dollars says, uh, "Thank you, Confu confused Millfish for uh, for pointing that out." Nova Leon for twenty dollars says, "The woke religion believes love is a is a linear spectrum, with lust just being higher in the spectrum than platonic love. This is one reason why the right predicted they would eventually try to justify incest, pedophilia, bestiality, etc." Um, I think that stereotype is going to mm -hmm. come back in a big way. I, I a think, lot of people are talking about yeah. it already. Yeah. That stere I mean, that stereotype is already coming back with a vengeance. I feel bad for the gay community because, right. I mean, it's sad that they fought that stereotype for as long as they did, and it's just going to be like front page news again. Right. I don't know if the woke believe that love is a linear spectrum. I just, it seems almost like they don't view it as a spectrum at all. That it's just, it's all that, like, they almost like it's viewed as like the same thing mm -hmm. or something that's not that can't be conceptualized. I do, I, you know, I'm not one of these, like, you should only have sex, you know, with someone you're going to plan to get married to or something like that. I'm not some person like that at all. Uh, but I do think that you should try to only have sex with people you actually want to be in a relationship with. And I think that that idea is sort of lost on the deconstruct everything wokes of religion. And I, I don't think that that's a healthy attitude for like the, like the serial pump and dumpers. I don't think that's making anyone happy, really. The serial pump and dump is not. Yeah. I mean, obviously people are being used and it's just, it's not a good situation to use people. Well, I don't, 
I'm not talking about like where people are lying, like people are using each other. I just don't think it's, I just don't think it's creating meaning. No, I think there's a lives. lot of people that are using other people. They're like, I would never be this. I would never make this girl my girlfriend, but you know, obviously. Well, I'm sure that's some of it, but yeah. I think there is also a lot of girls that are just looking for the pump and dump too. Yeah. Uh, XSL, thank you so much for being a free will seeker. Uh, Still Wrath for twenty dollars says I'm your third Patreon. Oh, awesome! You are welcome. Thank you, Still Wrath. Really? Get, wow. Uh, Malice on and take one red pill, not the whole bottle. Oh, I assume you mean Michael Malice. There you go. I don't agree with a lot, a lot, a lot that Michael Malice says at all. So, but I'd be interested to talk to him at some point. Look at that. We're up to three patrons. There you go. Three oh. patrons. We have a bunch of members though, so that's good. Yes, we do. Let's see if there's more to this video. Put one drop, and only one drop, of pure void into water. Take one drop, one drop. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, it's so bad. <laughs> Jeez. What a waste. It will be incredibly <laughs> painful for you, Pantra. <laughs> Think of the... should, see, that would have been funny. Okay. Mm -hmm. She films this and realizes her voice sounds stupid behind the mask. So she just gives herself a Bane voice as the devil character. <laughs> that would be good. That would be great. Dude, I am the devil, Kantra. Would you like to take some drugs? Can you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine V for Vendetta with this voice? Oh, it would have destroyed the oh whole fucking movie. <laughs> Every time V comes on, yes. what the fuck did you say? <laughs> yes, he does his whole V speech, but with right. like the. <laughs> yeah. Freedom is just an idea, Natalie Portman. <laughs> I had to test you to make sure you were truly oh, yeah. free in your soul. <laughs> That's so wrong. I will live on in the people of England after I blow myself up. <laughs> All right. Do not do too many drops. What happens if I do too many drops? Oh, you'll probably die. I'll die? I told you it was important. Well, how many drops is too many drops? Well, it's difficult to say exactly. It depends on a lot of factors. Seriously? But it's your first time. So just do one. There's like a five minute conversation about dosage, which is completely unnecessary. <laughs> Don't do too many drops, Adam. Right. Or you'll die. It's just, it's like most good. You like my fancy cup, Adam. <laughs> no, it costs $10 at the local <laughs> store. At the local thrift store, I know. Yes. Yeah. We got it at Goodwill. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. It's so bad. Oh, it's so bad. Did we just see side boob? <laughs> Did we just see side boob in this I video? I, I don't You think have so. to look. She has like a thing. She has like a towel or something like pressed against her. As she sits up in the bathtub? Yes. If you want to go back, if you want to go back and pause it, Adam, that's fine. It's I bet. You. Here, scrub through and tell me where the peak is. Is there a peak? <laughs> 40, oh, okay. Wait a minute. See, 44 four minutes. Uh, no, a, it's after this part. About actually. 40. Uh, so now there is not. Are you sure? I'm sure. There's no peak there right no. on the sit there forward. Is, there is a peak, Adam, but it's only in your pants. Okay. There's no peak the, on the YouTube I just, time. I feel like. <laughs> I mean, technically, this is a home invasion. Mm. So maybe you would grab a towel. I'm not sure. Yeah. The only peak is in you. So. Where did the towel go? Oh, the towel's in the bathtub. I see it floating there. All right. This drug trip better be good. Sitch loves the ending of 2001. So I'm sure he's going to love this. Oh, of course. Arts, well, it's not artsy sorry. ending. Do I just drink it or? Of course you drink it. It's a purely fictional, magical potion, utterly disconnected from any real-world social issues. What else would you do with it? 
Okay. Remember the mm. beginning of the video, uh, the Contra characters were supposed to debate drugs. Mm -hmm. They didn't debate drugs. They debated trans issues. And now she's doing drugs. Right. It's deep. It's meaningful. It means something. You sure it's just not a non sequitur? Yes. Okay. Good girl. I don't feel anything. Okay, well, give it a minute. In about 15 seconds, you are not going to know the meaning of the word pain. Are you ready for that? Lucy, I have never been more ready for anything in my god damn. It's also not really a good advertisement for transitioning, right? Of if course. If someone's transitioned and they still feel this fucking miserable. Right. Yeah, this is completely pay playing into the conservative argument about right. the suicide rates being not good for trans people. Yeah, post-transition. Like, yeah. yeah. Now you're going to go on a five... Wait, how long? Avoid. This video's like 12 minutes left. <laughs> There she goes. Thank God, thank God. Well, don't thank God, thank me. I will not have a father taking credit for my work. Ha <laughs> ha oh, ha. Oh. That's a joke in the show Lucifer that they make constantly. I can't tell what's going on, so. She took drugs and feels better because it's high. Mm -hmm. Generally, this does work. I'm not Listen, gonna, not gonna lie. Here at the Sitchin Am Show, we do not endorse or support drug use in any way whatsoever. Of course not. <laughs> it's so artistic. Eh? Ocean, I like that. Mm -hmm. Nice little microwave ding there. Good, big ass bed. Okay, last night. Uh, this is this is her ex girlfriend, who's the cat girl. The cat she girl likes. is tweeting at her, or is, is just this... tweeting on her own? Okay, platform. look at this. Uh, last night, Justine Tablu platformed racist transphobe Jackie Jackson. Spread this like wildfire so she won't get away with it. Force this bootlicker off the internet. So there you go. Contra. Right. Uh, because she was unable to defend herself well enough in the conversation, is now being deplatformed by the left. Right. So again, this video is just making the left seem fucking terrible. Right. <laughs> every step of the fucking way. Yeah. I mean, this part's realistic. That's true. This part is realistic. Lucy. Lucy. Luciferia. Mother. A doctor. Mother Doctor, Doctor Mother, Mom, Mother Void, Mother Void. <laughs> yeah. That's a comedy, Adam. I uh, know the acting is just awful, completely atrocious. So I don't. This is like completely dialing it in. I guess I don't know. Mm. It's I. It's hard. The writing is so bad, but it's hard to tell which is worse, the writing or the acting. Maybe it's a tie. Do you have an opinion? Let's say it's a tie. Help me, doctor. I'm being canceled. Oh, so a bunch of furries are mad at you online. So what? You don't understand, doctor. I'm in love with this furry. Hi, <sighs> you really are far from God. You're further from God than I am. Lucy, can I get a drop? So, but see, this is part of the issue with 
forgiveness with well with not just forgiveness but basing your community on like politics and especially basing your community on on polit like a political civil religion that doesn't believe in forgiveness because this is part of why people who are on the left are so utterly devastated when someone criticizes criticizes them especially from the left and tries to cancel them from the left even if it doesn't have like like the physical reproduction of them getting fired because they're being shunned, you know, by their community. Yeah. They're being exiled, excommunicated, yes. kicked out. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You end up just being a junkie. Yep. In your nice big ass bed. Yeah. That bed is giant. Yeah. So go. I thought you didn't want to go down dark paths. Doctor, my pain is at a 10. I thought I was going to get to tempt you all over again. I'm a little disappointed, honestly. I enjoy the thrill of the chase. But there's no chase with you. No chase at all. You're easy. An easy little void slut. A slut for the void. It's Lucy, funny. If I wanted a sermon, I... You keep saying that, but I'm just... It's, this is a comedy show. This I is a comedy video. It. I must. It must be this written a, on my face. That this is just, a comedy video, Adam. I'm bewildered. Contra points the comedy YouTuber. I'm bewildered by this. A part of me is just. I. It, w it would be vastly better if there was an interesting vocal choice on the demon, but. <laughs> the, I mean, I've seen. That would not. That would make this like ten times cringier. You're so wrong. You think so? Yes. If the demon talk like this. No, no, no. That's not a good vocal <laughs> choice. Maybe some, maybe, you know how they do the, voc the vocals when the person is in the witness protection agency? I know you're saying. Yeah. It, I'll, I'll, I'll turn on my thing. Can we check? Will it work? Uh, set. Do question. a witness protection agency vocal for me. <laughs> Let's see what it's like. Uh, yes, the uh, person who accosted me, uh, they they were wearing red shorts and they had blue sunglasses and uh, they had a be they had they had a beard and a mustache. And I'm pretty sure they were an artist. It doesn't and, uh, it doesn't sound like the vocals aren't changing enough. Turn no. that thing up to 10. OK, hold on. I don't think it's uh, working at all. It just sounded like a is, it, uh, voice. is it not actually working? No. He Oh, why didn't you tell me before just sounded, going on? Because it was kind of funny. <laughs> you fucking idiot. <laughs> it was kind of funny that you were like just talking normally. You fucking piece of shit. <laughs> Listen to this. Listen, look what I have to put up with. Try another this one. This fucking guy. It'll well, work. no, if it's not working, then oh, okay. I, some problem with the setup, I guess, or something. I don't gotcha. know what's going on here. Sometimes computers change things just to fuck yeah, with you. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's not working? You don't, you don't get the... No. No, not at all? That's sad. Yeah. That's so sad. Especially when this is the perfect opportunity to make fun of. The Hunger. That's an old David Bowie movie. You see, have you seen that movie with vampires and stuff? I have not. Oh, okay. Maybe that's the... Um, can you hear music if I play music? I think I did LSD one time and we Do you watched hear that? The Hunger. <laughs> Do you hear any music? No, I hear nothing. Okay. Mm. Yeah, we did. I remember now. It's so funny. The second movie, the second movie that I did drugs during comes up. Wait, what? You've never done LSD? You've never done LSD? No, I've never done LSD. I'm a good boy. Okay, I've I'm done not nothing. A fucking. I've done shrooms and that's it. Okay, and obviously weed. I'm not like a. I'm not a bad druggie like you are. I've done a lot of LSD. Oh my god. Yeah. I mean, I was really into LSD for a while. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. LSD is amazing. Wow. <laughs> gotta, okay, we're not. We're supposed to be I not uh, I promoting drugs you. here. So yeah. Do I mean kids today? They don't do anything. Mm -hmm. Hold on, I heard something. Was that I you? <laughs> yeah, it's working now. <laughs> you fixed it. Oh, is it the baby voice? That's perfect demon voice. This is the demon voice? Say something demonic. Say, like, you're going to burn in hell if you, I don't know, if you do LSD more than three times. I think having a crotch 
Rock. It's a brilliant idea, <laughs> Mr. Friend. I would be willing to install it for you, free of charge. Well, how do we install it? It really has to be installed via the ants. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, is there uh, that, you know? I'm the one that installs it. But <laughs> there you go. That's the demon voice I'm okay. talking about. That's Bend the over, one. Bend over, Mr. Friend did. Let, <laughs> that... me get, let me give you my big rock. <laughs> okay, that's the demon voice. There you go. This there wouldn't you. help the video at all if the if the demon just the same same writing but just with this voice wouldn't help anything. It'd just be that, ten times cringier. That is exactly, that is the exactly the voice of I the, know it is of the pullout king, in uh, <laughs> in Portlandia. Just <laughs> say say I'm the pullout king. I'm the pullout king. <laughs> I don't see that movie, so I don't know what you're talking about. It is. It is. Okay. Brag about how pulling out always works as birth control. Okay. Pulling out always <laughs> works as birth control. No, no wrong I voice. I should know. I'm the wrong result voice. of that. <laughs> wrong voice. No. You totally messed it up. No? Okay. The, in Portlandia, they do a skit where uh -huh. Fred Armiston, is it, it's Fred Armiston, right? He's the... I don't know who that is. I think it's Fred Armiston and and Carrie Brownstone, maybe. I don't. I can't remember. I haven't seen that show in forever. the The woman plays the man, and the man plays the woman. They probably can't do it now because it's like transphobic or something. Adam, come back to me. You can pull out of me any day you want, Adam. <laughs> Let's stop already, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. You can pull out me whenever you want. <laughs> okay. That's... Happy Father's Day. <laughs> Oh God! No. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Stop! Stop already! Stop! <laughs> Stop it! Do the demon! Ah! Uh, do the demon voice! This is the demon voice. <laughs> <laughs> that is the demon. Don't voice. you want some void? <laughs> you don't It'll think make all your pain go away? You don't think that would be a million? This would actually be comedy, okay? This would be offensive. God. I sound like I probably sound like um, who's that famous, uh, like <laughs> gay guy with so, a really deep voice? This from, is so good. You know who I'm talking about? Who he was like Mrs. Doubtfire in the Birdcage. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about? What's I that can't guy's pay name? attention to what you're saying because it's so. Oh funny. my god! It's so comical. <laughs> this is the jangly keys. Okay, this is the jangly keys. <laughs> By the way, I have no idea what any of that sounded Tell like. I don't hear it. I don't have You don't hear it on your end. Yeah, I don't. It's I don't so hear it from sad. My end, so. It's so sad because no it's clue what fucking it hilarious. Like. Yeah. Oh, God, that's good. I still think she should have gone with the Bane voice for the no. demon, Adam. Do turn the, turn the demon on and do the Bane voice and the demon voice together. I think you uh, were not born in the darkness like I was, Mr. Funded. That's a pretty good bane. There and you go, Batman. Do, the demon's not work. Turn the demon on. How do you do it? Turn it on. What do you mean it's not on? There it is. You it can't is hear on. it? I can oh, hear it. It was on. Yeah. So I was talk yes. I am the demon bane. Everyone and knows how good they say sit. That's the weird. The bane in person is so good. The bane overpowers the demon. It's like the demon is just invisible. Really? Now. Yeah. Okay, wait a minute. Huh. That's yeah. Fascinating. I never would have suspected. <laughs> okay, well, that one, yeah, that one definitely. Yeah. That's the one sounds like, like healing like like voice. It's the baby healing voice. I feel like yeah. we've. I feel like we've tapped the well dry. Uh... With this one? Yeah. <laughs> is he chasing my voice uh, real time when I do this? That deeper is better. That does sound demonic. Deeper. Yeah. This is the deeper bang demon voice. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so much better. How can you not how can you not admit that that would be better? This would be so much worse. This is so cringy and stupid. I was laughing because it's so It's dumb. not. Fuck you. It's not. It's comedy it's, gold. This is as dumb as having a whip. It's not as a penis happen. Hold on. Let's play a little bit of the video. 
Mm -hmm. We can get the stupid demon character's line and then you do it. I've called the other guy. Please, just give me the void so I can fill the emptiness. If it's the void you want, the void you shall have. Okay, there. If it's the void you want, it's the void you have. <laughs> oh my god, it's like a million times better. It's a million times better. Your I don't believe you. Your performance, I don't believe you at all. Your performance is better, too. If it's well, the void you want. That's just because I'm an amazing actor, but... Uh, if it's the we'll void you want, we'll it's the void you shall get. Come on, this is very moving. Oh my god, it's so fucking insidious. Sitch. I think you found your calling, man. This is that's amazing. We need to let's 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 redub some of this, okay? I feel like I feel like this could be improved on. Even the even a whisper would be better. That's so fucking evil. What I I can't I can't make out <laughs> I I can't we can't make out what you're saying, but what if I say Mr. Skywalker <laughs> I want you to come forward and take your pants off and let me suck your penis. <laughs> then I'll spare your friend from the dark side. No. Remember that conversation? No. That was <laughs> so that? good. Yeah, I do remember. of <laughs> course I remember it. That's a that's a the our rewritten ending of the that last was then, Jedi. That was our, yes. <laughs> no, that that's was, that's the, the alternate. Yeah, that no. Was, if the emperor was the Joker, Suicide Squad. Right. Yes. <laughs> Come here. Come here, Skywalker. Oh God. Okay. Let's let's keep going with this video. That was more entertainment than this video has. Okay. But you don't call me Lucy anymore, understand? You call But you don't call me Lucy. Call me mommy now. Oh, Lucy because no. I call me mommy. <laughs> Oh God, no. No, that's so f <laughs> oh. This is that's so good. <laughs> How can you I guess you can't hear it. No, I don't know what it sounds like. It would be a million times better. <laughs> Yes, mommy dearest. Those hands have done a lot of makeup work to make this happen. <laughs> Adam, Adam for today, I will end my Is that what you want, Michael? I can't, we can't make out what you're saying. You've turned, you've turned it up too far. The distortion is like, there's a sweet spot in there. I heard the Mr. Friended part. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. The portal is open. Would you like to be unhead, Mr. Adam? No, I no, no, thank you. Are you sure? I'm quite positive. Yes, okay. I, I'm trying to avoid the male pregnant mm. scenario. I saw yeah. you watching Junior the other day. I thought you were getting ideas. You saw me watching what? Junior, the movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> when he's pregnant. Junior, I thought you said. Yes. I thought you said Juno, which also Juno, is a... No, no, not, not the hilarious comedy featuring Elliot Page. No, right, I'm yeah. talking about the other hilarious comedy. But do you, understand, but do you understand how when you say Junior... <laughs> you understand when you say Junior? This feels like a terrible criminal <laughs> blind bit now. Oh, my God. <laughs> do you understand how when you say Juno and you talk about Impreg, no. how there's a different... 
connotation. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's, let's never do that again. <laughs> we beat it to death. It's over. Look at this. More drinking. I just want to see. Boy. I want to see the black lips after this. <laughs> <laughs> Got your black fingers. I know that was bad. Bad scheduling. Waiting. Bad yeah. scheduling right there. You do that dye thing at the end of the day after you have everything in the can. Otherwise, you look silly on the piano with your <clears> black <throat> fingers. But maybe it's a stylistic choice. Stylistic choice. Fuck, she's just doing drugs in her bed all day. Doing drugs by yourself is kind of lame. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. Usually that's you true. do usually you do drugs with a friend. Who does drugs by themselves? People that are addicted, Adam. That's hard. That's that's not fun. Come no. on. No. No, it's not. It's just so artistic, isn't it? Do you think there's some some draw to this? People telling themselves, "Oh, I would love to be with ContraPoints. Don't be alone. I yeah. will be you your know what? friend." Yeah, I didn't think about that. You're right. I will save you. I can save her. I can fix her. This is so sad. I would be your friend. You don't have to be alone. Don't be lonely. Maybe this is triggering everyone's parasocial relationship Maybe. in Contra's audience. Yeah. Look, I just want to be friends with Contra, and she's friends with no one. What a waste. That's just food coloring. Oh, so it is a stylistic choice. This drug turns your fingers black. I mean, it would be hard not to get arrested. Oh, you thought that was a mistake? No. Five drugs. Can you imagine doing drugs like that? That there was such a... That dyed your hands black yeah. like you... <laughs> Get like you were writing in old ink or something. You'd get yeah. arrested immediately. They'd be like, oh, you know, look, drug addict right there, hands right. on the wheel. It's already escalating, aren't we? Well, yeah, because one drop doesn't really work anymore. So you're going to do five drops? Just to take the edge off. I need five drops to take the edge off. So I'm going to do five drops. Oh, wow. Well, if it's just to take the edge off... The There's no more to this video, by the way. The rest of the video is just this. Yeah, it's painful. Do you want to keep going? I just, what, so <laughs> the moral of the story is leftism turns you into a, a, dr a junkie, a drug addict. So yeah, she does more drugs. She almost dies in the bathtub. Um, she doesn't die. She's like, I got to stop doing drugs. Right after I take one last hit, mm -hmm. so she doesn't save herself. How hard could that? It's just a simple matter of giving up the only thing that makes me feel like life is worth living. How hard could that be? Oh, that sound is like killing me. Now she goes through withdrawals. Oh, yeah. She's hallucinating the devil. Lucy, wake up! Wake up! Now she's making out with the devil, <laughs> which is, is herself. This is so. Oh, this is so weak sauce. I don't. How do you? How do you build your ideology on harm reduction and make this video? <laughs> like, I just. <laughs> 
I don't get it. You don't think this video screams harm reduction? Listen, I just offhandedly mentioned LSD use and you're already going into full after school special. We do not condone drugs. Fucking don't do drugs, right? <laughs> I was saying this it whole, somewhat jokingly. This yeah. whole video is a testament to like if you want if you want answers, there's only two like if you want fulfillment, there's really only two paths here. There God? is God no, I'm not. This video doesn't testify as God is one of those. It testifies yeah, it as drugs or leftism. No, this video testifies to either drugs or Christianity. No, drugs yes. or leftism. Leftism hasn't, pro in this video, leftism provides nothing but misery. Right. right. That's so the whole point. Right, but so I'm saying. The, the, there the, are only two paths and they're both miserable. Right. <laughs> Or bigotry is the third path, but yeah, obviously yeah, you like, can't. It's the ultra Christianity. Yes. You can't take the bigotry path. Right. You're forced into drugs or, or leftism. Also, this is a weird callback because remember she was like, "Do you like? Are you attracted to yourself?" And she said, "No." Right. Well, first of all, she said no because I'm not an animal, which is weird. Oh no, she okay. She, she is. Never mind. But I'm saying she says no, but here she is making out with. The devil, which was played by herself, so she is making out with herself now. So, right. I, I don't. I don't so know what deep. that's supposed to mean, but uh, okay. Very profound. Very profound. Yes. I feel like it's gonna cut away to like the end of Monty Python, the Holy Grail <laughs> music, where it's like, dude, 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 dude. dude. <laughs> It's all just a big joke, guys. This is all a troll. Can we read some comments on this video when it's done? We can. I'm really curious. That's oh, it. to be continued. That's it. At the mortuary. Aren't you, aren't you excited to see the thrilling conclusion to this <clears throat> epic tale? So this is basically as long as a feature-length movie. I mean, if she puts out another 30 minutes that's 90 minutes that's a feature length film yes if you if this was if the 90 minute version was said to be a feature length film it would be the worst movie ever made <laughs> like this is mm -hmm. just this is garbage so read me right. some of the comments on this trash uh, I okay I'll read the hearted comments mm-hmm I don't agree with Jackie politically. Jackie was the libertarian. However, getting drunk in the corner and making unhelpful comments is a mood and something I fully identify with. 5K upvotes. Really? That's the most upvoted comment on this entire thing. So it's just nihilism. <laughs> I know it's not. Yeah, nihilism. Uh, the most upvoted is 8,000 upvotes. It says the fact that this is only a three person production is nuts so well made and so depressing spot on once pointed out though i couldn't stop noticing how similar they all sounded well worth the time invested heart the, so basically they said none of your characters have a unique voice which is horrible yes. so right that's not a compliment that's a the, well, all your characters like, sounded actually, the same maybe she means like not not the dialogue but like the actual voice because it's just contra and contra's not really doing voices or anything oh okay i don't know uh i find it interesting this is hearted by contra i find it interesting how virginia the christian and justine the leftist stories mirror each other and how each of them simply went down a different path to cope with the hand they were dealt virginia buried her sexuality with celibacy and fully removed her self-image from that of her body to cope with dysphoria Justine embraces her gender and sexuality and fights for them to be recognized. I found it interesting how both characters have similar struggles, yet because of their paths, see things differently. Virginia gave up her identity for the sake of community and expects others to do the same, while Justine prioritized her identity over being in a community and thinks that not doing so is suppressing herself. Both of them have what the other lacks, and both feels a sense of yearning because of it. The God versus the devil dichotomy is interesting, given the people go to either for the same reason. People seek out higher powers as a source of comfort, either through scripture or substance. Virginia speaks about how one must exist outside the flesh to avoid temptation. This while seeming off topic about drug use is actually a direct result of it. Substance use is not a way to indulge in the flesh, 
rather is often used to remove oneself from it. Justine uses void to meet the senses rather than rather than to indulge in them, presumably compared to hype, which is exactly what Virginia uses religion for. While her addiction is not carnal, it still could become an addiction nonetheless. I love your videos. They always seem steeped in so much meaning and artistic value. I can't wait to see what you do next. Boy, that person really just read a lot into the, the scene that wasn't there. It just wasn't on the page. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Okay. I well, no, I think all that could be there, but the problem is, from Contra's perspective, it completely destroys her entire political position. Because if the point of this the story is that you have two characters that are dealing with an internal yearning, struggle, for yeah, meaning, okay, and Virginia, the right wing Christian person, uh, the way they deal with this is to basically deny and lie to themselves about their sexuality and become some sort of like, you know, religious zealot. So that's one path that's provided by the, the story. And then the other path is to do drugs and go down that dark path. Even if the religious zealot path is not the best path, it's still a better path. Yeah. In the story, I mean, presumably Virginia is not, you know, in her house almost dying because she's ODing on drugs, right? Like, she doesn't contrast this. She doesn't show, like, Virginia in her house, you know, having some emptiness or doing some self-harm or something. She's not She's not whipping herself. She's not self-flagellating herself every time she has naughty thoughts about yeah. women. Like, it's just, it's so weird how incredibly one-sided... Contra chose to make this video in terms of making leftism look just awful. What do you think the is a to be continued the turn? Do you think the next video is going to be her turning to Christianity? I mean it could be I don't know. Yeah, but here's but here's why if Contra had no Twitter mm -hmm. at all, I would say, I would watch this video and I'd say, holy shit. Contra is going to come out as like, as like a, as, as a trans person who's very religious. She's going to become like religious Blair White. She's, She's going to come as like yeah. a right winger. Okay. That's what I would think if Contra didn't have a Twitter. All I had to take was these videos that she made. Especially with the to be continued. Right. But she does have a Twitter and she's saying all the leftist dog shit that you'd expect on her Twitter. So that means that that interpretation, which to me is the most reasonable interpretation from this, is wrong. That's right. not her intention. Well, I mean, she laid out a path that the Christian conservative articulated that she is now on. Right. Yeah. So the most logical ending would be she turns to Jesus. <clears throat> Which I bet her fans would just be like totally pissed about. But someone said, <coughs> "This is such a well done video. I'm losing my mind." Someone said, uh, "Those are just kids." This was incredible. Their their avatar is Austin Powers, by the way. This was incredible. I can't do the voice, baby. Uh, I just couldn't look away. It also made me really sad. I'm trans masculine and primarily attracted to dudes. And I denied that of myself until two years ago. Uh, Justin looking at her phone to see her family calling her Justin broke my heart. What does trans masculine mean? I <coughs> could not tell you that. Okay. And they go on their whole life about how sad their life is, which I'm not going to read. <laughs> yeah, that's don't come on. Don't bum me. Uh, out I know she's only comic relief. But Jackie, as a character, is so fascinating. That's a libertarian. Her childish view of freedom that somehow coexists with her desire for a political strongman to take control. Her, it's almost like that's a completely fake position yeah. that no one has. Her deep uh, insecurity and lack of stakes and values copied with neurotic fear of anything foreign, so compelling. She may be very uh, satirized and comical, inspired by real-life figures, wink, but man, I would pay to... Witness a deep dive to Jackie's hunger the way this video is for Justine. 
Mm -hmm. None of these comments are very interesting. But they're all drawing like very deep meaning from this fucking very shallow video. <coughs> you okay. Uh, do you need no. some void? Uh, do you I, need do, some I would love some void right now, to be honest with you. And I have, have some water. water. I'm drinking water, but okay. this is what happens when you talk. Actually, you know what happened was mm -hmm. that fucking voice made me laugh so hard that I like water went down the wrong pipe. So you did this. So you're responsible. You're welcome. You're welcome. People in the chat are saying that it's a tomboy who likes guys. Oh. Well, but they're saying they said they're Trans transitioning. Masculine. They're saying they're transitioning. Primarily into dudes. They said that they're transitioning, so I don't know what the I don't know what these fucking terms mean. Because if you're a tomboy, you don't need to like physically transition. <laughs> Unless maybe okay, maybe this is the real mind fuck. What if they're a, a man who's transitioning into a tomboy? <laughs> Are that just like blow your mind? <laughs> I mean, in this day and age, no, nah, not really. I mean. <laughs> Oh my God! That's like the that's the <coughs> ultimate mind fuck. A, man, a cis man who decides to transition into a tomboy. My God. <laughs> my God. Yeah, no. That's not a lady boy. Uh, here's one. I'm a 50 year old cis rural white guy. Okay, so you, you like how this is starting? Okay. It says three thousand. I'm what? Hold on. What is it? I'm a 50-year-old cis rural white guy. Okay. Okay. So allow me to talk about one of the less important parts of this video. I remember movies from the 50s and 60s where having an actor on stage interacting with herself as different characters was the very height of movie magic. Studios were impressed if you could pull this off. The fact that a small group of relative, of really talented people can pull this off seamless and convincingly on a YouTube channel kind of blows me away. Now back to liking the more important points and stories. Everyone else is making these comments. This is such a nice community. And Natalie Wynn is a fucking tr national treasure. Hmm. Okay. okay. I, I mean, you know, it's like incredibly. I mean, maybe because he's an old man. He doesn't know that now with like digital editing, nonlinear digital editing, that having the same person in the same scene, if they don't interact with each other is literally the easiest thing on the planet to do yeah very much so <clears throat> yeah like it's literally the easiest thing on the planet to do it's harder to do when one of the characters pulls a gun on the other character like you did yeah yeah that's a little more right. difficult but if yeah if the characters are interacting with each other touching each other action moving, wise yeah actually moving around the frame then it becomes more difficult yeah yeah it could be very difficult but uh None of that. Just sitting there in a though. chair, not moving is it's very simple. Yeah. Anyway, there national treasure. National I'm gonna, treasure. I'm going to do my best not to appear to be too jealous, but anyway. <laughs> it looks like people <clears throat> from the comments really took Justine's like jabs at the Christian lady, like deeply like they thought that these were like really cutting deep remarks which I, to me they just kind of felt like nothing like the christian lady would be upset by them yes like that she was really getting the heart of the christian lady's insecurities or something really yeah i feel like the christian lady would be totally unaffected by anything that's what she i mean said. yeah right exactly <clears throat> exactly okay hmm. Ouch. Okay. You know, you know, this video must be utterly devoid of content because this is an hour long video and we were able to like blaze through it. Yeah, and we no. took like giant, like uh, fucking 10 minute, 15, 20 minute talks about like completely unrelated things while you're watching this video. We had to. Otherwise, it would be un unwatchable. Like this is, there is so little, so little in this in this video. This video could have been like five to ten minutes long. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mr. Ubercross, 
Thanks so much for being a free will seeker for three months. Says, I think what ContraPoint's audience is enjoying is the 2012 vibe when conservatives were just evil and liberals were saviors. True. I think that is what's going on. Here. That is what's going on. Uh, Lemon Drop Secret Meme Folder. Thank you so much for being a free will seeker for three months. Says there's no stigma on having the hobby. This is stigma around the overt sexualization of the hobby. You can show weebs are normal without hentai. There you go. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, what but what are you doing? How do you show yeah. hentai fans that they're how do you show that they're normal? <laughs> That's the thing. Well, the thing would be, it would be like as if, so maybe we can use this. I mean, some people would get upset with this comparison, but maybe we could say like, it would be like someone trying to say that all, someone's trying to breach like anime acceptance, which I think is stupid as fuck, but just hypothetically, if that was like a thing. And then that gained popularity. And then someone tried to suck sneaker, you know, suck in sneaker in sneak in. I can't speak. Uh, hentai acceptance under the banner of anime acceptance i don't know what hentai is so hentai, hentai is anime porn cartoon porn okay right yeah so yeah it's that's what it would be like it'd be like oh if you're trying to show like age appropriate animes to children's and then you're like oh well we also have to introduce them to like hentai <laughs> it's like wait a minute why are we doing that so I don't know. Maybe it's a bad comparison. Well, I, I mean, I, I just it's so it's so weird that they're forcing people to die on this hill, and I just it's not a good political strategy, and it's totally going to mm. backfire. And the people who are going to get hurt are the, you know, the gay community, the 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 normie gays, <laughs> right? No, you're, it's very true. Who just want to like live a normal life and stuff. And those people, I guess, you know, it's to the point where if you're a gay conservative, like, they fucking hate you anyway. Mm -hmm. They don't even count you as part of the gay community. Right. Yeah. Uh, your pal Ashley for $20. Thanks so much. Says, Sitch is right that it drives resentment and it's so damn frustrating when I talk to people on the far left that excuse that they think they know what's best for trans people like me. There you go. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, tumor media hey tumor tumor for two dollars says how else are kids gonna learn about hentai what there you go it's true there you go kids need to learn about hentai sometimes listen childhood innocence is just a myth adam okay they're gonna learn about hentai one way or the other might as well be from the public education right better that than like on the street yeah, I just, it's, yeah, okay. So, <laughs> learn about it from your parents. Did you really want to learn about porn from your parents? Oh, yeah. I mean, no. Can Wait, you what? imagine? Disgusting. Yeah, exactly. Your dad. Here, let's watch the porno oh together. <laughs> Here's this thing we call a Playboy. Okay. Look at the oh. nudies and you whack your weenie. <laughs> what the fuck? No, get How out of here. Jesus. Like the worst conversation. Yeah. Uh, your pal Ashley, thanks so much for being a three-month member of Discipline Equals Freedom. Wow. Says, and of course, I deal with the consequences and having to explain that I don't feel the same way and that normal-ass trans people exist. Exactly. Exactly. And that's right. the problem here. That's the problem. It completely stigmatizes the whole movement. And they don't seem to give a fuck about it whatsoever. Yeah, people have their own motivations. What? Well, yeah, I mean, it seems like a lot of them just, they don't care. They actually don't care what's best for people. They just want to further their YouTube career. They just want political power. I don't know what they want. Or they just have their head so far up their ideological ass that they're just too ignorant and stupid to notice what they're doing. Yeah. I'm not sure. There's a huge demand for straw manning political opposition, though. There's so many of the YouTube channels are just revolve around creating negative stereotypes of people they don't like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's like a thing. Danimal said, the gay community was completely taken over by heterosexual, mentally ill women looking to to trend hop for a while. Oh, that sucks. Uh, investigator One Quim for $20 says, a common argument I see trans activists use to justify 
the massive pickup in numbers of trans people is to compare it to the rate of left-handed people after the right-handed correction therapy was stopped. Yeah, you've talked about that, I think. Yeah, yes. There is a point, though, when left-handedness peaked at a certain percentage of the population. Right. But I, you can't make that comparison because the comparison would be more if, you know, culturally we started celebrating left-handed people because they were more special than right-handed people. Right, as opposed to just saying it's okay. To right, be yeah, exactly. Right. That's a good point. Yeah. Instead of coming out and saying, it doesn't matter if you're left or right, we're all the same, right? There's no mm -hmm. incentive for you to be left-handed. Right. Like in a certain environment, as soon as there's a, some kind of incentive, mm -hmm. you know, and no, in this point. environment, attention is the incentive, so. Uh, Crowman plays for $100. Thank you so much, Crowman. Says, this whole video is very depressing and sad. It reminds me, or it reminds, it reminds of myself when I thought I would never amount to anything in this world. Then I turned my life around and I got a good job and I'm a landlord now. I owe it to my dad for instilling the value of hard work. Well, that's great. Yeah, great. And that's true. That's good kind of what you have you. to do. You have to find, you know, productivity out there in society, in the world. I mean, you're a dirty, dirty landowner now. So, you know, you're part of the evil capitalist bourgeoisie capital class. But that's good. <laughs> that's great. I just, uh, this is, I don't, I guess I just don't understand that aesthetic, that mm -hmm. like the anti capitalist aesthetic because yeah. ever. The loser aesthetic, you mean? Well, I just, ever since I was a kid, I always yeah. just, I always liked making things and, and like selling things. <laughs> like, I just, I always, I always had ideas about how to make money, and I always thought that was fun for me. Mm -hmm. I guess some people just don't, they don't feel that way. I don't know. Maybe right. it was, maybe it was my, you know, modest upbringing. I could see it. Maybe if you're born with money and there's no, like, you can just get money from your folks, you wouldn't necessarily have those kind of incentives, and you'd be mm -hmm. like, kind of bored with all that sure i always thought making i think it's money a lot of these fun. kids though i think it's a lot of these kids though what that their parents just give them money yeah i think it's a lot of the bougie leftist types my parents went out of their way to instill the value of money to me mm -hmm. yeah me too. which i am so thankful for because i know so many people who didn't get those values this is exactly like the super chat says, I owe it to my dad for installing the value of hard work. So much of that relates to the value of, of money. I mean, yeah, I agree. Completely. Hard, hard, hard work and money is like, I mean, you can work hard work cannot necessarily turn into money, which, mm -hmm. you know, is always there's that, I guess that's part of the leftist what they're upset about. They're like, listen, I worked all year to put together this interpretive dance in the park <laughs> and nobody was interested, right? Well, it's, it's the problem is it's not just hard work. It's hard work and smart. You like get to be smart about it too. Yeah. Cause you can do a lot of hard work that amounts to nothing, you know, successful. This is one of the things that I kind of have a problem with the MMT crowd on because the MMT crowd, when they start talking about the jobs program, immediately goes to how they're going to be paying artists and, and you know, it, it, they, it, you get the idea that the jobs program is going to be like interpretive dance in the park. Yeah, which no, it's going to be you know, ditch diggers and things people actually need. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, you guys don't really understand how the economy the park, works. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right, right. No one's going to pay you for your interpretive dance. Right, yeah. I guess that's really, I mean, that's a black pill for a lot of, a lot of creative types. 
Mm -hmm. This is, it mystifies me. Because I just, I, this ContraPoints video is just, I mean, this is trash. Yeah, it's really bad. But people are loving it. So, I mean, joke's on me. This video, you know, just in views alone, it probably made like maybe $10,000 in ad revenue. I mean, that's a pretty good haul for some independent just flick like this. I mean, mm -hmm. I could shoot this thing in a weekend. Yeah. Uh, Sammy G for $5 says the demon voice sitch is giving the demon voice sitch is giving a lot of top energy. I'll make sure to clip that audio in case I feel like animating something. A lot of top energy. <laughs> yeah, a lot of top energy. There you go. I'm I'm sensing that the gay community really has they have strong feelings about who is in what position on the in the sexual intercourse right yeah okay so we have two choices we're at a crossroads here mm -hmm. okay we could either end the stream here for her for a historic short ass stream because this video is so devoid of content mm -hmm. or or mm -hmm. We could watch the other end of the spectrum for 10 minutes and watch a soul snack video. Well, we we could watch that that drag queen tweet. It's only two minutes long. And it's a, we can like, do both of those things. I feel like it's relevant to the Okay, well let's watch this let's the watch the tweet first. And then maybe we'll watch a soul snack video. Okay. okay. I'm if Adam you... wants to. If Adam doesn't want to. I don't have to watch. I mean, I'm down. Okay. I'm totally down. I'm what pulling do him into it. I can't. I feel I I just I feel like we're cheating if it's not like a I 12 know. hour stream. It's so weird. It's so weird because on our first show, we were like, we're not gonna finish this whole Jordan Peter. <laughs> like the debate is like an hour and a half. We're like, we're not gonna finish this whole thing. And I right. think we did finish it. That first stream, I think, is only like four hours, but it felt like a marathon. And right. now, I mean, we don't even feel right unless it's like. I mean, it's not even midnight for me. What happened? It feels like I'm cheating if I stop now. What happened? I know. You just like to stay up late? No, it just feels wrong. I mean, it's only 7 p.m. here. It just feels wrong. But anyway, let's watch this this video. This soul snack a, or the. I sent no, it to the, you. No, the tweet that you just sent me. Okay, I got to figure out how to do that for a sec. Oh my God. What's well, going to take? Read another super chat. Investor Gator One Look at Quim. This guy. Investigator One Quim for $20 says. I read that one already. Oh, no, I just sent a new one. You didn't read that. Investigator One Quim for $20 says, well, not only that, but we've seen rates for left handedness rise across the board on age and sex. We do not see this in trans rates. The vast majority of trans people that come out nowadays are young and female. True. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. Because of those incentives. These poor wallflower girls who've never seen any attention and then all of a sudden they've got a bunch of horny boys who have had porn in their pockets since they were 10 years old. Yeah. <laughs> it's a completely different... Like, I can't even imagine living in that world because I just... I didn't grow up in that world. We had... Like the kind of porn we had when I was, I mean, it was like dirty magazines, which weren't, I mean, it was all yeah. softcore. It wasn't even like hardcore pornography. Right. Now the videos you can see, I mean, and I would have been watching those videos if I, at that age, obviously. Mm -hmm. Come on. Kids seek this stuff out. It's not foisted upon them. They're like, what? Right. Yeah. Okay. I did. Uh, I backed it up here. Okay, give me a three, two, one. Are we going to pause? If you want to pause, just yell pause out and I'll I pause. I will too. yell if I want to pause. Because it's like two minutes. I'll do the right. same. Three, two, one, go. What, what in the hell has a drag queen ever done to make you have so much respect for them and admire them so much? 
other than put on makeup and and jump on the floor and writhe around and do sexual things on stage. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea why you would want that to influence your child. Would you want a stripper or a porn star to influence your child? It, it makes no sense at all. A drag queen performs in a nightclub for adults. There is a lot of filth that goes on, a lot of sexual stuff that goes on. And backstage, there's a lot of nudity, sex, and drugs. Okay? So I don't think that this is a, a, an avenue you would want your child to explore. They could explore dressing up at home like we all did, like all gay boys did. We all dressed at home and we had a great time. We had a great time with our girlfriends, putting on makeup, trying on clothes, things like that. But to actually get them involved in drag is extremely, extremely irresponsible on your part. And I understand you might want to look like you're with it, that you're cool, that you're woke, that you're not a Nazi, that you're not a homophobe, whatever, whatever it may be. But you can raise your child to be just a normal, regular, everyday child without including them in gay, sexual things. And honestly, you're not doing the gay community any favors. In fact, you're hurting us, okay? We have already had a reputation of being pedophiles and being perverts and deviants. We don't need you to bring your children around. So you keep your kids at home or take them to Disneyland or take them to Chuck E. Cheese. But if you need your child to be entertained by a big human in a costume or in makeup, take them to the circus or something. When they turn 18, then why don't you take them to the clubs on their 18th birthday? Because it's an adult thing, okay? So don't ruin your child's life and don't ruin us because that's what you're doing. Based. You muted yourself, Sitch, so if you have a reaction, you should. True and based, yes. I just, what is what is so so uh mystifying about this like what, how is this so complicated mm -hmm. i mean i, I feel know. like this message i mean I, I, he she are they articulated he. it's a gay man in drag they articulated it in two minutes and 19 seconds right pretty clearly like would you want your kid to be influenced by a porn star is that the no. aspiration you're comfortable with your your kid having? Right. Would you go out and tell your kid, oh, yeah, porn stars are just, you know, they're just regular people. You could be a porn star. <laughs> Come on. Mm -hmm. True. Well, that was one. It was weird. One of the. Um, one of the pictures that was getting circulated that people were saying was of like a trans drag show was not. It was actually a cis woman who was doing a burlesque show. And the mom had her little girl there. And she had the girl, she told her daughter, who looked like she was five or six, to like put a dollar in the the underwear strap or something. Right. And she was thanking her for being like female empowerment. And it was just, I don't know, very strange. Like, I, I don't think right. people that are strippers or that are burlesque show people should feel bad at all for what they're doing. But I, it's weird that like, we have to live in this world where, where either everything is exploitative or it's empowering. There's no like, <laughs> there's nothing in between those two settings. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great point. Yeah. It's there's weird. A lot, there are a lot of, there are a lot of, of gradients between those two. Yes. Positions. Right, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That seems to be lost on most people. Yeah. Just because are you. you just because you get a normal nine to five job, I don't think people should call you a sellout. Or what? A whore. What in the hell has a drag? <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. But that no, that's yeah. a that's a really uh, it's a really good video. That's a really good right. clip. We need more of that attitude. Honestly, oh, look, you're queuing up the watch together. Good. Yes, we need more of that attitude. Honestly, and I think I think uh, they brought up a really good point. I don't know what their name was because didn't say but right. yeah someone in, on twitter said their name was kitty demure kitty so, demure 
There you go. Demure. 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 So okay, ready? People have been saying that this channel is just is like mm -hmm. robot. All the views are from bots and stuff. That it's not, and all the comments are bot comments. That we're buying into something that's not really even real. This is. I don't think so. This is a simulation screwing with us. I don't. Because the views are not like they're all over. The views are all over the fucking place. Black doctor says life of online model who dropped out of school. What? This, this is one of their lower viewed videos. But this is so. I mean, I'm fat just by the just title. The title yes. I'm fascinated right. by. Black doctor says life of online model who dropped out of school. This one only has seventy five thousand views. So this is a pretty low viewed for them. You can't talk for a couple minutes, and I I have to run. I need a little. I break. can't talk. I have to be silent while you're gone. No, you can talk, but I just, I'm not allowed. I don't to want to miss the while intro. You're gone. I don't want to miss the intro of this. Any of the video. Okay, okay. I'll be right back. You know, I don't know. I don't buy. I don't buy that this channel is just. I mean, I'm sure they buy some amount of views, but the views are all over the place because, like, their last video from two days ago. A uh, black woman charged a hundred dollars for crying at hospital. True story. The seventy thousand views. But then twelve days ago, they have a video. Angry old man doesn't allow black family inside their own house. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that has five hundred thousand views. That's see, that's a like. I'm sure they bought some of these. I'm sure they bought some of these, but no, this. this this is real because there is like normal, like all the race baiting shit, like gets way more views than the other stuff. Young, successful black lawyer pulled over and outsmarts racist cop. Oh, man. Oh, man. I feel like we should watch. So this one, this specific one was uh, this was sent to us by Andrew Clark many times. He really wants us to watch this video. So so hopefully it's good i have faith in andrew uh that's true me and adam do buy all of our views that is true that's completely true the post office is closed on juneteenth wait is juneteenth an actual holiday i thought juneteenth was just like a thing like a made-up thing that's not an actual holiday right uh oh you're right. holy shit juneteenth is a federal holiday what the fuck when I typed Juneteenth in on Google, I got like a graphic of like hands on the screen celebrating and confetti. I've never seen this before in my entire life. When did this become an official holiday? Now this when this, is... When did Juneteenth become an official holiday? When did this happen? Now this is professional acting. These soul snack people know Let's what's see. up. I only uh juneteenth oh this is just recently what is juneteenth juneteenth was made a national holiday last year oh i guess that's why i didn't know <laughs> I, thought, I didn't realize okay there you go juneteenth is an actual national holiday i thought Ju last year. juneteenth is something good right it's like when the last slave it's was set free commemorating the emancipation of uh the ending of slavery yeah okay that's great yeah, I just didn't know it was like the fucking... I thought it was... I didn't realize it was an actual national holiday. Yeah, they, the so Republicans were like, hell yeah, we're on board with this. Stop calling us racist, you piece of shit. Actually, yeah, what was the... I wonder what the vote was. The vote was 415 in favor and 14 against. Who were the 14 against? It was, it was probably like... Uh, that's a good question. Who voted, yeah, who against, voted against June... Legislation. Mitt Romney. So it Is, says the the Senate po passed it unanimously. Uh, let's see the people that voted it against have been it. Mitt Romney. It was pro it's probably like AOC on principle. Like it didn't no, go far it was enough. it's all Republicans that voted against it. Oh, okay. Why would it, why would AOC vote against it? On principle. For principle of what? Because it didn't include reparations. Oh, I see. Uh, Thomas Massey voted against it. Uh, Mo Brooks, Scott Desjarlarlis, I'm not familiar with these people, Andy Biggs, Tom, Tiffany, 
Doug Laugh-Molf, Tom, Mc, Tom McClintock of California, Mike Rogers. I don't know any of these people. I knew Tom Massey, but that was it. And Paul Gozer. Oh. Who is the guy that went to Nicholas Fuentes's weirdo? That wasn't Paul Gozer, right? I thought it was a... It was, it was Stephen King, woman. wasn't it? Uh, Marjorie, Marjorie Taylor Green did, yeah. Spa Jewish space lasers went to the Nick Fuentes thing. But I think, didn't Steve King or someone else um, go to Nick Fuentes' shit twice? I got some beef jerky, man. It's so good. Are you allowed oh, to, just, are so, you allowed to eat alone. beef jerky? Yeah, I can eat beef jerky. I wish I had some of those Doritos. That's all I can remember from the video is the flaming hot Doritos. I used to eat, back when I would eat a snack during the stream, I would eat uh, deer jerky, remember? Oh, I do. Yeah. Oh, I do. It was Paul Gozer. Okay, so no surprise, Paul Gozer, who opened for Nick Fuentes last year, voted against the Juneteenth. <laughs> Oh, and I so you know he's he's got a brand. That's his profile. That's his profile. Anyway, let's watch this. Uh, black doctor saves life of online model who dropped out of school. We have ten dollars left. Most of my models they make between a hundred and three hundred thousand dollars a year. Oh, you're taking your clothes off for strangers. Don't you think that's a little slutty? Well, you should be here with me, not at some stupid club. <laughs> that was the girl in the last one, right? We only have one. They have like 10 actors that do all these videos. <laughs> so, yes. One more semester left of class. One more semester of undergrad. We still have four more years of med school and add another three years of residency. We still have a long way to go. Thanks for raining on my parade. <laughs> I mean, focus on the main goal. You know, we'll get there. And thank you so much for your help this semester. Having a study partner has made everything so much easier. Oh my God. My pleasure. Study buddies for life. Oh. You know it. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. What are your plans for the rest of the day? Let's go grab a bite and some drinks. This is... Yeah, Stop for sure. talking over this. This but is no great. But no more fancy. I'm on my last $20 this week. You don't, I can spot you. You don't think the acting in this is better than the ContraPoints? I feel like it's That's a low better. bar, Adam. I First know. of all, actually, no, I don't. Actually, I don't. This was acting is worse than Contra's acting by far. I don't see how you can say that. Okay, you're pretty wrong. Um, or maybe not. I only have ten dollars left. How's that even possible? It's cool. We can go grab a bite out of food truck across campus. Okay, let's go. The money troubles begin. Yes. Once we've graduated, you know what the best part will be? Becoming a doctor, helping save people's lives. Money. You know, being rich. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. <sighs> okay, is some guy gonna just drive up and look Notice at how like, the Hey girl, you should do some pornography. I've got lots of money. <laughs> First of all, I can't wait because that is going to be the scene. <laughs> Second of all, you notice how it's a black girl who's... It's all about saving lives. and It says black doctor saves life, Adam, okay? She's not I, She's not a doctor yet, though. Well, she's going to be when she right. saves her life. Future black this is gonna doctor. Be, this is going to be the epic tale, okay, mm -hmm. of the two lives of two young women spiral control where one continues her path towards medical school and one becomes a th an e-thought right and then they're going to collide again once she has to save her life she's turned to a life you've already drugs. figured okay. it all out look it's just and um, oh my god they've articulated this whole story in 10 minutes it took contra points 50 minutes to not well, they tell gave, a I don't story know, they gave away the entire story in the beginning i don't know what the point is they gave away the entire story in the title <laughs> i guess that's true Come on, this is good <laughs> This is good. This is I I love this video. It's clear. It's very there's a lot of clarity. It is. And also it's something everyone can relate to. I mean Oh uh, I of course I can definitely relate to this. Taking off your clothes for money. We've all thought about it. We've all been there. Hey, where are you? I thought you were picking me up. 
I've been waiting here for an hour. Please call me back. See, it's their fault she got to a life pornography and thought her. Oh, he's got a oh, Tesla look. too. Oh, he's my. got a fucking Tesla. Creeping up in the Tesla. Yes. Alright, Elon. Looks it looks very slick. Except it's all dusty. Oh my god, he's got such a hot car. <laughs> Look at this player. <laughs> he looks like Wow, that's a beautiful car. Trump Jr. Thank you. I know, I was gonna say. He does. What's that kid what is his name? Donald Jr.? It's Don Jr. Is it Donald Jr.? Yeah, it is Donald Jr. Yeah. He looks yeah. like Donald Jr. Look at Donald Jr. cruising up. Hopefully mm -hmm. one day I'll be able to get one like this. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Um, y you look really familiar. Have we met before? <laughs> no, I don't believe so. You look like Donald Are Trump you sure? Jr. Are you a model? No. I'm sorry, you must be an actress. No, I'm just a student. Really? Well, are you, are you interested in becoming a model? I mean, you definitely have the right look for it. Thanks, but no. Are you sure you can make some serious money? What are you talking about? Look, I'm not trying to hit on you or anything. My name is John Rogers. I'm a casting director. Okay. <laughs> I see dozens of models every day, and I'm telling you, you are just as beautiful, if not oh more beautiful, God. than any of them. Really? 100%. Then why are you... I'm trying to enjoy the movie, Sid. This is you... so painful. What? This is so, it's like every, oh, I'm a casting director. Why don't you come to my point? Yeah. It's like the beginning of like every pornography. Like, this is, this is a very, who, I mean. No one falls for this shit anymore. This okay. is very realistic. This is not how girls get into doing OnlyFans stuff. Okay. This really? is ridiculous. No, how, I don't believe for how a second. Do, how do they get, how do they, how do they get into doing OnlyFans? They, they do go it themselves. to the website and look up all they the say, They say, oh shit, look, right. at, look at all these girls making fuck tons of money, you know. Well, how old is this video? This is from this year. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> this is from April. He pulls up and he's like, there's this thing called OnlyFans. Have you heard of it? Yeah, that? exactly. Right. Here's my card. Um, if uh, Whenever you get some free time, go ahead and give me a call. Most of my models, they make between a hundred and three hundred thousand dollars a year. Are you serious? Definitely. Of course. Well, haven't you been on the internet? Haven't you not seen? Oh yeah, I'm Actually, sure. Actually, I'm still waiting for my ride, much. so I have some time now to talk. Fantastic. Uh, let's go to my office and we can talk. Sure. All right, hop on in. Look, the it's car. The car is the office. <laughs> yeah. Come on, this is realistic, sis. Th okay, so wait. Are they gonna have the scene, like the casting couch scene? <laughs> Look. Oh no, I guess not. She's already, she's already hooked. Here's how you do it. You use your phone and you yeah. take pictures yourself and I upload them for you. Hey, stranger. Where hey. have you been? Hi. Oh my God. Oh my God. Sorry, but MIA work has been crazy. You have a new job. Good for you. Thank you. So are you able to make your schedule work with your classes this semester? I'm dropping out. Um, actually, I'm not enrolling in class this semester. Oh. What? Why? I'm just too busy. I don't have time. So, what, you're just dropping out of school? No, I'm just taking a little break. That's all. Okay. Do you hear the audio difference? Like they Yeah, between the two of them. Yeah. They recorded one of them with a totally cheap mic and a bunch of background noise slipped yep. in. Yeah. Okay, but what about your dream of becoming a doctor? Girl, please. That's my parents' dream, not mine. They've been the ones pushing me to go to medical school. I just want to make money. Okay, um, <laughs> so, so what's this job? What are you doing? I'm modeling. Wow, for like an agency? Something like that. Do you hear the music <laughs> Tell me, why are you being so secretive? What? Did you hear the music term? She's like, I'm modeling. The music went... <laughs> no, I didn't hear that. I missed that part. Well, you're right. They they mic'd the doc, the future doctor, and they, the other, the e thought is like picked up yeah. on the the microphone on the camera. <laughs> just use your just use your phone. Yeah. Okay, it's a private subscription site, only friends. <laughs> <laughs> they even use OnlyFans. 
Do they not know how OnlyFans work? Why would she have to go to a guy right, to know. set up an OnlyFans? That's not how it works. It's like the dumbest person on the planet. <laughs> See, this, this idiot is going to be a doctor. Right. I don't believe it for a second. <laughs> yeah. You make you make $100,000 a year, and I make $2 million a month. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's right. like, what the? Okay. You don't have the internet on that phone of yours? <laughs> What? Yeah, what? I created my own account. It's been crazy. I've only posted two pictures, one video, and I've been getting a lot of requests. Okay, uh, Bianca, forgive me for saying this, but you're taking your clothes off for strangers. Don't you think that's a little slutty? Don't be so judgmental. Well, what, does, what do your parents- How dare she- Do you, do you hear this music? Dun, dun, dun. It's like ramping up. Dun, 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 dun. This this channel was super woke, but this is I mean she's slut shaming her now. No 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 no. This channel is super woke in a weird, like Christian way though. She's being slut shamed. You're now. right. This this actually just just completely goes against because they're they're only really woke on like uh, anti anti uh, black racism messages. Right. Like Look, all the white people are horrible racists. I mean, this is vaguely even sex work shaming. I know oh it God. is. It is sexist. Yes, and not sexist. Does, sex work shaming. It does play into the the racist stereotype too, because it's a black woman who's slut shaming her. How is that a race? How is that? That's not a stereotype. What do you mean? Yeah, it is. There's a stereotype of black women sexually shaming well, other there's a, women. There's I've never a, heard this before in my life. There's a, I mean, it's it's a stereotype that blacks are against that are blacks are homophobic. That's a stereotype. Yeah, but yeah, but this is not homophobia. This is. I mean, it's in work. the same ballpark as. Homophobia. If you say so, I think you're stretching. I mean, slut shaming and homophobia are kind oh, of the yeah. same, right? Oh, see, I see, I see. I don't Close. Buy. Think about this. Nothing. Oh, Wormy smelled the beef jerky. Chill out, uh -huh. Wormy. <laughs> they don't need to know. Bianca, you're making a huge mistake here. Why are you smiling while you just realized your friend is throwing her life away to be an ethon? You have this big fucking grin on your face. You're making a huge mistake. How did she know it's a huge mistake? This you might still be think the... she's a better actress than Pancho Points? <laughs> oh yeah. A million times better. I think Contra. I think Contra could at least put on a frown, a frowny face when uh, she says, uh, "You're throwing your life away." I'm just Johnny. I'm, you're throwing your life away. I'm thrilled that we have five minutes of story here. I that Contra points video had absolutely no That's true. story. It was That's just. True. I mean, it's brain rot, and the fact that That's people true. there's a bunch of comments below it saying how deep and meaningful it is it's just mm. struggling i'm struggling as someone who you know i i like storytelling and movies and stuff like that it's just the kind of trash fire people are willing to take as content bugs me but anyway that's my ted talk i'm sorry Nikki, I have to go. I appreciate your concern, but you don't have to worry about me. I'm sorry. I have like four privates to do. <laughs> I need to do them in, the, <laughs> in my car over here. So please yep. move along. I'll see you later. Gee, there you go. Now she's got like a concerned look on her face. Here comes her pimp on the skateboard. <laughs> do you think they... Has Soul Snack asked this college to film out, or is this all just <laughs> listen to you? You know, whatever we just film. Listen like because they film no, they film a lot in like the same location at this one college. What so, college I'm, I'm is wondering. it? I don't even know. Yeah, is it in Southern California? Who knows? You can't film anywhere in Southern California without a permit, and people are on right. your shit like immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, let me check out this OnlyFans. <laughs> Hello? Hey, girl. Oh, look, she's got a new car. It's not a Tesla, though. Yeah, but it's a Mustang. Look at that. It's a Mustang, yeah. yeah. Looks nice. It's Bianca. Oh, hi. I didn't recognize this number. Yep. I have a new phone. Too. New digits. Lock it in. 
Um, what's up? I'm kind of busy here. Studying. Studying. Well, it's time for you to take a study break. What about I pick you up in my brand new car? Congrats on that the car's new too car. Bad, but Look at how uh -huh. they, they're telling her not to touch the car because it belongs to somebody else. <laughs> she's like <laughs> trying to pretend like she's touching it. Like, I mean, maybe you're right maybe... because like they couldn't even wash the car before they filmed this. To of make course. It look new, you know? I know. Yeah. It's got dirt all over it. Busy. I have to study. Okay. How about look new shot. They're like, okay, that looks a little fake tonight. Yeah. There's a new club opening in downtown. Um, I can get us on the VIP list. No, I'm, I'm really swamped. I need to study. Okay. Suit yourself. Be boring. Talk later. Be a boring Bye. doctor. This, this has a lot in common with the Contra video, doesn't it? <laughs> Yeah, the two paths, very, right? Yeah, very similar yeah. themes. Better music in this too. Like <laughs> this million, fucking this music's ridiculous. A million times better than the concert. I guess it's gonna music. cut to the club. I don't think she's doing dance music while she's studying. Oh my God! Uh, here we go. Oh, oh my god, are they not gonna show like it's just gonna be this one wall. It's gonna be this one wall with colored lights. Oh, oh She's at a club. You can't alone. You can't film in the club. <laughs> She's at the club by herself in front of this one wall, guys. Oh my god, she's drinking one drink. It's so so risque. That's their club scene. That was a club scene. Oh, that's so awful. You were waiting. What you thought she was gonna do? Blow in the bathroom or something? Well, okay. I can. That would have been. I yeah. can dream, right? There you go. Uh, not again. Hey, Hello? girl. Go pick me up. I'm You're missing out, food. girl. This party's oh, yeah. insane. Luca, <laughs> I'm studying. Why do you keep calling? Why are you still studying? That's I the real question. You. I'm in love with oh, you. Oh, you should be here with me, not at some stupid club. You're partying your life away. Oh, please. <laughs> this is so, this is perfect for the ContraPoints video. Isn't it? Yeah. This they is They didn't, yeah. This is a scene that's missing. The mm -hmm. the TradCon Christian lady needs to save, <laughs> save the leftists. Save Justine. In, in the drug-filled stupor, yeah. She should have been a doctor. You're right. right. I'm never going back to school. Do you have any idea how much money I'm making? I make forty thousand dollars this month. Oh shit! Forty k, girl. Just killing and I'm it. just getting started. Come out. Let's celebrate. I have to study. All right. Uh, please be careful. Okay, Grandma. Have Based. fun. Five years later. A long time. Wow. Okay. Look, they got, it looks like a real hospital, but I mean, probably just bought. Oh, footage. we didn't see anyone. It's just like stock footage. Like we didn't see anyone. Yeah, in stock people. footage. That's what it is. Yeah, see, look at the background. It, they just put a white sheet over the walls. <laughs> and they got like a hospital bed. Yeah. Was she like in a decontamination room? <laughs> That's supposed to be the curtain, I guess. What's going on? Where am I? Um, you're at Mingle Park General Hospital. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be okay. What happened to me? You had an overdose. I mean, you're lucky to be alive. Oh my God, Nikki, is that you? Actually, it's Dr. Henderson now. <laughs> a bitch, Dr. <laughs> Henderson. What happened to me? Paramedics brought you in a few hours ago. I mean, you were in really bad shape. They found three different narcotics plus oh alcohol God. in your system. I mean, oh I saw your name in the list and I, I had to come and see if I saw your only you. fans. And... It's me in all my glory. <laughs> I mean, look, you're going to be okay, but 
think it's time you finally start making some changes in your life. I'm just imagining this with as the contra points ending. Yes. Like the trad con conservative standing over. It's time to start Christine. making. Yeah. Christine saves her from drowning in the bathtub and is like, "Listen, Justine, I want to save you. I'm actually in love with you." <laughs> I can't deny my lesbianness anymore. I mean, that would be more interesting. You may that be definitely a... would be more interesting. Okay, so here, so okay, here's a very interesting question. Mm -hmm. Christine is a lesbian, right? It's a cis woman lesbian who is denying her lesbianness to conform with her religious beliefs. Okay, mm -hmm. across from her is a trans woman. <laughs> I know it's perfect. Who's also into women, right? Right, it's perfect. But Here's the thing. So she would look like a woman to, to Christine, but Christine, because of her views, does not view it as a trans woman, but views it as a man. Yeah, it's perfect. So therefore, they could have sex and yeah. she would be attracted to her as a woman, but yet still also it could yes. be like she was having sex with a man. Have heterosexual sex. <laughs> right. She found this is the perfect loophole. My I know. God. Maybe if that maybe that's a to be continued. Maybe there's hope. Maybe this there is gonna go. be salvaged. Oh my God. Christine, Justine Ship, please. Please, Contra. I just ship it. I just don't know. It's I don't understand why you needed all that fifty minutes of flim flam. Look, we're eight <laughs> we're <laughs> nine minutes into this thing. We've got massive story going on here. Oh yeah, massive story, Adam. Real massive story. Well, I mean, it is a story. Look. Okay. Look. Massive story. I, my definition of story is still unassailable. Somebody I wants see, something and is having difficulty getting it. Mm. She wants money. Okay. It's okay. Clearly established. She has a goal. The other woman wants to be a doctor and help people. Clear goals. This is Clearly. everything. This Clearly. is good writing. I don't, you can't, you can't change my mind. This is great awesome. writing. This is all, yeah. It might Beautiful. have a little bit of, ex, it might have a little execution flaws here and there, but overall, this is 10 out of 10. Okay. I don't know how things got so out of control. I've been messed up for years, but this is definitely rock bottom. <laughs> That's good. That means the only way to go now is up. Let's look at you, the doctor. Wow. I mean, I mean I'm a millionaire. I'm so but ashamed. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, know. I just need to get out of drugs. I still have shit tons of money. Yeah. Unfortunately, I invested it in a bunch of good index funds and stocks. So right. I still have lots more money than you do. Yeah. Yeah, I know. This I know. Is a, you're kind of video in want. student debt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm loaded. Meanwhile, but... you're swimming in student debt from five years of medical school. Right. Yeah. Good job. Hey, look. Good job, Soul Snack. You're gonna be okay. All right, you have a long road ahead of you, but you can do it. I believe in you, Bianca. Thank you. That's Dr. Bianca. I'm glad you're here. Get some rest, okay? Okay. I have a few other patients to check up on, but I'll be back in about an hour. Thank you, doctor. And we can talk some more. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, you're pregnant, too. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Bom, bom, bom. <laughs> in the meantime, if you need anything, just press our emergency call button, okay? Okay, Nikki. Thank you. I mean, Dr. Henderson. <laughs> I mean, it's, they not, leave? it's not too bad, production design-wise. Mm, I mean, that's like great. a real hospital. It, well, it's a real hospital bed. Right. Um, but, but they, they just put hang... white sheets on the wall. They do that. They hang those curtains up. Yeah. You no, know, they have the side. They make curtains, like a little curtain usually, room no, they're, for they're you. side curtains, but the wall is always generally a back wall. Nah. Looks yes. Perfect. Okay. It needs, well, why it know needs she's... cool wallpaper back Why does there? she still have, she still has the, the fucking, the, take the blood your... pressure thing. Yeah. Take your... like on, <laughs> Take that off her arm. Why is it? Just That's how it you on know. <laughs> they should have an IV. <laughs> That's how they know she's. Well, they had the drip, but it's not. It's not attached to anything. Those IVs. I've only had an IV once, and it's a fucking nightmare. Oh god. I have not had one, fortunately. You but... never had an IV? Oh, you're so lucky. Well, actually, no. I. There. I'm trying to remember. I don't remember what it was. 
I did once because I remember like the, it felt really weird. Yeah, it freaks you out. You're sitting there looking at, oh, I got this needle in my arm and I just have to chill here. Having a well, needle in your arm for two hours. I feel like hours. the cold coming into my veins, but it was like anesthesia, so I, I got knocked out. Oh, uh, yeah. So And I woke Thank up you. pregnant. And there you go. <laughs> you should sue your doctor for that. It was probably an impreg job. Yeah, probably one. <laughs> Oh, that's it? Go. Oh, that, that was it. Oh, thank goodness we actually got some satisfying content on this there show. There you go. I was worried. Thank that, you, Soul Snack. Thank you. I was worried that we were just going to... It was just... It was just poor... Poor ContraPoints. I know. Yeah. Soul Snack Day, Save the Day. Featured on Yahoo, CBS, ABC, Fox, SF Weekly, The Washington Examiner, and NBC. There you go. I don't Soul believe snack. that. I believe it. I believe it. Fascinating. We have time uh, it's for not another? unusual for cuffs to be left on for routine monitoring in the ICU. Really? I know like when, when my dad was like in the hospital for extended periods of time, they never left a cuff on. He had like a they had like a little finger thing that they put on that did all that, that kept all that information. They didn't leave like a giant ass cuff on his arm. Why? I don't know. I'm yeah. Not sure. No, they put the the pads on you to monitor your heart rate and stuff. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he had the th yeah he had the little the little stickies on his chest. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's what they do. Right. He didn't. He didn't I don't know. I'm a pro I'm professional. Sorry. I know this stuff. Uh, see Hennessy, thanks so much for being a free will seeker for three months. Says these videos are dumpster fires like TikTok political debates, but at least I can laugh at these and not cringe. S class. It's just as superior as A team. There you go. All right, I brought up. Oh, nice. As superior. Oh, look at that. As superior as A team. Cute. I like that. <laughs> so I brought up ContraPoints Patreon. So she's doing a video every 10 months now, right? And it says creating video essays and Monthly. short yeah. films. Yeah. So do you think what we saw today was a short film or a video essay? Seemed more like a short uh, film to me. You're right. I guess it did yeah. seem like a short film and not a video essay. A terrible, like, terrible short film with no plot. Well, it seemed like the bastardization of the of the two combined. Okay. Which is probably the worst thing I've, uh, you could ever do is to combine a video essay and a um, and a, a short film. Okay, so we have the least expensive tier is the two dollar tier. Props, props to the most famous bread tuber for avoiding the one dollar tier. I like that. Mm -hmm. Capitalist at heart. And the mysterious benefactor five dollars, distinguished enabler is ten dollars. And how many patrons do you think we have here? Let me just slip right down here. You want to? Oh, <laughs> you want to take a guess? How many? Come on, guess. For what tier are we talking about? No, all together. She just has the number oh. of patrons listed. Um, she doesn't have the dollar amount, obviously. Nobody 10, lists. Nobody lists the dollar amount anymore. You notice that? Because they're, yeah, all the leftists aren't going to do them. Right. 10,000. That's my 11, guess. 11,249 oh, patrons. So Jesus. that's at least $22,000 a month. A month. Twenty two thousand dollars way more than that. Yeah, it's way more than that, too. Of course, yeah. For, for one video mm -hmm. in a 10 month period. Right. So that's a. <sighs> And not only that, that video easily made ten grand in in ad revenue as well. So that's just like yeah. icing, though. Yeah. Okay. This it's is a scam. Thing. I think I'm just I'm I might just be jealous. I just oh. <laughs> those kind of resources at my disposal. I would be like, I guess the thing is, those, you know, she writes them, and that's part of the thing. She wouldn't take a video written by somebody else. I guess I, this is my problem with the woke bubble is just they turn, they can't write. They don't understand human nature. They don't understand people. They can't write compelling stuff. 
Right. That's true. It's kind of the same thing with, you know, the Christian movies that are super in the Christian bubble. That yeah, are like the God's Not Dead. Yeah. yeah. So they're right. preaching. They're preaching to a certain demographic who loves it. You know, they're eating it up. It confirms their worldview and all that. Mm-hmm. But really, to a secular audience, you're watching and going, "Why do people like this? What's happening here?" It's kind of the same thing. It's kind of the same thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. I have a friend of mine that has written a bunch of those movies. Oh no, the Christian really? movies. Yeah, did you know that? <laughs> I didn't know that. Does he write them like he doesn't believe in any of that stuff, but he's still... He's Jewish. (laughs) He's not even Christian. (laughs) I think I told him... How is that not a movie? He was like your friend that he needs to write his life as a script. He's like, he can't get any work as like a screenwriter. Somehow he, he, like this, like secular Jew, Mm -hmm. somehow ends up writing all these like Christian movies. Like it starts as a joke and then he becomes really good at it. There's a, I think I told you before, there's a rating system that Walmart has that's like five, five, four, three, two, one doves. It's like a, how Christian the movie is. And all the movies that he writes has, they have to be five doves. Otherwise they just, they don't get placement in Walmart or something like that. Really? Or the Christian community won't buy them. Yeah. They have this special rating system just for these movies. Mm-hmm. I contemplated writing one at one time just because I thought this was the thing. It wasn't, it was, it was more like the challenge of it because I was like, why do these movies have to be so bad? <laughs> like, why, <laughs> why do they have to be terrible? Can you write because one that's just not not completely terrible? I mean, I can write you, from a believer's perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you can't make it... I don't know if you can make it deep or nuanced or interesting without it being terrible. Like, with, with adhering to the things they want to adhere it to. Really? Yeah, I think that's the issue. I looked up a bunch of stories online that were famous Christian stories to kind of get an idea of that perspective and just sort of like try to come up with something original that revolved around some famous story, you know, because they do, they make movies out of, you know, the Moses story is obviously a famous, yeah. The passion story is a famous one. I thought maybe there are lesser stories out there. Mm-hmm. You know, some some tale of a missionary or something like that. I mean, I feel like it could be done. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess. I guess. Would be fun. Okay. What's next? Uh, I think that was it. Soul Snack, number two. Oh, we're okay. Well, I'm worried if we watch too much Soul Snack, we'll get hit with this. They'll hit us. Copyright. That's okay. I know a guy who has to work on the comic anyway. So, because I know, because when we last watched all the Soul Snack videos, I remembered it was on Tuesday. We unlist the videos anyway, so we don't really give a shit. Mm -hmm. I don't want this video to get hit with anything. And we got a bunch of copyright stuff on that video that got. No, we didn't. But I'm saying it was unlisted, so they might not have cared, and we wouldn't care if they hit us with anything. Right. Unless it was a strike. So I don't want this video to get hit with something. So. But I uploaded that on my second channel and it never got hit by anything. But I mean, it didn't, oh, really? get, didn't get a lot of views. So, oh, that's hmm. something to say. I guess we should say this at the beginning of the Tuesday stream. I see comments from people who want to know where the Tuesday stream went. We unlist the Tuesday stream because we cut it up and upload them as separate videos. But I upload the full stream on Adam Friended's secret channel, so you can always go over there. And I do read all the comments, but I read them like a week later after I log back in to upload the second one. And this week we were supposed to have Christian Riley on, who we had on. Christian Riley runs a podcast called the MMT Podcast, which I like a lot. 
except for the last episode, was very... We're in a weird situation now, Sitch. Yeah. We're Uh experiencing a lot of inflation, okay? (laughs) Oh, yes, right. So you're kind of in a situation where you're seeing the people who are really in, in into MMT for political reasons and the people who are really into MMT for because they think it's a good lens to look at the economy. Right. And they had a person on that was obviously looking at wasn't like a real didn't have real MMT answers for things. But mm-hmm. I was like, mm, okay. It's kind of drifting from MMT orthodoxy into let's just tax the rich. <laughs> but he was supposed to come on on Tuesday. He had to reschedule. He's, he's down to come on again. It's just a scheduling conflict. So, right. I talked to, do you know, Stardust? She's a Twitch streamer and does I do not like know, political no. shows and stuff. I think she's going to come on on Tuesday. So cool. that could be what fun. What are we talk about? I don't know. What do you want to talk about? I don't know. What does Stardust talk about? Twitch politics. Oh, okay. Fun. Well, and also like some drama and stuff, I think. Nice. We were can watch some Soul Snack on Tuesday. I mean, I don't have any videos lined up for Tuesday. We just watched the video that um, I did line up for Tuesday, but I think it's appropriate here. There's another Peter Bogosian video that people keep sending us Mm -hmm. that we'll have to check out. Okay. I also kind of want to watch. Oh, yes. That Peter Bogosian is amazing. Yeah, that video. Oh, and I want to watch Angry Old Man Doesn't Allow Black Family Inside Their Own House. I kind of want to watch that on Tuesday. Too. The Soul, is that another Soul Snack? <laughs> the Soul Snack video. That Soul Snack video didn't do too bad when we clipped it out. Right. And, I mean, it was a lot of fun. I mean, Doomer was, Doomer was playing along too, which was fun. Yes. All right. All wow. right. Finishing early today. Well, there you go. Don't you feel terrible? I do. Well, it's it's Father's Day, okay. I mean, I feel like I could go for another. Take take the hours off to tell I you. I feel like why. I could go for another four hours, but. Okay. I did, I did drink an energy drink, in the middle of the stream. So. Uh, thank you so much, CJ, for joining the Order of the Enlightened. Mm-hmm. Thank mm-hmm. you so much, CJ, new member. Maybe we should just read those members off on Tuesday too. And read the members of the the subscribe star. Yeah, we should. And our patrons. Yes. Yeah, we'll do it all. What do you think? I think. Anyways. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for your incredibly generous donations. Thank you for making it through with us to the end. The end of the video. You have continued the journey. The journey through hell that was Contra's terrible video. And through the light reprieve that was the soul snack video. Hope you'll have a fantastic Father's Day. We'll see you all on Tuesday. Bye-bye! Jeez, that was loud.